Good morning and welcome to beautiful downtown Norwalk, Connecticut for the April edition of NHRL. My name is Luke Stangle. Joining me here in the broadcasting booth is my best friend and brother-in-law, Chris DeSico. Hello, Chris. Good morning, Luke. Chris, we are uh, on the, the, the very start of a very long day. 135 robots here in the building. We're going to be fighting for over the next 10 to 12 hours here. At the end of tonight, 12 new robots will get their invitation to the finals later this year. Very, very exciting. Now, you are tuning in here at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern here in Norwalk, Connecticut, and we have a fight queued up and ready to go right here at the top of the hour. We will not prevent you uh, any further. You know, uh, we're going to go over to Cage 5 and check out that fight here in just a second. Let's get into it. <laughs> All now, right. Here uh, in the blue corner, we've got Merp. And over in the pink corner, we have little Bob, Chris. Kicking things off here in April with an uh, egg beater on egg beater match here in the Beetleway division. Yeah. Now, I love little Bob, all right? Why don't you love Merp? No, no, no. I just love the name, little Bob. I like Merp. Merp. Yeah. I wonder if that's an acronym. Yeah, let's see. Let's come up with an acronym for it. My entire robot prevails. Whoa. There we go. Wow, you're really good at that. I, I work at IBM. Acronyms are kind of our <laughs> bread and butter. <laughs> I love Little Bob just because, you know, it injects so much personality into the robot, you know? I'll let you work on the acronym for Little Bob. Let's see. Luke is <laughs> terrible. <laughs> All right, cool. We're All right. <laughs> we got it. And we're All right. off. We've got uh, Merp here in orange and black and Little Bob just in black. And uh, yeah, both, both sporting the uh, stock Fingertech egg beater spinner here. Ooh, some good engagements here. Little Bob staying planted to the floor and kicking oh. Merp in the air twice. Little Bob doing a really great job of staying squared oh. up with his opponent. We see uh, some pieces of a chassis that got ripped off of... Oh, no. Both of those eyes off of Merp are gone, Chris. It's flying blind now, Luke. Got that box audio here from inside of Cage 5. You hear and those? Little Bob is just relentless. Oh, boy. Oh! Pop shots happening here left and right. Not uncommon on an egg beater on egg beater match. I am really impressed with how planted to the oh! floor little Bob remains. Oh, it looks like that weapon has come off of oh, the we've got a fire! Oh, wow! Wow! First fight of April, we've got a fire. Well, uh, you know, it's the Something 420 event. It could, we've it got could some be smoke. <laughs> Generally, when you see the magic smoke coming out of a bot, it could be a, a myriad of things. Yes, it could be a battery fire. It could be a, a motor going up. It could be a speed controller. Generally, you see a little bit more uh, of a theatrical fire when it's a battery. So I'm assuming that it's probably either a motor or a speed controller. The magic smoke is critical to uh, the, the operation of these combat robots. That is uh, something that you learn in, uh, I think, I mean, with the class number two of uh, the Havoc Academy, Chris. Yes, you got to keep the smoke and the fire the smoke inside in. the robot. Yes, yes. And that is a dead robot. I think your winner here is Little Bob. The Luke is terrible bot. Yeah, okay. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to work on the rest of it. <laughs> So yeah, smoke and fire is not uncommon here at NHRL, and our facility is equipped with a state-of-the-art negative air filtration system. Anything that happens inside th these cages is safely uh, removed from the building and dispersed up into the, uh, into the sky where it becomes stars. Now, one of the big things that's different here today for April, especially for people who are here in the audience, is a brand new experience here. We have redesigned the House of Havoc. It looks really different. It's incredible. So, you know, it's if incredible. You, if you came last year and you're thinking about coming again, it is a very, very different in-person experience. You can see a whole lot more of action inside of these cages, and uh, we've been really deliberate and thoughtful around how we redesign this space. Um, I know we're going to go on a video tour here shortly, so you can check it out yourself if you're here on the live stream. Um, but uh, yeah, I can explain it uh, a little bit. 
Uh, we've shortened the big cages, so now you can look into uh, the cages a little bit more. You can see more of the floor area, which is really cool. And uh, we've really centralized all of the action around something that we're calling the bowl. So you can now sit around much, much closer to, the, uh, to these cages. And um, when, when we hit prime time here later tonight with our uh, best of the best still alive in the bracket, all of those fights are going to be happening inside of this bowl. So it's going to be a really cool kind of um, gladiatorial arena right. feel inside of here uh, because all of the action is going to be concentrated in one spot. And someone's going to be hand feeding you grapes. So it is going to be very yeah. gladiatorial. I've got my toga back there. Yeah. My I don't doubt it. My grape leaves, <laughs> you know? All right. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kind uh, Roman dictator. You yeah. Know? One of the... Uh, Better eras, I guess. Yeah. I was I was so surprised when we walked into the building last night. You know, it's not uncommon here at NHRL where you see these small evolutions to deliver a better and better spectator experience. Yeah. But walking in here last night, it is like a complete metamorphosis. It's a 180. Down to the uh, like a, the painted ceilings, the arrangements, new standing areas, the bowl. It's it's it's. There's a, there's a tremendous amount of thought that went into uh, delivering a better uh, live experience here in Norwalk, and I, I hope that we, we see um, you know, the fans really respond well to it today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're going to be seeing a little bit of this on the stream, um, you know, uh, in, in the shots that you see. Um, but really, there is no, um, there's no replacement for seeing it live. So if you're here on the East Coast or if you're going to be making a trip out, try and coordinate your, your trip so you can come out and see one of our qualifiers or maybe the finals. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, great. I know that we are frantically sending robots down uh, to fight in these cages. So uh, we will be queuing up another fight here shortly. Um, so let's hang tight and uh, wait for that to happen, Chris. Um, I was taking a look at who's going to be fighting right here at the top of the hour. Uh, we've got Patrick Bateman and Louis the 17th. Louis the 17th is a really interesting robot. This is a brand new autonomous beetle from Combat Robotics at Cornell. Um, they say that uh, this robot is designed to really push forward autonomous uh, combat robots, which we are just beginning to see here at the three pound level and also at the heavyweight level with robots like Orbitron. Um, now, Louis XVII has two modes. Uh, there is Plan and Ram, which is, uh, you know, nice little homage maybe to yeah. Ram Plan and Business Cat, <laughs> I hope. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so, uh, so Louis the 17th is going to be fighting here in just a second. I have a lot of hope for, uh, for autonomous robots. So, you know, this is the dawn this is... of that era, I would yeah, say. Yeah, I think so. We've seen some bots that, you know, incorporate infrared and, uh, and, and stabilizer technology kind of leveraging, you know, AI. And now we're seeing bots that you basically turn it on and yeah. you let it do its thing. Yeah. And that is awesome. Yeah. Now, uh, while we have a little break in the action, I also want to remind you that we have a special event coming up on June 1st. So uh, this is a brand new event. This is our new Teams event. Now, there are going to be over a dozen teams coming here for a special one-day competition. It is not attached to uh, the rest of the qualifying season. There will be their own standalone massive prizes here. It's going to be a really different format and a really different feel. It is going to be explosive. We are trying out a new format here, and if you want to get like an early look at it, come here June 1st, buy tickets now. It's going to be a very, very cool thing. Uh, we're going to live stream part of it, but uh, the end is going to be a mystery. Ooh. All right, uh, we're going to go over to cage two. We've got Cranky facing off against Half-Life. Now, Cranky, over in the pink corner is this orange undercutter with a multi-bot, green multi-bot, facing off against Matt Lantry and Fallout here in the blue corner, which is our bulletproof lifter bot, four-bar lifter bot, Chris, in red. Oh, wow. Look at the reach on that horizontal. The, uh, the matchup here does not favor Cranky V2, uh, just because there's a big, chunky wedge on the front of Fallout. Matt has a tendency to box rush, and uh, he's going to just shove Cranky into the corner almost immediately. Uh, this is going to be just a, a tough, tough road to climb for, for Cranky. Let's see if they can do it. Five. Four, three, two, one. 
Fight, robots fight. There's that box rush coming on over, but the multi bot from Cranky preventing the box rush. And look at that. You're looking at a different cage here. Okay, good. Oh. Here's cage two. And the multi bots are engaging one another, and Cranky is, uh, you know, just being shoved around here by Matt Lantry and Half Life. Very wisely keeping that lifting arm in the air, turning it into a grabber. Great pin here against our house bot, Brett. Here at NHRL, you're allowed to hold a pin for up to 10 seconds, at which point you have to disengage, give your opponent a chance to uh, reestablish themselves. And if you're going to you be seeing a lot of that out of Half-Life right now. If you cannot disengage within 10 seconds, then that uh, will not count in the scoring. This is uh, designed to prevent super, super long pins that uh, delay the action in the fight. I actually just saw a little bit of smoke escaping out of one of the sides of Cranky V2. Now, uh, Cranky's multibot there, formerly known as a minibot. We don't say minibots anymore, Chris. It's just dragging around that dead back wheel like a broken leg. Oh, just uh, it still being held on by sinew, Chris. By sinew. Wow. Another good pin here from Matt Lantry and Half-Life, really showing off his drive pedigree here. 90 seconds left in this fight. Little waggle stick pin. Wow, disengaging and then immediately re-engaging. Oh, we got some aggressive tapping here, Luke. Trying to break through that bottom plate, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Devastating. Now, I will say that we, we are taking a look here at, uh, you know, kind of one element of the rule book that has not yet been fully defined. Um, how long should you, how much, you know, uh, time should you give your opponent? How much space should you give your opponent before re-engaging a pin? Oh, wow. All right. That, uh, that little wheel has gone off of the multibot. Oh, Matt pushing Cranky V2 up against the wall. Okay, multiple pins, domination, and aggression here from Half-Life. I think that this uh, is going to be a very decisive judge's decision here in favor of Matt Lantry. Now, in the early qualifying rounds, you have to win two to escape. If you win two fights here in the qualifying rounds or you get a buy and a win, uh, you will advance to uh, the bracket. We build the bracket, and that's what you see uh, in the primetime broadcast here later tonight. So even if Cranky V2 loses this judge's decision, which they very likely will, uh, they have one more shot to get into the bracket. Does look like Cranky is piloted by a young child there, uh, Chris, here in green, getting a good head pat. Good job there, Cranky. Tough matchup there, though, for the, for the, uh, for, you know, this, this, uh, this fight. It's a tough matchup to open up the day, but they'll go back up into the pits. They'll see if anything needs to get tweaked, and then, you know, they'll see who they're up against next. Maybe they'll uh, have a better outcome here with a rock, paper, scissors kind of lineup. Robots certainly have uh, optimal types that they like to go against. If you have a big wedge and you've got a Chevy drive, it is perfect for defeating horizontals. Uh, so really, you know, we could have put the best driver in the sport with that horizontal, and that person would still have a really, really uh, steep, steep climb to, uh, to get out of that, uh, that matchup. All right, great. Now, uh, Chris, look at this. I got a brand new combat notebook here from Ariel Smith from Team Pandemonium. Uh, this is one of these really cool innovations that has come out of NHRL. We have so many fights here that uh, the builders have developed this combat notebook so that when you get back to your pits, you can open it up and you can write down your entire configuration, what, uh, what failed, kind of notes for things that you can fix uh, the next time around. I have not seen this before anywhere in the sport. So cool. And uh, this really gives you the opportunity to look at your fight record over time and make informed decisions and changes to your design. This is one of these things that's really going to push the, um, the build and design uh, process forward 
a lot faster. And it's cool that this has become a need here at NHRL, just given your, your number of fights. Um, I was talking to Tony D'Ambrosio, and someone gave him a cool stat today. He is the robot here in the field that has the most fights out of anyone in uh, the, uh, the field. He's fought like 70 or 80 times. Oh my god, look at this. Oh wow. I almost got beamed by a hat here. All right, here. Um, should I put this on, Chris? I think that they're telling you that here, the glare, the, the, there's a lot of glare coming off you right now, Luke. Uh, I got something, too. Do I have to pay for this, Chris? I think so. Uh, every time uh, they throw something to us from off camera, it actually yeah. gets debited straight to us. Yeah, okay, good. Here we go. So yes. here we see some of the awesome merch that you can actually get at shop.nhrl.io or check out if you're here live at NHRL in Norwalk, Connecticut. We have an awesome store at the, uh, at the front of our experience. And uh, these, are, these are just a couple of the items that they have here. They have everything from water bottle kits, uh, you know, uh, or, or uh, the, the notebook that you see here, yeah. hats, uh, hoodies, uh, the really awesome plushies uh, built, built by Team uh, Eel Monkey Art yeah. uh, that uh, I think characterize a lot of the more interesting, you know, people around here and uh, bots around here. And then also I, I see something else that has appeared. Uh, oh, yeah, here. Let's, uh, let's comp oh. that thing on over here. A... <laughs> Oh, Miles, how, oh. how about how about you throw up like a a new poll in the uh, YouTube live chat? Should uh, should Luke wear the uh, the hat for the next two hours here on the stream? I've always been told I can't wear hats because you know you look like a producer weird, now. Weird shade, sh you know, like uh, shade on my face. You, you know? look like you the look people like a producer want to see my face, Chris. Okay? On site at like a Hawaii shoot right now. Yeah, I like it. But we do have it. We have a positively hysterical oh, look here at now. This beautiful. Every single one of these that uh, Tom Farkas builds, we end up buying. So this is uh, officially owned property by NHRL. It sits inside of our bot museum, and it is one of our most beloved robots. Tens of millions of views on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube shorts um, for fights that we've mostly called, Chris. You know, just yeah. some really memorable moments with this uh, very strange robot. And uh, people love pause for a reason. And if you have a special place in your heart for Positively Hysterical, okay. make sure that you stick around to later tonight to prime time. Pause is back in a big way. Whoa. And that is all I'm going to say. Yes, okay. Maybe, Miles, maybe we could do like another option. Maybe should I wear it front facing or back facing? What do you I think? wouldn't, if you, that's, that's different. I'm that's still different... young and hip, Chris, okay? I can pull it off. I saw him flossing earlier. Yeah. He's, he's with it. Well, I mean, the teeth. Um, all right, we're going to go over to cage two. Oh, okay. Now we have a top-ranked robot here at the top of the roster in Johnny Sumpas and Spartan, which is this very cool black and red horizontal here to your left. Spartan is entering this competition with more wins uh, than losses and uh, ranked 32 of all time with a record of 12 and seven across the last five events. Spartan is a very well piloted, very well built robot here and uh, facing off against Cricket. Cricket here in white, it looks like it's a um, horizontal uh, overhead spinner facing off against a horizontal undercutter, mid cutter and uh, but it has a big wedge on the front with mm. Cricket, which may be its one saving grace here. Um, it also has four wheels instead of two, so perhaps it's going to be a bit more zippy inside of the box, which is going to be important when you're facing off against Johnny because he will punish every single one of your driving <laughs> mistakes. That is true. And uh, Mason Price here, the builder of Cricket, is actually a member of the uh, Brandeis University Robotics Club, so again, one of those universities that are here, love to see it, but up against, uh, you know, Johnny Sumpas, uh, and I, I, got a, I got a close look at the bot yesterday, and it's, it's gorgeous. Um, he's upgraded the motors. He has such an interesting armor configuration. Uh, it's both carbon fiber, it's TPU. Everything's kind of inlaid together in more of a skeletal armor package. It's, it's a really beautiful bot. And then you see those, those invertible forks on the back that kind of rest on their own hinges so that if he inverts, they are just as effective upside down as they are right side up.
Johnny Sumpas, you know, is now part of Team Malice on BattleBots, and uh, you know, Bunny uh, Bunny has taken him under her wing, and uh, sorry, taken him under her wing, and uh, and you can see some of Five, those kind of like Malice four, color scheme three, there, which is pretty two, pretty cool. One fight, robots fight. All right, look at that. Oh, oh hitting that cloud wow. very hard. Here we go. Johnny oh. needs to knock out that weapon somehow without killing his robot. It's interesting, Spartan is so low. It's almost hard for Cricket to land a shot. You can see Cricket's wedge being caved in. Spartan wants to cut through the front of this robot. There we go, here's the opportunity, Johnny. Oh, oh! You can see something oh. has come off of Cricket. Wow. wow, big hit here. And that weapon is struggling to fire up again on Cricket. Wow, brutality and, and just precision from Johnny Sumpas and Spartan. Wow! Incredible. Two minutes left here in this fight. It looks like the weapon on Spartan may have gone down. Wow, the oh. second I say it, it spins right back up. Chris. Yeah, well, he heard you. At a certain point, you'll see, you know, some high energy weapons will actually spin down the middle of the fight. Maybe they're being a little bit more conservative. He sees now that, you know, Cricket's weapon is not working. It might not be necessary to go 100%. You have to, you have to preserve your bot for a full event, right. every event. Yeah. Yeah, that, that weapon seems to be running, uh, running just fine here. These are huge concussive hits. Stuff can get knocked loose. It's great to see that the weapon is still uh, running here with a minute 10 left oh. here in this fight. But that wedge is still very, very dangerous. Here we go. Nice pin from Spartan. Johnny driving backwards, using those forks to his advantage. That's a good 10 second pin. Spinning back up. Wow, a spin around move. That's a pro level move there, Chris. seconds left here in this fight. Pushing match here. Two wheels against four. Plenty of sparks here in cage two. Love it. 20 seconds left. It looks like both of these robots are going to take it the full three minutes. See a dead weapon on Cricket, a caved in uh, plow. But a little bit of impaired driving from Johnny Sumpas and Spartan. Ooh. Continuing to re-engage, continuing to show aggression. I do think that this will end up being a win for Johnny Sumpas and Spartan. That would move Johnny and Spartan to 13 and seven. Here in the bot's sixth event. All right, look at this. We've got his friend Lars Elliott there filming the action so they can uh, watch it again. Wow, look at that. Chris, they took away pause. I feel like there's a, a hole in my heart now. I think it just actually walked on out of here itself. Yeah. All right, now as they await the judge's decision, I hear that we may have Johnny Sumpas joining us up here shortly, uh, bringing up Spartan and talking us through that fight. I think we're gonna wait though first for the judge's decision. Yeah, yep. Now, uh, I just saw live poll, okay? Colby, you can't be mad at me. They say they want the hat, okay? By like 90%. The, you know why? They know that the hat makes you uncomfortable, Luke. And yeah, I, I hate wearing hats. The audience will do I, anything I am, they can to make you supremely I am, uncomfortable. I am crawling in my own human skin right now. <laughs> the Luke Stangle story. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah, so thanks a lot for that, chat. This is great. Um, <laughs> um, 
Yeah, you know, I feel like uh, I feel like the shadows kind of like obscure my face, which is what the chat wants, you know. So that's great. Uh, that's good. Um, we are we are cycling. Oh, here we go. I can see Johnny coming this way. Is Johnny coming up here? Are you bringing Spartan, Johnny? Oh, I see. Yep, I see Spartan. I see Johnny. Lars, are you coming up here? Lars. Oh, Lars is he's he's escaped. Come on, Johnny. Here we go. Johnny Supas, let's put uh, Spartan right here. Now, uh, for fans of okay. you, fans of the robots, yeah. um, you know, Johnny, how old are you? I'm 17. 17, amazing. I'm a child. Um, and you have one of the top ranked robots here in the Beatles. Um, tell us, like, you know, how do you achieve this, like, win loss record that you have over the most recent five events? I know you've done more than five here, but, uh, you know, you're at 12 and 7, right? I think 13 and 7 now. Over the last five? Yeah. I don't know. I don't keep track. Really? Oh, wow. <laughs> that and humble. <laughs> and humble. Amazing. Amazing. Um, yeah, it's, it's all about just going and competing. Um, I love uh, just bringing Spartan because it's a horizontal, so sometimes I just lose what I call rock, paper, scissors. If yeah. I'm fighting something like synthesis, I'm just going to lose weapon on weapon. But um, I just love the destructive aspect that they bring. It's, the it's robot really is so hot. I'm like, I'm like burning my fingers on these little like yeah, ball bearings. Be in the careful! Bottom. Wow, that's I awesome. I should fix that. <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's great. It's great. Um, you know, like this, this is a pretty favorable matchup for you. You know, but I was pretty worried about that big plow on cricket. You know, like seeing that first big hit, I was like, oh my god, like that could have killed your weapon. Yeah. You know, like how how do you prepare for plows? Um, so my, my strategy was actually just to flank the whole time around their left side because my blade spins this direction. So I wanted to grab the edge. Um, I couldn't rip it off, um, but they, they have a really great robot. I mean, you saw that thing was so durable. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it we, took we, a lot of hits. Come on, how, you gotta love a, another horizontal in the action. So it's always sad when I have to fight a horizontal, but um, yeah, I, I wouldn't call any match favorable with Spartan because that thing can just explode at any point. Now I don't you, trust it. <laughs> you showed me a lot of your, uh, your upgrades to Spartan last night. You've almost tripled your battery capacity. You have new motors. Uh, I love the new uh, wedge fork configuration on the back. Can you tell us uh, about anything else and, and you know, what you think about the rest of the tournament here as we make our way towards the, uh, the bracket later tonight? Yeah, um, biggest change was swapping the Peters motors, repeat maxes. They're amazing. Um, it's great just to not have to worry about drive. Um, Matt from Half-Life, who just fought, made me these wheels. Um, of course, <laughs> Lars basically helped me get this thing running. Um, and Kevin and Ariel from Pandemonium, they're just fantastic. Um, now, I, I do have a question, you know. Yeah. This is a question from the fans, OK, because I already know the answer to this. But uh, why, why do you go with a bigger battery? You know, like, uh, you've only got to fight for three minutes. Why, why, why do you need more, uh, more battery capacity? So funnily enough, the Spartan that has been competing here for three years would die with a minute left on the clock if wow. I had full weapon. Wow. It, I did not have enough battery life. And this is actually Vapor Trail's battery. Wow. I accidentally solved it. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I just. <laughs> It was there, I threw it in, it fit, and now it's an upgrade. You were telling me even last year that with, with the former battery capacity that you had, you could only go like uh, at 100% for, for something close to like 100 seconds. So yeah. you would have to actually strategically power down your weapon yeah. so that you could last longer. But now it seems like you might have the, the juice to just go 100% for the full match. It should be able to. I was powering it down that fight um, just for, you know, fun and strategy because it's really fun to do that rotator type yeah. rip and the tombstone thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this tournament is looking really loaded. There's a lot of really, really fantastic robots here like Cricket. Um, and I'm hoping Pandemonium, our team, is going to make a, a really deep run. Um, Spartan's still team stamina, but you should see the, the roster Pandemonium has now. It's crazy. Awesome. They're awesome. Now, uh, you know, 12 hours later, uh, tonight, you know, hopefully, you know, we've got Johnny still alive in the bracket. Are you gunning for the golden dumpster here today? I would love to. His so the first Spartan was built in April 2020. April 2021. Um, or sorry, it was built in April 2021. April 2022, um, it had that really lucky win against Lynx. Um, April 2023, I got added to Malice, which was like the dream come true. Yeah. So historically, Aprils are really good. Um, starting off with a win is always great, but you never know. There's just so many good bots. But yes, I would love to 
at least qualify today. That'd be amazing. All right, we're gonna keep our fingers crossed for you. All Thank right. you. Thank Thanks you guys. Thanks so much, Jenny. All right, we're gonna go and check in with Cage 2. We've got another fight here queued up. We've got Double Stuffed facing off against Colonel Panic. Now, uh, Colonel Panic here is in black and white. And uh, it is a really interesting robot. Did you get to see Colonel Panic up in the pits yesterday, Chris? I did not. It doesn't have belts. It's not a hub motor. It is a series of metal gears. So the the the... The weapon motor spins a small gear, and that spins a big gear, and that spins a medium-sized gear that is connected directly to that vert. So um, the builder here, Lucas Buermeyer, um, a recent WPI graduate and BattleBots, former BattleBots captain, um, is trying out something new. He's invested a ton of weight into this gearing system, and uh, I am really, really hoping that it does well. That's So that's such an interesting approach because obviously when you have a high energy vertical or horizontal weapon, so much energy is transferred in both directions when you make a big hit, not just into your opponent, but back into your own bot. And when you have like, a, like an actual rigid gear system, that doesn't really handle that much stress that well. Yeah. So, you know, to, to build a gear system that can actually handle that energy de being displaced back into your own robot, uh, that requires a lot of engineering, and I'm excited to see how that plays out. Now you can see that little test spin up here in the blue corner. It looks like those gears are working. I am going to be seeing, uh, I'm going to be looking for whether those gears can survive the full three minutes. It really just takes one big hit to knock them out of, um, out of alignment. Um, but uh, it is an interesting application of the weight. Now facing off against Double Stuff, which is... A ring spinner. Five. Love a four, ring spinner, Chris. Three. Double two, stuffed. Obviously, one, five, channeling some Oreo fight. energy here. Oh boy. And we're off, Luke. Oreos, of course, the best out of all of oh. the uh, double stuffed cookies. Wow. Oh no. And double stuffed is slow to spin up again. And that looks like an asymmetrical horizontal tooth on the, on the center of double stuffed. That's interesting. Colonel Panic's uh, weapon system has a lot of power in it. You can see it digging into the plywood floors here. And the weapon is dead. That ring is dead on double stuff. Not seeing much movement at all. Also, you see that those interesting wheels on Colonel Panic, which are likely wow. titanium uh, 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 teeth. Uh, that was popularized by uh, Calvin Eba. Knockout. This is and a links, knockout. Oh, boy. That cookie is cooked, Chris. Lucas Buermeyer winning his first fight of the day, and that weapon running the entire time. Going after the multi-bot of Oreo and uh, Double Stuff here. Dead in the water. Now you can start to see uh, the divots in the floor starting to emerge. Um, when we get big, big weapon contacts into the floor, you know, you're going to see these big, deep gouges. Ten hours from now, it's going to be virtually unrecognizable. unrecognizable. Yeah. yeah. But uh, well done to Lucas here. Brand new robot, brand new design from this very experienced builder. He's been building combat robots since, uh, since he was in high school. Awesome. Yeah, up until recently, he was a member of Team WPI, one of the top officers inside of the sport, um, inside of that, that, that program. Um, but a lot of those really famous Team WPI members that we really associate with the, uh, the, the team have now graduated out, and now they're kind of striking out on their own. People like Lucas Buermeyer, people like uh, Brian Boxel, people like um, James Wynn, and... Um, you know, in the case of James and Brian, they're going to be running a, uh, a multi-bot in the 30 pounds, uh, 30 pound weight class here later today. A very cool multi-bot called Barbie and Ken. Um, so it's cool to see, you know, now that they're working professionals, young professionals, um, 
don't have access to the same um, shop tools that they had when they were students at WPI, really um, still continuing to innovate, stay in the sport, and continue to bring new and interesting ideas. Yeah. Okay, good. Lucas, first one of the day. That's great. One more win and you're in the bracket, so, uh, so that's great. All right. Now, I've just heard from production that uh, our next fight is going to be with Blackbird and Aria de Ambrosio. Mm. Now, uh, everyone knows Tony. Tony, the, uh, you know, inventor, I guess, I don't know, the small business owner of robotsruinmylife.com. Great, uh, great shop for a lot of robot merch. Here inside of uh, the NHRL store, a lot of the team shirts that you see um, are printed by Tony. Tony is just a really interesting guy. He's also invented, like, paintball taggers and stuff like that. Um, and his daughter, Aria, has been a combat robot super fan since she was a very, very young girl. Um, big fan of Valkyrie on BattleBots, and she's been working with her dad on combat robots since she was three years old. She is now 10, so she has seven years of combat robot experience under her belt, and she is taking over Blackbird. Now, last year, she was running her own ant weight robot called Dream, and really just driving the pants off of that thing. And uh, she has now inherited her dad's robot now that she's hit double digits, and she's going up into the Beatles. Um, she has done a ton of training for this competition. I was talking to Tony for weeks now. She's been driving two hours every night. Wow. He'll just charge up like six batteries at work, bring them home. They'll deplete all of the batteries as she drives, you know, um, in their garage on their, their test floor. And um, she is ready to take the reins here at Blackbird and start a new era with this robot. This is one of our longest running, hardest hitting legacy robots here in the competition and now has a new captain in this 10-year-old, which is very, very cool. Wow, all right, I timed that perfectly. That's great. Um, you can see Tony's hands here over on the left, getting Blackbird ready. He is going to be driving the little multibot there. Uh, it was flipped last year. Aria was driving the little multibot. Now she's going to be driving the big bot. Facing off against a synthesis clone here in the blue corner, driven by Cole. You can see on the back, the synthesis robot. robot says, dumb robot, Chris. <laughs> Cole, uh, you need to have more uh, confidence in your robots, okay? I love it. Uh, Blackbird here, facing off against Titan. Now, uh, Cole from Avon, Connecticut. Uh, this robot, uh, Titan, has gone two and two across its, uh, its last event. And uh, I will say that in uh, Cole's intake form, he said that uh, this, this weapon here in the blue corner is capable of spinning at more than 300 miles an hour. So we My may see goodness. some explosive, explosive hits right here at the top. You can see Aria D'Ambrosio there in the, uh, the left corner of your screen. She is like cool as a cucumber. You know, talking to her yesterday, talking to her this morning, she is ready for this fight. This is a big, big deal for her. Uh, you know, taking over her dad's bot. Now, so far here, Titan has competed in one event and is two and two. Yeah, I said that earlier. Yeah, that's well. I mean, it's it's interesting. You know, uh, you have you have a bot like Blackbird that's seen so many events, yeah. but relatively speaking, yeah. about the same amount of experience in both drivers on both sides of this cage. Well, Ari has been driving Dream all of last year, so she's got probably easily thirty career fights under her belt at this point. It's a well. I mean, it's a it's a it's a big leap to go up a weight class. You know, everything changes. Yeah. Cole is also a, uh, one of the kids in the sport. You know, he is a teenager, 13, maybe 14 years old, um, facing off against a 10-year-old. It's really cool to see young talent in the sport because they have so much time that they can develop their skills um, over their career here in the sport. The, uh, oh, here we go. Here we, we are go. starting. We're in it. Here we go. Arya landing oh. a good pop. 
Oh, wow. Although, oh. Titan is on its head. Blackbird. Trying desperately to self right. Blackbird is high centered on the side rail. Here comes Tony to try and uh, get Arya off of the, uh, the, the rail there. Weapon is still running. The robot is still driving. Both of these robots are back up to speed. The synthesis style robot, oh. Cole Wilson. Looks like the weapon might be down there. In that, uh, in that shot from behind um, of, of Titan, you know, it looks like that, uh, that, that weapon belt was not just like fully lined up. I think that this may be a, a, a belt issue. Oh yeah, look at that. Did you see the belt? Oh wow. Stripped off of Titan. I called it there, Chris. Literally using my hip bone to like. But where is Blackbird? Blackbird's inverted at the top of your screen, waiting for the count out here. Consummate professional here from Aria. She knows she just needs to stay mobile so that she doesn't trigger her own count out, but the robot is doing the thing, Chris. Titan's wheels are not engaging it. Yeah. It needs that weapon to self right The weapon is dead. This is a matter of time here. Aria D'Ambrosio winning her first match of the day, her first match with Blackbird. There you hear the countdown. Wow. Fantastic. All right, we're going to be seeing more of Aria later today. Definitely. And we're going to now switch over to cage two. Where we have a fight. Just about ready here. It looks like the... Okay. We've got safety third facing off against intolerance. And uh, the O in Intolerance is a little, like, got a little slash through it, you know? It's like you're buying uh, furniture from Ikea or something, you know? <laughs> yes. The whole ah, the the bookshelf. Ah, oh, this the, uh, whole the robot, Intolerance bookshelf, you know? The whole rob robot is put together with a single Allen wrench. Yeah, there you go. And it looks like there might be some gremlins living over here in the pink corner. Safety third run by Elliot Wilner from New York City uh, with Hewitt Robotics. And uh, this is safety third's very first fight ever. True rookie, first bot, first competition. Safety third there in pink, facing off against Intolerance. And it does look like safety third is beginning the tournament here with some issues with its left side drive. But it's gonna send it anyway. Oh, wow! Intolerance looks awesome. This is a big, big vert here with pleated wheels built by Ryan Ferdinand from Merchantville, New Jersey. Wow! Wow, big heads. But I'm going to give it to safety third hanging in there. Inverted and desperately trying to get back onto its feet. Oh, and there's a wheel. Safety third is down a there, wheel. It's all right. I think that one wasn't working anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and Intolerance just looks like a shark waiting for its prey. Safety third, beautiful paint job. Amazing first fight of your career. I love to see new builders in the sport. Now the, wow, able to uh, to exit your circle. So uh, I think this fight will continue to go and Intolerance is just going to wait. See if we see that uh, Swedish furniture efficiency here. Wow, you see just the heft for this weight class on that weapon. Wow. It's really impressive. Tap out. That is a tap out. Safety third, uh, tapping out. Intolerance is your winner. A terrible, uh, terrible sentence. I wish I never say it again. Okay. <laughs> Just in general, you know, I'm not talking about the robots. Here we go. Good win here for this, uh, this big. Deep Six esque uh, robot in intolerance. All right, great. Great, Chris. That was a great fight.
love to see someone's rookie debut. Um, especially, I love to see it when uh, they keep coming back and they become amazing and they're really, really good at the sport. And you go, oh, I got to see the very first time. Don't you remember? Your wheel got ripped off and you were inverted the whole time, you know? Uh, that's really cool. Yeah, my debut, the, uh, the wheels just fell off without even being hit. That was pretty embarrassing. Uh, I remember that. It was good. It was like a clown car, just, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, we do have an update uh, on that, uh, that Spartan fight with Johnny Sumpas. No surprise here. Uh, Johnny Sumpas taking home the judge's decision win there. One more fight for Johnny here in the qualifiers. If he can win that fight, he will automatically advance to the bracket and to prime time. So well on his way to, uh, to making uh, his, his way into the bracket. Fantastic. Definitely 15 or almost 20 bots in, in that three pound weight class that are poised to end up in that final four to make their way then to the world championships later this year here in Norwalk. And that is, um, that is going to be a slugfest tonight, beginning at prime time. Yeah. Yeah, there is, um, there's like a hunger upstairs because <clears throat> the, the field is a bit more open than it has been in previous competitions. You don't want to wait until the end of the year to qualify because that is typically when your Calvin Ebas show up, like when your um, Matt Borises show yes. up, you know, like these just titans in the sport. And for them, it is a do or die moment. They are not going to be uh, taking their foot off the gas at all. It's nice to be able to come to an event like this where you really can see a path for so many of these top tier robots. I really, really hope that we are crowning a brand new Golden Dumpster winner oh, here be so great. tonight. That would be really, really fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially like so many young builders at the top of the, uh, the field in the Beatles specifically. Okay. Do you think like this hat should like make, make its way into my, my normal rotation? Your rotation? Yeah. I what about, have, like, you, have like, you thought like about a bandana or a bandana? visor? Okay. Yeah, just fully embrace my, my age, you know? Maybe a pair of sunglasses, readers. Here's what I should do. Grow, grow a beard, put on sunglasses, hat, okay? Pajmina. Yeah. There you go. Heavy coats all, uh, all months of the year, you know? Really just cover all of this up, you know? Let's take a look at where all of this magic is born out of. Take a look. Here's the control room. Wow, look at this. We bring you nonstop action all day here at NHRL, and this, these are the heroes that make this all happen. These are some of the best people that you'll meet uh, in entertainment, and we love all of them. If, right there, you see in the back, uh, we have one gentleman pointing at another guy who's waving now. That's Colby. He's the one that's in our ears and feeding us all the information that we need to share yeah. with you. Below that is Gil. Gil is our uh, statistician and is basically the, uh, the human CPU of all of our knowledge here at NHRL. And uh, these are the folks that, that make this all happen. Colby's birthday was yesterday, Chris. Very, very exciting. I, I feel like, uh, you know, we're pretty good about celebrating birthdays here at NHRL. Um, so happy birthday, Colby. Fantastic. Couldn't have happened to a better person, you know? As he, he, as he described, it's, he's now on the third floor as he uh, is now 30 years old. Yeah. I never heard that phrase that way before. I like it. Yeah, that's great. I am, I'm standing on a, on a balcony on the fourth floor now. It's, it's, yeah. it's terrifying. Yeah, no, it's not good. No. Not good with heights. Fourth floor is bad. No, yeah, third floor is I don't, great. I don't, like the, I don't like the fourth floor anymore. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah, the elevator doesn't go back down, though. No. No. No, we're just marching toward the fifth floor. Don't Sixth floor and then just death, Chris. The, All right. <laughs> there's a roof at some point. Yeah. 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 There you go. Mm. They just toss you off of the... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Dark here in April. <laughs> Third floor. Fantastic floor. Okay. All right. We're going to go over to cage two. Ooh. Right. Wow. Okay. We've got Ace here facing off against Radix. Now, Ace is...
run by Steven Sukar from Schenectady, New York. This is the part of Drew Davis's Schenectady Combat Robotics Club. Now, this is a really cool educational program that Drew is running. Uh, you can see that little SCRC sticker there on yeah. top of ACE. And uh, this is like an after-school program. So if you're in the Schenectady area and uh, you can get Five, yourself connected to Drew, four, this is a really cool program three, that's just getting off two, the ground. One, fight, Erratics is robots, built by Aiden uh, Reichenberg and uh, is part of the University of Dayton. Whoa! Wow! Oh, huge hit there. Oh, my goodness. Erratics' weapon just going full bore and digging into the floor. See one of the forks that has been peeled off of Ace. Wow. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not seeing any belts on the bottom of Radix. This may be a hub motor design here. Wow, just kicking away that fork off of Ace. Ace is down a fork. This is an educational match here. Two minutes and 15 left here in this fight. That fork, that fork is askew. Oh, and it's gone. No fork, no weapon. Ace still hanging in there. Wow. Aiden pursuing his prey. Weapon on Ace continues to run. I thought that may have just been uh, some residual energy from these hits, but no, it's spinning slowly. But Radix is just, oh, big hit. Wow, turning the tables there. Ace landing an amazing hit. Minute 15 left here in this fight. But Radix really successfully corralling his opponent into the corner here. 60 seconds left. Ace desperate to rack up points. Another big hit there. Now we've seen damage on the part of Radix, ripping off the forks on Ace, peeling away part of this 3D printed body. But Ace has landed some good hits here. This is not a clear judge's decision as we enter the last 20 seconds of this fight. Ace will absolutely be picking up uh, damage and aggression points here. Just the aggression and control. 10 seconds left. They have escaped the count out. This one will be going to the judges. As we tick down the final seconds here, great opening match for the kids from Schenectady. Well done. A fantastic, brutal, punishing fight. Now joining me here, Lindsay Bear. Hello, Lindsay. Hello, Luke. It is always such a joy to be at the desk with you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I liked uh, our time that we spent together, you know, uh, back in March. It was yeah. like uh, one of the best vibes, you know, like uh, just, I don't know. I just love uh, how fun it is, you know? I just like hanging out with you. It's fun to hang out with you. I do have to say, I really enjoyed our time at the desk on January. Okay. Um, because watching you relive Hot Poke right. really meant a lot to me yeah. personally. Well, I, I ended up getting more food poisoning that, that night. I mean, you, sometimes you really just have to commit to the bit for the betterment of the audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to just put my health at risk for the uh, amusement of the YouTube live chat, okay? They, they've, they've given me a hat now. This is a brand new look for me. I hear there's another Pokeball on the way. <laughs> Stop. Are you serious? I, that is what I'm being told. Oh, my God. Wow. The reports are in. 
Yeah. Listen, I already had a bacon, egg, and cheese where the bacon was not all the way cooked, okay? Back so in the green room. I think that means the raw fish will even it out and you'll be fine. Right, well, you stack it yeah. on top of the floppy bacon, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. Put floppy bacon into the poke bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious. Everything was a little undercooked, I would say, you know? <sighs> you know, sometimes it's just, it's better that way. Yeah. Yeah. Who wants crispy bacon? Who wants fully cooked eggs? <laughs> Nobody wants that. No. Okay? No, no. We're a volume operation here, okay? People, some people like the runny yolks. Me? Runny whites. Runny whites. Runny yeah. whites. No, yeah, the, the yolk. Oh. Yeah. Fully cook the yolk, but yeah. if you can leave the Just whites. hard yolk. <laughs> Crumbly yolk. I'm making wet. myself Just, ill. Just the rest of the, yeah. You have to add it in later. You've got to separate the yeah. yolk, cook it fully. It's the French way. Yeah. They're very particular about their omelets and yes. then also how they They're cook. They're so cavalier when it comes to the bacon, egg, and cheese. Yeah. The French. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jambon. Yeah. Hey, yeah. oof. Yeah. Et fromage. Yeah. Well, the cheese was almost non-existent, too. All right? Let's go look at a fight in Cage 5. I don't think Let's God. spare the audience here. Oh my god, it's a fight in progress. And there's... Whoa. We've got Glacial Undercut and the Ugly Duckling here. Uh, already a wheel is down. We're about a minute and 20 seconds into this match. And this looks like a real... Oh, a little duck. Yeah, I love that. Now we've got Hal Not Rucker down. here in the audience, um, and I'm sure that he loves this little lifter. It's an homage, I'm sure, to Duck. We've got the un a angry duckling. And, you know, I've heard of the ugly duckling, but <laughs> I've never heard of the angry duckling before. You know what? It was bullied uh, for its looks growing up, and it became very angry, and now that is what we have here today. The angry duckling successfully ripping off a wheel from Glacial Undercut. Fantastic. Yeah, I saw Hal, he was walking past, and we did a little wave. And um, he's here somewhere, maybe he's up in the pits. Yeah, this is his first time to this competition, which is really exciting. However, his daughter, Hannah Rucker, she's been here before. Yes, yeah, Hal Rucker uh, lives out in Silicon Valley. He lives in Palo Alto, California. And Hannah recently graduated from high school there in Palo Alto and is now going to Brandeis University uh, in Boston. And um, it's technically Wal Waltham. 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 Yeah. And they just say Boston, right? What? Waltham is basically Boston, it's right? It's the outskirts. Yeah. You gotta, you know, take, uh, I believe, the commuter rail out there. Yeah. But um, I'm, I'm really, like, I'm, I'm envious of people like you, because you can say, oh, I went to school in Boston, okay? And then people are like, hmm, where? And then, mm. like, you know, it's a big question mark because there's so many great schools in Boston. Speaking know? of people who go to great schools in Boston, sure. uh, coming up, we have Jamison Go, okay. famously of MIT. Yeah, he will perennial be fighting. student. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, He's still trying to get those, like, uh, last PE credits so he can get his, uh, his bachelor's degree. Been there. Yeah. Uh, he is fighting soon with Silent X. Yes. And uh, Silent X has been, had been fairly dominant in this competition for a while. Right. The Fully exploiting the Walker weight bonus. Yes. Yeah. And some of those weight bonuses have changed. Yeah. Um, and so he doesn't have the full uh, five pounds that he used to be. And so now he's, uh, Jameson kind of has to go back to the drawing board a little bit and figure out how to still be as dominant yeah. as he has um, grown accustomed to being with this robot yeah. with less weight. Yeah, yeah. I know that he's experimenting with a hub motor for this uh, for this horizontal, but it's got wheels and it's been pulled down in weight, so there's a little bit less um, armor. And is this Silent X here in the pink corner? That sure looks like it. I see the X on the back. That could just be, you know, like uh, perhaps a Twitter r robot or yes, something. Yes, this is you know? Elon Musk's uh, entry into the competition. Yeah. Watch out for sudden acceleration and no <laughs> brakes. <laughs> That's a Cybertruck reference, everybody. All right? We love a Cybertruck reference. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that hub motor, looking, it, it really changes the entire profile and look of Silent X here. 
And Lindsay, a robot that you called out on this week's podcast, choose kindness here oh. in pink. Yes, I did. Choose kindness facing off against Jameson. Go. Oh, look, I can see Jamo over there. The fight stance hasn't started yet, okay? He's choosing kindness. He does not want to intimidate his opponent with the fight stance and. Oh, no. There maybe it goes. I spoke too soon. There's the stance. Five, there we go. Four, three, two, one. Fight. Robots fight. Oh, choose kindness. A very aggressive start here. Oh, oh. fantastic. Not Bringing afraid. the fight to Silent X. Not afraid to go weapon to weapon with one of the most fearsome robots in this competition. Choose brutality, Lindsay. Look at this. <laughs> wow. Oh, what was that? It looks like a piece of Silent X, if I'm not mistaken. I think that that may have been a fork off of Choose Kindness. Wow, huge Lion. And Jameson just biding his time. This is not the first time that Jameson Go has fought a beater bar. Wow, Choose Kindness really just going full send here. I really appreciate just the, uh, the fearless, you know, YOLO approach that we're seeing from Choose Kindness here. Two minutes left here in this fight. Choose Kindness continuing to attack. Jameson Go just staying squared up with his opponent toward the center of the box, trying very hard not to get stuck up against the rail or stuck on a piece of detritus here inside of this box. There is debris all over the place. And that could really change the course of a competition if it were to get sucked up into a robot. This looks like black foam from Choose Kindness. There we go, Whoa. wheels! Popping up both wheels at once! Fantastic! Choose mobility, Jameson, look at that! Wow. wow! A minute 15, he saw his opening and took it, popping off both wheels at once. Amazing! Have Knock we out. ever seen a simultaneous wheel? Oh, sure. At the same time? Yeah, yeah, it's so much fun. I love it. It doesn't happen often, no. but when it does, it's a special little treat. It is Echoes of Squire, absolutely. That bot, uh, <laughs> that's one of my favorite fights of all time. Um, wow, what a fight to go up against with the, you know, your first bot. And I will wow. tell you, Builder Lulu Nance from New York City, true rookie here, yeah. first robot, first competition, and she did great taking it to Jameson Go. Very aggressive driving, very well piloted. Cannot wait to see Choose Kindness in her second match of the day. I'm, I'm really impressed for the first, I mean, almost the entirety of that match. It was so head to head. She, I mean, she was not laying off. She was not holding back. She wasn't afraid to go weapon to weapon. Uh, I think it really paid off. Obviously, lost both her wheels, kind of uh, all downhill after that. But to say that that was your first match, oh, incredible. Amazing. amazing. Like fighting the LeBron James of our sport. Like, that's pretty awesome. Lulu here in her intake form says that this is a high school independent studies project. Amazing. So, um fighting robots and I can get some high school credit for it. I'm going to build an awesome robot. Win-win. Clearly she's been practicing driving. Oh yeah. Because that did not seem like a rookie no. driver no. at all. There is no, a lot of times with rookie robots you see them trying to find their footing at first. Yeah. Like driving in a little bit of a circle, going sure. left when you should go right. None of that. Yeah. Really like risking it all in that fight. Yeah. An incredibly aggressive opening for your first fight ever. Lulu, you have our attention. <laughs> Cannot wait to see Choose Kindness back in the box for your second qualifying fight. Yeah, and we will see Jameson not only with Silent X in this competition, but also with his 12 pound Psycho. Yeah. Which, I don't know, have you seen photos of Psycho? He's uh, been posting them to his Instagram. I, I don't follow Jameson on Instagram. You're missing out. I'm joking. I actually do. <laughs> I was just trying to say that, you know, but to make it seem like it was weird that you do. But listen, everybody here follows JMO. Yeah. He's a great follow. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Can I, like, share his account? Go find him. You can, you can do the research on your own. Yeah. But um, he posts a lot of his um, build reports there, a lot of photos of the progress. Yeah. And he a has... A lot of vacation photos. Yeah. 
some food. Get to photos. know him, you know. Yeah. Also, outside Most of the Most great recipes, you know. <laughs> um, but Psycho looks incredible. I'm uh, shaking. If I if I was competing against him today, I'd literally be shaking in my boots. I've only seen last year's Psycho, so oh. it's different. I mean, it it I don't know how different it is okay. in terms of you know. Um, what the outward appearance of it, but it, it just looks so good. It's so sleek. It's so clean. It's tiny, which will be interesting if it does go against Maximizer. Yeah. How will that... Which I, I, I have a feeling we're going to see that match up today. I, I can't predict yes. anything, but that's... Yeah. I just see it in, in That's my the number visions. one and number two seed. Yeah. 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 Oh, what are your thoughts? Because I feel like I have some, but I would love to be swayed. I think that Maximizer has a really good shot against Psycho, just given the um, given the geometry of that really mm. long body um, and his ability to really whip around and attack Psycho's wheels. Um, Psycho, you know. It, it hits hard, but it's going to be finding that plow mm. on the front of Maximizer a lot. <clears throat> Jake is serious about oh, this yeah. fight. He is ready for this fight. Um, and he's trying to shake off some recent gremlins that he's had with the robot. Uh, he is hungry to, yeah. to win. Um, Jameson is also bringing Megatron. We're going to be seeing Megatron later today. Yeah. I, I feel like the last time I talked to him, he was like, I'm never going to bring three robots again to a competition. It's way too much stress. But again, again, he's done it. April. He can't help himself. Yeah. He just can't help himself. And I'm here for it. I love all yeah. of his designs, all of his builds, um, right down from, you know, three pound robots to his heavyweight robots. So yeah. I love Megatron. Megatron does look different this year. Did you see this on Instagram? I did. Oh, okay. All right, yes. good. Uh, as Adam Wrigley uh, playfully called it, um, oh, what would he, he uh, um, Megamulsifier? Megamulsifier. Emulsitron. Emulsitron. Yeah, it has treads now. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. I cannot wait to see that. That is really, really cool. Yeah, um, Jameson has been at the top of the heap with Megatron for years and years and years. Um, in the last several now, he has lost to Emulsifier in the championships. And so I think he's really hungry and very determined to figure out a way to beat Emulsifier at their own game. He's, he's beat them in the past, but the last couple of years, it hasn't quite gone his way. And he, he is so determined to try and reverse that. Now, in the 30s, you know, we have some pretty tough competition. We've got two robots that have already qualified earlier this year, so you know that they have that staying power to get deep into the uh, the bracket. We've got Moccasin run by Zoe oh, yeah. Lambert, the scaled-down version of Mammoth built by Ricky Willems. We've got Waddles from Team WPI. They're kind of like Team 30-pounder. Mm -hmm. Hits hard, has the tendency to violently disassemble or <laughs> disassemble its opponent first. You know, You're going to get one survive. or the other. But got, which one will it be? We've got Aries from Team MIT. You know, like, we've had so many... Uh, oh, my God. That was a wild throw there, Chris Ooh. Moran. There we go. Oh, boy. There's oh, boy. Lights. Can I... There's lights that are blinding us. Heck, yeah. <laughs> this is awful. Hi. Here we go. I think... Was that for you, Lindsay? Um... You know, that one, I think Chris Moran had something against you and really just wanted to I only throw saw it at four. your head. He must have thro taken one out from behind. Let's All see. Right. Let's see. Can I get this? Oh. Oh, no. Oh, here, yeah. I'll get that. Oh, this is the coveted Mr. Roper. Yeah, that's fine. Chris, it's okay. You can, <laughs> you can throw plushies at me all day, okay? That's all right. Uh, here we've got these amazing set of plushies. We have these limited edition plushies mm. that pop up uh, really for uh, your favorite people. Now, wait a second, Chris Moran. Okay, you know what, I'll tell you what, I think my plushie is sold out. That's why mine's not up here. Because oh. this is the Lindsay plushie. Okay? I hear there's only two left, here, which, can you, what's wrong with you people? Can you make the face? <laughs> here. It, oh, that's pretty good, okay. I am always smiling, so. Uh, We've got the Sam, the Sam Hansen face. Look at this, he's always frowning. That was good. That was a good impression. Thank you. You just need some glasses and a mustache. 
I don't know what. Oh, oh, it's a mustache. Oh, I thought it was a frown. Oh no, have you ever seen Sam frown? No, I've seen him cry. Well, yeah, but All even right. then he's smiling. Oh, there's there's our beautiful Sam. Yeah, okay, Look it's a that mustache. I'm so sorry. Mustache. Here's Ricky. That's definitely not a mustache. <laughs> no. This is. This is a sleepy Ricky, okay? This, this he's, he's a safety officer here. Yeah. Uh, he's in charge of safety, and he has to work long nights. And um, by the time you see him up here on the desk, he's so tired, you know? Those are also very reminiscent of the mammoth slash moccasin eyes. Yeah. Fun fact, um, these actually used to have a furry side um, to kind of mimic the uh, yeah. you know, uh, mammoth-esque uh, look. Um, but I think it was too difficult to work with, so they scrapped it, and now it's just brown. Plushies available in the NHRL uh, store. Yeah. And I think I, I see him over there. He's going to start throwing robot kits at us, okay? Oh, well, let's hope those are still in the box. Yeah. Those are sharp. Right. Um, this one's, oh, my God, Kyle. Yeah. All right. We're going to go over here to cage <laughs> two. We've got this really interesting robot in the pink corner. This Five, is a dual four, horizontal. Three, We've got two, here uh, Franklin one. versus Fight. Chaos Robots Upright. fight. Franklin built by Jake Williams from Mason, Ohio. This is the team UCCR Robots. This is a true rookie. First robot, first competition, and that right horizontal is struggling to power up. It looks like some sort of bear trap. Yeah. Or like an angry sea, you know? Yeah, an angry sea. Uh, yeah. Chaos Upright giving me some division vibes. Yeah, oh uh, wow. Pioneered by Seth Schaefer of Just Cause Robotics. Chaos Upright here, uh, driven by Joshua Buttrick from Worcester, Massachusetts, from Team WPI going 0-2 from the past uh, one event under its belt. So really hang hungry for its first uh, first win. In cases like this where the <laughs> robots cannot find each other, we may be going into a double countout and we will send it to the judges. Chaos Upright looks like a, um, a uh, Ferris wheel of death. Yeah, oh, I can see the hand here. Yeah. Just going into a double knockout. Just didn't have the mobility. It was They were able to move, but just not the control to be able to find their opponent. Now, uh, some people think that this is a boring fight, but I don't, all right? What do you love about it? I love that uh, you get to preserve your robot for your second oh. fight of the day. You know, I love that the judges have to go back and read everything with a fine tooth comb <laughs> to try and figure out. I mean, like, it's probably damage on the part of, uh, of the double horizontal mm. because, you know, it lost one of its, uh, its weapons right out of the gate. So, you know. Now, what I like about matches like that is what I like in most sitcoms, the, the classic will they, won't they? Okay. Right? Are they going to date? Are yeah. they not? This and is more like Seinfeld's where nothing happens, <laughs> okay? It's a show about nothing, and we love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Classic. Yeah. Um... If you, if you want to pick up your own plushie, they're $30 here inside of the store. You can also check out the Eel Monkey Art Store. Um, and these are fantastic. I have three or four plushies at home myself, including my own limited edition plushie. Um, yeah, and I'm just assuming it's not up here because we've sold out. You're very popular, Luke, people, people for wanna, some reason. People want to, yeah, no, they love to see my uncomfortable face, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's great. Uh, the next iteration of the Luke plush bot should yeah. have a hat. No, it, sh it should have like a little poke bowl, you know? Ooh. And some chopsticks. <laughs> and a little toilet. And anybody who buys it immediately gets food poisoning. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's stuffed with fish. Um, it starts to smell real bad, but then it evens out. Yeah, this is great. I love this. I feel like these are like all of my little friends, you know? So oh, I like thought you were, I'm like, moving Ricky away, like R Ricky didn't count as your no, friend. No, look, look at this. Look. You see this? Aw. You, you can buy these, and you can, like, kind of talk to them, like, before you go to bed at night. Yeah. You know? Tea parties were available yeah. in plush bot form. Yeah, not, not in human form. No. 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 That's, that's not good. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you can buy your own Sam. Get your own Lindsay. It's great. Um... I do want to know, what, what, what do you think the next plushie is going to be? Oh, we got to get an Adam plushie. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, with a 
the big man bun right on the top. <laughs> Instead of an antenna. I love yeah. it. Okay, we got big news because okay. we've got a big fight Ooh, going on in a big cage. Our first big box fight of the, uh, of the day. I can see Jake Hoffman over there, and there is Maximizer. Wow, our number one ranked 12-pounder uh, of all time entering this, uh, this competition at the very top of the field. Maximizer here with a record of 16 and four across the past five events. Two-time Golden Dumpster winner in Maximizer. But, comma, but. <gasps> There's more. There's been a couple of rough matches mm. recently with Maximizer, and Maximizer is hungry to shake off uh, that record and really come in here with a convincing win against Brandon Bennett Young and Mind Flayer. Now, uh, Lindsay, did you get a chance to see Mind Flayer last night up in the pits? This is brand new to me. I am so excited to see more from this robot. So like, imagine you've got the big wheels, right? Just like yep. huge. However, the weapon is just right here on the, like, on the front face. So like the weapon is coming towards you. Huh. Spinning like this. So we've got like um, the Wumbos of the world. We've got the Huges of the world. This, this is, is like different. the cursed child of <laughs> Wumbo and Huge. Yes, exactly. I love a cursed child. This, I believe, is Brandon's second time out with Mind Flayer um, of all time, really making its debut and working out a lot of its kinks at Motorama. We are going to see if he has what it takes to eat into the top plate of Jake Hoffman's killer robot in Maximizer. Now, uh, I think Jake will tell you if you ask him, he is locked in this competition. He is ready to go. He is hungry. But Brandon, he's a perennial. He's been in this competition for years and years. This is not his first rodeo. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see what this comes down to. I don't know if anybody can predict what we're about to see here. And that is the exciting thing about combat robotics. Oh, I think it's going to be chaos. That's my prediction here, Lindsay. Our first big box fight of the day, and it's a big one. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. All right, we're seeing some weird physics right out of the box from Brandon Bennett Young and Mind Flayer. Maximizer trying to uh, mount a defense here. It's almost like with big wheel bots, everyone wants to go after the wheels. So let's see if uh, this is the play here. The chaos of Mind Flayer, though, is oh. what makes it difficult. Doing a weird thing, not the thing. Have we seen Maximizer wow. do this before? No, they're both at an angle. <laughs> These weapons oh. incredible. Maximizer back on its feet. Mind Flayer still, I don't know if this is its strategy or if it's just having difficulty. Oh no, this is the strategy, Lindsay. As, a, as Mind Flayer kind of lurches around inside of the box, that orientation of the blade changes. So it's difficult to play in for. You are going to get hit um, if you are, um, if you're facing Mind Flayer. I'm not seeing any movement here for Mind Flayer. Yeah, it looks like that robot is dead in the water. Maximizer winning its first fight of the day. Yeah, here comes the countdown. This is what Jake needs to do here. He's got to stay conservative and really protect this robot and as he takes it into the bracket, hopefully later today. He is one qualifying win away from making it into that bracket. And I think he's in good shape. It does not look like he took a lot of damage in that fight, despite kind of going into the belly of the beast there um, during that one rather chaotic interaction. Jake looking a little perplexed. <laughs> it's Brandon is to, cool as ever. It's tough to plan for a robot that has weird gyroscopic effects. Um, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know, you're going to come out with some kind of damage, and you're trying to limit the the damage that you come out with. Exactly. Now, one of the interesting things in that fight, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked like Jake went inverted on purpose. He started as an overcutter um, rather than you know the traditional undercutter. Ooh! All right, we're gonna go over to cage here. two here. It's a fight in progress. We got V Lookup facing off against Tomahawk 2.0. 
Tomahawk wow. 2.0, the beater bar there. Yeah, V lookup up on its head. V lookup is looking down right now because hey. it's pointed to the floor. Blincy, very good. <laughs> V lookup, one of my favorite, uh, you know, named Knock robots out. here in the, uh, the competition because it's searching for, you know, a database error. You know, mm. like uh, we. It found one. <laughs> this entire competition is run on databases. <laughs> it's just databases all the way down, Lindsay. <laughs> and uh, a single V lookup error would just crash the entire thing. So bad uh, juju. I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. Tomahawk, this is a this is another Ohio robot, mm. and um, they have a really cool sticker up there in the pit. Even though I'm not an Ohioan, I was able to talk my way into one. It's a sticker. It says Ohio versus the world. Oh yeah. And that's really how they they enter this competition. You know, you've got Combat Robotics uh, team there at uh, the University of Cincinnati. You've got now the University of Dayton here. We've got kids from Akron. Um, really, the Ohioans are here versus the world. Uh, it's really, really cool. Now, they are, they're pitted against the entire world, but there's one country in particular that I think uh, they, they really have beef with. Really? A country? A whole country. Brazil. Ohio is landlocked, and they, <laughs> they're... They're against Brazil. They're against Brazil, and Brazil okay. against Ohio. Okay. When they are in the pits together, we have to have, we have to have security because it can get a little, yeah, a little dicey. Yeah. 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 They're like trying to shield the robot from the Brazilians, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, Brazilians animosity. coming over trying to like. <laughs> Take like an ESC or something out of the robots. You no, know? we are trying to build up this rivalry. It doesn't, it doesn't actually yeah. exist, yeah. but we're trying to like will it into existence. However, something that I've just willed into what? existence. What? What? Two of my favorite builders. What? We've got Brandon Bennett Young and Jake Hoffman. All right, let's let's put the bots up yeah. here. Here we go. Wow, look at this thing. Oof. Yeah. Wow. This Holy smokes. Tegris or this Here Tegris has become many layers. Yeah, so the Tegris is basically interwoven plastic, sort of like carbon fiber, but UH and W material. And so uh, Jake did a really good job of uh, messing it up. So good work, <laughs> <laughs> good work, Jake. <laughs> wow. And so uh, really the big thing is with this robot, yeah, first of all, very unstable, very unfun to sort of move around. Uh, but second, Jake did a really good job basically pulling it apart slowly. And I think some of the shock from his hit really sort of knocked the robot out and really made it, uh, made it kind of sad. What do you think, Jake? <laughs> Thank you, Minister Bennett Young. Uh, <laughs> it was, it's such an honor fighting such a great competitor in Brandon. You know, I remember watching old clips of Demogorgon, so I was certainly, like, super nervous. <laughs> like, I'm still pretty much shaking in this fight. Uh, you know, it's such a, sorry, um, it's such a chaotic robot, and chaotic robots are really hard to plan for. And, you know, if it was anyone else's bot, I wouldn't be nervous, but, you know, this one is Brandon, so it's, it's totally different. Um, so it was all about just staying patient. Um, robot gyros, don't know why I was on my side for like 15 <laughs> seconds fun. there. Yeah, that was, was really annoying. Yeah. So never seen that one before. Uh, you know, interesting. Did so you that take was cool. any damage when you kind of went into the underbelly of I Mind Flayer? I was really nervous. That's a really chaotic situation underneath those wheels because he's got that blade ripping and it's, uh, you know, it's a super thin blade so it can cut through stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a really chaotic scenario. No scenario that any builder wants to find themselves in, but uh, especially... Now, Jake, real quick, yes. your mom is in the audience here. My mom today. is out there, yeah, yes. Yeah, you want to give a shout yes. out? Brooks yeah. Hoffman is out in the audience. She, she flew here. So, no, she looks like me and she's got a Maximizer shirt on. So, fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> that's, that's how you know she's. I think oh, do you. Come, come on, mom. Up, mom. Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. You're yeah, come a star. On up here. You're, you're a star. <laughs> big, big hug. Big hug. Oh, oh, how proud of your son are you? So proud. Yay! Yay! Yay. <laughs> me <out>. Okay. <laughs> Maximizer is a fantastic robot. You know, we are really uh, we are really looking forward to seeing your run here today. 
One more win and you get into the brackets. Brandon, you've got two more chances. You gotta win both of them to get in. Yeah, that's the thing about it. So Mind Flayer being a new bot, I sort of really want to get it in. I know Vorion's already got it, so I really want him to sort of get a chance. I want Mind Flayer to get in as well, sort of different strategy for the finals. Um, I think this machine has the potential to ruin most of the 12-pound field. So I'm really looking forward to trying to getting that uh, figured out. I don't know why I dive, take it apart, to give it a look. Should be good. Well, Brandon, best of luck. We're always rooting for you and uh, excited to see what comes for the rest of the day. Yeah. Thank you very much. We're going to go back to cage one. We've got another fight here loaded in. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you so much, Jake. All right. Now, uh, they have warned me in production that we've got blue cheese loaded in. So if you're here in the audience, try really hard not to blink right at the start of this match. And uh, let's see if we can catch it on camera. It's kind of like uh, the Bigfoot of uh, NHRL in yep. that, like, um, its uh, matches are very short. <laughs> They're usually violent. And sometimes we don't get that one hit Five, that we want to see four, that one shot. Three. Let's Two, check it out one. here. Fight, robots fight. Here we go. Oh, that sound is gorgeous. Oh, all oh. right. Oh, surviving the first hits. The bot is intact. The weapon. The weapon might be down. Okay. Huge pop into the air. Without the weapon on Blue Cheese, Radon is going to have a, a fun time just kind of popping him all over the arena. All right here. Blue Cheese run by Matt Luther from Derry, Pennsylvania. Blue Cheese taking a lot of hits. As of yet, not exploded. And Radon continuing to run. Blue Cheese here hobbled. Let's see if Radon can explode the robot. Listen, if I'm Matt, I am so happy right now that my bot is in one piece. Well, there's still two minutes left here, Lindsay. You never I've know. I've been known to jinx things before, so I guess I should, uh, you know, hold my tongue there, but... Tap out. We've got to tap out. All right, this is a win for Radon from Aiden Rechtenberg from Moraine, Ohio, and the University of Dayton. University of Dayton winning its first fight of the day. We can see a shot there of Matt. Taking a look at Blue Cheese, wondering what happened to the weapon. Now, Aiden uh, ran Radix earlier today. This is Radon. And we got a little shot, a little celebratory <laughs> shot from Fluffy. Gazoon tight, Fluffy. Even our house bots get cold sometimes. Um, you know, Blue Cheese, it's uh, making progress. It's now staying together in one, one piece, which oh, is yeah. pretty good. And we all saw that. Yeah. We all just saw that. So yeah. it made the stream. Yeah. The video exists. It does. <laughs> People have seen now two minutes of yeah. Blue Cheese. Yeah. Sasquatch disproven. It's good. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons why Blue Cheese has the tendency to explode, or at least it did in the past, is because Matt is just totally dumping a huge yeah. amount of power and speed into that egg beater. He wants to run the fastest egg beater in the competition in the 12s. And because he's spinning it at that just extreme speed, it has a tendency that if he hits something, um, uh, it will stress test that entire weapon. Like I've mm. seen that weapon crack. I've seen that robot explode into pieces that hit literally all four corners of the box. Yeah. We saw a bit more restrained blue cheese here. Um, but if he can get that dialed in, this is a really a robot to watch in the 12s. He is obsessed with power. It's almost like when you design a video game character and you're yeah. at the beginning of the game and you have to figure out where you want to put your points into. Yeah. It's the exact same yeah. for combat robotics. Are you going to put a lot of points into power? Are you going to put a lot of points into your armor? Yeah. Uh, how do you want your robot to kind of approach a fight? And it, there's a lot of strategy that goes into that. Yeah. It's very difficult to... Um, you know, plan for a robot that is like equally yeah. um, spread out in all categories and still be competitive. So you yeah. have to think about, you know, where you're going to sink a lot of your points into. Yeah. And absolutely. then if you go too off the extreme on one end, then you get Five, a blue cheese issue. Four, yeah. Three, We're going over to cage two. two 
One. Fight. Robots fight. All right, we've got International Composter here. That's the overhead spinner facing off against Blue Bean, which very helpfully is in blue. Wedge blue Bean, gone. Yeah, it looks like a Thagomizer, Minimizer, Maximizer style robot here. Just uh, condensed. <laughs> yeah, International Composter here. I was, uh, I was reading about this robot, very cool. The uh, overhead spinner, true rookie, first robot, first competition. Built by a college freshman engineering, uh, built by college freshman engineering students who met while working at a local farm. Wow. Thus the name International Composter. Uh, there is, of course, a big farm Knockout. equipment brand, International Harvester, so this is International Composter. And with all of that, we have a knockout. Now, okay. thinking about blue cheese again, Luke, sure. do you have a preference, blue cheese or ranch? Blue cheese all the way. Oh. Well, okay, well, it depends. Blue cheese with uh, chicken wings. Fair. Correct. Ranch with, I don't know, ranch, ranch never. No. Okay, have I pitched you my idea to improve You realize ranch? there's tens of thousands of people. There's easily someone who's working in the ranch industry <laughs> watching on the stream. They're going to steal your idea. I just want to see it come to life. I don't care if it's me, if it's someone else. I will tell you that you have made this concoction for us yeah. in the past, and it is fantastic. Yeah, so ranch never. We're going to amend that. Ranch sometimes. Ranch when it's... Granch. Granch, yes. Granch. G-R-A-N-C-H. And it's a garlic ranch. A garlic ranch, yeah. It, it writes itself. Yeah. Uh, what, is it like equal parts garlic and ranch? It's like, okay, any recipe that calls for garlic, you just kind of eyeball it no matter what. If it says one yeah. clove, three cloves, whatever, you just sure. do what your heart tells you. Right. It's very similar to ranch. This you're just putting ranch. raw garlic in or are you sauteing the garlic? No, 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 raw. Raw garlic <laughs> in, in ranch. And and sauteed. It's it's the triple. It's a combination. It's the double G Got a little ranch. bit of raw garlic, a little bit of sauteed garlic. <laughs> and then a little bit of jarred garlic. A little bit of jarred garlic. Just really going bottom yeah. of the barrel. Yeah. See, okay. no, none of that is true. I just can't give my actual recipe on yeah. the air because that's where, you know, that's, that's the ideas proprietary get stolen. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's proprietary. Yeah, yeah. But you've got you to gotta see if you can file a patent, maybe. Yeah. You know? You've got you've to lock away half of the recipe in one, like, Swiss yeah. bank and then lock away the other half in the other Swiss bank. Yeah. You know? When I die, the recipe dies with me. Lindsay Bear, future Granch billionaire. Okay, all right, you heard it you here heard it first. Here. You know, uh, everyone's going to be eating Granch, you know, in 10 years from now. <laughs> yeah, they're you called like, it. Oh, yeah, oh, Lindsay, she's a, she's a recluse, you know, just lives in her 50 room mansion, you know? Yeah. Just with all of her Granch money. I am so happy to say we are moving on from Granch <laughs> and over to Cage One, <laughs> where we have another big pop fight loading in. Good. Okay. Oh, someone in the chat said uh, he thought that the uh, the name was going to actually signify Grape Ranch, and that sounds foul. Um, all right, we've got <laughs> we've got wait grapefruit juice and and ranch dressing. That is a cursed that is a cursed uh, recipe right there. Um, <laughs> we've got we've got Arsenal facing off against Killa Jewel. Kayla Jewel here is this undercutter in the foreground in black and orange, uh, run by David Dreyer from uh, from Ohio. Another Ohio versus the world. Facing off against Arsenal here. Arsenal uh, driven by, ooh, this is from Team Rumblebots, from David Agneses here over in the pink corner. Now, uh, Arsenal is built by engineering students at the University of Puerto Rico Mayaguez campus. Now, this is a modular design that allows the robot to switch between horizontal and modular configurations. Horizontal and vertical configuration, as I'm assuming. Here, they're going for undercutter versus undercutter Five, action. Four, and uh, three, we're going to see if these two, students one. Fight. can pull out a win here. 
This Puerto Rican team here successfully getting out of the pink corner. And Kella Jewel's weapon is spinning very, very slowly. Oh, there nice we go. Too soon. Killa Jewel now up to speed. Oh, big, big spot. Killa Jewel at its angle here. Are we going to see an overhead attack here? Wow. David doesn't want to spin down the weapon. Okay, now back onto his feet. Some weird gyroscopic effects here. The kids from Puerto Rico here trying to uh, exit and spin up their weapon. But, but it looks like Arsenal's not spinning at the same speed that Kilajul is. Now the, the, uh, the geometry here favors Arsenal as the mid cutter able to cut into uh, the, the armor package here on Kilajul. Those wheels are pretty far back on Arsenal, and Kilajoule just has not found them yet. But it sounds like a jet in here. It is so loud. But that weapon, every time it makes contact, it seems like it's, it's not able to necessarily keep that momentum going. 75 seconds left here in this fight, and it looks like Arsenal could be dead, stuck on something. Tap out. There we go. Tap out. These engineering students from Puerto Rico tapping out early, and Kilajul is your winner. David has spent so many months, uh, years at this point, refining Kilajul. It's very exciting to see how far it's come. David Dreyer here is a uh, aerospace engineering student from Kent State and part of Team KSU Combat Robotics. If you are a Kent State student watching the uh, stream here today, go and check out this club. We have so many very cool university teams here at this competition. I'd say half of the pits are university students as uh, you know, running robots as part of university teams. And you absolutely love to see that. I mean, there are so many amazing builders who have started their careers in college and then went on to graduate and then, you know, became prolific in the sport after that. So I think, you know, you see a lot of kids fighting and sometimes you might think like, oh, if I didn't get started early, is it too late for me? And, I, you know, obviously the answer to that is never. But if you are in college right now and you're watching this and you're like, how can I get started? Yeah. Check out your college. They might have a robotics program. They and likely they do. Don't. And if they don't... Be the change you want to see in the world, college students. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, um, I was talking to Alex Pick, who is a Northeastern University student. Yep. Uh, go Huskies. Um, and he, you know, started uh, with help from uh, other people in the university, a Plastic Ant League. So yeah. they had their first event last week. They had eight robots. You don't always have to have a thousand robots and start really big. You can start small. It's okay. Um, and it's something that is within your reach. So yeah, if, if you want to see it in your college and it's not there, go talk to someone because there's going to be other people with this interest. And um, that's where you can really develop a lot of these skills. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to go over to cage two here. Oh, we've got loaded Luke. in. Speaking of college students, we've got Clyde here in the pink corner. This is our top ranked beetle here in the competition today. Clyde run by Gabe Brown from Team WPI. Clyde um, ranks number 15 of all time. This is a robot that enters this competition with a record of 12 and 4 across the past three events. And um, Clyde has some new upgrades to its flamethrower to hold that allows it to hold twice the amount of fuel. We've seen Clyde really come out of the gate roaring in about 90 seconds in. The, yeah. the weapon just runs out of fuel. Let's see if we can see a full three minutes here of flames from Clyde. Five, four, Hopefully three, he keeps doing okay. It two, appears he's on fire one. himself. Fight, robots, fight. Clyde here wow. facing off against MK Nerd. 
applied he successfully, really... uh, corralling his opponent back into its starting square and just torching this robot here. He really makes it look easy because of the width of that robot. He can just kind of pull up, push you into the corner, and torch you. Oh, this flame is gorgeous. Wow. Oh, my God. Wow. It is an inferno. MK Nerd on fire. MK Nerd here looks like it's a dual horizontal. There's an overhead spinner and an undercutter, and it is being cooked. It looks like the power of the sun is in cage two here. It is so bright. I need to break out my eclipse glasses from <laughs> earlier this month. Wow. And now looks like though that flame is, no, I nope. spoke too soon. Nope, you can just summon it whenever you want, Lindsay. It's fantastic. Clyde with its long floppy body, just corralling its opponent into the corner here. MK Nerd just desperate to mount some kind of defense and not lose the entire robot. Flamethrowers, incredibly effective at the beetle weight level and so delightful. We see internals on fire. Those flames are picking up. I think MK Nerd has a serious issue going on right now. That is like a real fire going on. There's something in there that is just <laughs> continuing to burn. I think it's probably some rubber. It looks like uh, like they found something juicy inside of the robot. There's like little sparks coming off of this flame. He still has some mobility. I don't think that weapon has any power left in it, but he's got a little fight in him and he's not given up. But this design from Clyde, this wide body robot is so hard to counter. Looks like one half of the drive is gone here on MK Nerd. Just incredibly hobbled through this entire fight. This was one sided from the start, 45 seconds left. Now I don't know if the flame in Clyde has run out, like similar to what we've seen in the past, or if he's just taking it easy on MK Nerd, who's on fire himself right now, but. Clyde incredibly ahead on the points Oh here. yeah, he doesn't need any more flame, but I, I wonder if it's by choice I or. I mean, I'd like more flame. Yeah. Please, sir, may I have some more flame, Clyde? <laughs> 15 seconds left, they're going to take it to the judges. Clyde winning its first match of the day, MK Nerd perhaps melting the entire robot into one piece. They've escaped the count out, comma, somehow, and uh, it's gonna go to the judges. Wow. That we are is... not making the judges work very hard for that. No, a lot that of That was times, a pretty one-sided match. I don't envy the judges. Their job is very hard in many, many cases. I do believe this will be a quick turnaround, though. Yeah. Yeah, not yeah. a ton of deliberation, um, oh, look, and you can see a little bit of flame. Clyde was saving it. Okay. But look at that. That is an active fire inside of MK Nerd. That flame, that fire is organically growing <laughs> within that robot. Yeah. Clyde has not had their, their flame on in minutes at this no. point. No, something is definitely burning all Ooh, the way. Oh, look at that melted goo in the middle. I, I don't know if that weapon is even... Ow! Oh! Oh! <laughs> It's wow. Oh, <laughs> yes! Oh my God! It was able to shed whatever was on fire and in the process shed its entire components all over the There's box. There's still a little floor. fire inside of the robots. <laughs> wow. Wow. Listen. L Luke, it's starting again. Yes. It's starting again. Yes, yes. It's like those birthday candles, those trick birthday candles. You blow them out one time, you think that they're out, and then it comes right back. The 10-year-old pyro in me is delighted. Oh, yeah. We've got referee Nick here blasting these robots with the, uh, the fire extinguisher. We have uh, seen Dutch oven in the past completely melt robots. Yeah. But this is a full disassembly. Yeah, this is a very polite uh, <laughs> melting, you know? Just like a little bit of, uh, here you go. Do you like this? Would you like more? Okay. It's somehow less goo, but more violent. Yeah. 
Yeah, this was more like a, like a cat playing with a mouse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, I would love to know, so the thing that was originally on fire that okay. was shed free, Sure. The, the fire extinguisher took care of that. I wonder what that piece is and why it was able to sustain flame for so long. Was that a wheel? I, it could be. Like, I don't see the wheel. Like, the... I can see that orange wheel down there. Um, I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm wondering if maybe it was a part of the top plate or something mm. um, that was holding, you know, kind of sandwiching the pieces together. But uh, that was pretty gross, <laughs> and I liked it. That was great. Wow, that's a, that's going to be one of the memorable ones for me today. I know it. The day is young, but that one will live on. I mean, he cracked it open like an egg. Like, that was great. Runny whites? Cooked yeah. yolk. No, that was a fully cooked egg. <laughs> All right, a little fire bit more. extinguisher back. A little bit more. Got to make sure we get in all those nooks and crannies there. Now, uh, Cage 2 is specifically designed for flamethrowers, beetleweight flamethrowers. It has a taller cage than the other cages. It has a taller ceiling, I should say. And uh, that allows us to mount our cameras a little bit higher, so it's a bit harder to melt them. And um, like all of the other cages here at NHRL, um, really ha has this very cool um, flame system. Uh, it's a negative air pressure system, and we suck out all of the, uh, the noxious fumes from these boxes and eject them safely um, out of the building. Um, so we're able to run multiple flamethrowers at the same time. And if a cage for some reason goes down, a la Dutch oven, <laughs> um, we have five other cages that we can run fights in, which is really, really cool. Now, the cage was not always designed that way. That is a lesson that we had to learn the hard way. Yeah. Thanks to Dutch Oven and thanks to bots like Mixtape that came in and completely melted the, the bearings and the mountings that held our cameras in within the box. Um, although, against all odds, the cameras themselves and, and the iPhones were yeah. unscathed. But um, Pretty amazing. Yeah, lights would fall from the ceiling. Just it was carnage in the yeah. box itself. And uh, yeah, we took a look at that and said, you know what? Rather than try and nerf flamethrowers and make them less effective, let's just beef up our cage and make it more suitable to have these fights. So I think that's pretty cool. We're gonna transition over here to a fight in cage one, and I'm gonna swap out with Kyle. Hello, Kyle. Ooh, Kyle has a very fun shirt on. Everyone's in for a treat. But first, we have this fight here in cage one, ready to go. Now, this is a very exciting match. We have been alluding to this for a while. Uh, this is the second Jamison Go match of the day, and he is here competing with his robot, Psycho. Now this is, uh, I believe, the second year here for Psycho. Jameson has done a lot of work on this robot and it is small but mighty. So one of the coolest parts about Psycho as far as Jameson goes builds, he doesn't normally build the meta, right? He tries to build these meta breaking designs. Psycho straight up is the yeah. meta. It is the meta of all metas. It is small, it is compact, powerful weapon, fast. I mean, this is exactly the kind of bot you want to build if you want to win tournaments. And the 12 pound division has been feeling that for Five, quite a while. Four, oh, yeah. Three, two, one. Fight. He's Robots going up against the fight. team from Gotham. Gotham is their mid cutter spinner. Whoa. Whoa. Kyle. Massive hit, Kyle. but now there is smoke and no movement coming out of Psycho. That is not Tap what we out. expected that to see here. That is a lot of smoke coming out of Psycho, too. Not exactly sure what that's coming from. Tap out here from Jameson just seconds into the fight. Only one hit. So much of that kinetic energy went back into Gotham. I didn't expect that much damage to be transferred into Psycho, but wow, something popped in there. It didn't even necessarily look like the biggest hit I've ever seen. I think that weapon was still trying to come up to full speed, but however they were able to hit him, it was clearly in, in the right spot. That was crazy. 
Jamison looking a, a little, you know, uh, confused, perplexed. I know he's going to take that robot into the pits and examine exactly what went wrong. So Gotham's captained by Tegan Borello, Brunello. Uh, they're from the University of Dayton, Ohio. Ohio. Indeed. Ohio versus the world. Now, Luke, I mean, there's a lot of... Or, I just called you Luke. It's okay. You're that's, clearly a, that's a Kyle. compliment. I'll yeah. take it. Everybody wishes they were a little bit like Luke. <laughs> 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 now, we were mentioning how small and compact um, Psycho really is, and there are definitely some benefits that come from that, but do you think that there are also some drawbacks when you have to make something such a tight of build. Of course, yeah. Low tolerances. You really can't put the, the kind of cushioning in there that you necessarily want to. Um, and also, it's just harder to work on the bot as well. You know, oh, yeah. there, there's lower room for fingers to get in there and work on stuff. Gotham's the complete opposite. It's actually a pretty big bot. There's a lot of air in there. Um, the weapon blade on that is massive, too. It's AR-600. It's a cool machine. Yeah. Uh, great first showing. Listen, you show up for your very first event ever with your very first bot ever, and you beat Jameson going psycho. It is the power of Ohio. The power <laughs> of Ohio is here with us in the building, and uh, we're all going to be just living in its wake. Uh, yeah, I'm impressed. I am impressed. Uh, that was not bad. The, the entire shot that they did was good. I don't know if there was any damage to Gotham. Does not look like it. I don't um, know. At all. No. I know they were really worried earlier in the day but now they're they're ready to go they're fully functioning apparently and uh yeah that was D a, I, a rough if, first qualifier yeah they thought hey i'm sure they thought they had a chance to win that but they probably expected to take some damage and be more worse for wear than they began I think they look pretty good, though. They might be ready to just roll on into their next fight after that. Absolutely. Uh, Gotham is, of course, like kind of a Batman-themed robot. Mm. The blade looks like a Batarang. Ooh. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know the old saying, be yourself, and if you can't be yourself, be Batman. <laughs> <laughs> that is what they say. Uh -huh. It's true. Um, Kyle. You've been watching, you've been walking in the pits, you've been yeah. talking to builders. What stands out to you today, other than your marvelous shirt stands out to Thank all of us? Thank you. I like this shirt. It's brand new for this event. <laughs> um, what is my noticing today? There is a lot of new builders. There's a lot of nervous people up there. Oh, really? Yes. There's a lot of uh, new bot jitters. There's a mm. lot of new bot anxieties. Mm. And uh, there was definitely some people that were like, I don't know if I'm going to pass safety. And even some of the more experienced builders, like um, Alex Pez, a, pri a prime example, right? Really? His new bot. I talked to him at 7.15 last night, and he was like, I haven't had this thing together yet. I haven't had it together. I haven't had it working. Yeah, that yeah. seems about right for some builders, though. Some builders, yeah. <laughs> Alex isn't normally that guy, though. He's normally mm. pretty prepared. So, so there's a little bit of those kind of new bot jitters at this event. I don't know if it's just because of the quick turnaround between this event and RIT. Yeah. I don't know if it's just because we we did have so many new applicants this yeah. time around. But there is definitely some there, jitters. There are definitely, I would say, some echoes of our new bot event in January at this here. event yeah. because there are, like you said, so many new bots. So there's always going to be some of those gremlins that you have to work out, some jitters, obviously. Um, but we've already seen some really incredible rookies yeah. make some really amazing stands here today. I don't know if you had a chance to see Choose Kindness versus Silent X. No, I did not get to see that fight. How did that go? So uh, Lulu Nance built Choose Kindness, mm -hmm. true rookie, high schooler. Um, she, it was a beer bar, you know, maybe beefed up a little bit, but um, she went against Silent X, ultimately lost, but really held her own for almost the entire match until <laughs> she got disassembled. Her, both her wheels simultaneously, simultaneously went flying, but it was really exciting to see her go head to head so many times against Silent X, That's which is awesome. like fearless. That's so cool. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, we're gonna go to cage one and get us started in there. Uh, nice. Let's see what they've got for us. <gasps> okay, so I've been really looking forward to this one bot. So this is a new bot called Gallows Humor. They are a shuffler horizontal from Florida Poly. Uh, wow. From Lakeland, Florida, actually, just outside of Orlando. And they have to go up against Caldera 12. 
Now, uh, one of the fun facts about Gallo's humor, it was built with zero tolerances. And by that I mean, when they catted all the parts, they didn't cat any space between the parts. <laughs> so they've been spending a lot of time today with files and drills oh. and dremels, trying to get everything to actually move and flow together. Um, you know, you cat everything out, you design everything to work the way that it's supposed to work, and then you might have to make a few modifications. They've had to modify literally everything on this bot this morning. That's what I mean by new bot jitters. Yeah. You learn a lot of lessons along the way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I know for sure we see them again. They're going to build in a little bit more space. Now, it is a cool bot. It is a cool design. It's an undercutter shuffler spinner. That means we've got about, what, 18 pounds of robot out there? It looks massive. Um, really cool blade on it. Bunch of really smart kids that were working on it for sure. It looks terrifying. I know. I uh, the shuffler mechanisms were really. They finally got them working. That was about an hour and a half ago. Wow. So okay. uh, you know, we'll see. They said the bot moves with just the weapons uh, vibration alone. So they know they could have gotten into the competition just from that. Uh, but we'll see. Hopefully, the shufflers get them around enough. They are literally down to the wire on weight. And now they are fe uh, facing a, a formidable opponent. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> to say the least. This is Glenn Boxel and Caldera 12. Uh, this thing is a death machine. We have seen it literally rip the weapon hub out of other bots. <laughs> uh, they were able to do that at what, the last competition uh, against Maximizer. It's... It's oh, yeah. a brutal machine. And Glenn is fresh off of a dumpster win with his three-pound version of Caldera, uh, where he won in Rochester. That's right. Just a couple Very weeks ago. Very first dumpster for Glenn at the last competition. Amazing. Qualifying performance and walking away with the golden dumpster. Now, Glenn has not missed an event since, what, 2019, 2020? Yes, correct. He's always here, either competing with as himself or helping his uh, son Brian compete. And uh, yeah, Glenn's just a stalwart here. He's here, always eager to help other people, you know, help newbies get acclimated to the pits, figure out where things are, loaning out tools. He's just a genuinely like calming and friendly presence to have up in the pit. And he has a coffee machine at his pit desk. Of course he does. He's an adult. <laughs> he, he knows. <laughs> it's not just about building robots. It's staying awake long enough to fight them. All right. Weapons are up to speed. Caldera is moving. And uh, Gallo's go, humor is kind of moving. Trying to go right for those shufflers. Oh, no. Caldera stuck <gasps> into the wall. Look at that. They're not oh. moving at all. Fluffy coming over to help. And they just... Helped Caldera off the wall and into Gallo's humor. Uh, and Gallo's humor is not moving at all. Yeah, seconds into the match, uh, Caldera has needed that unstick, but I don't think this match is going to go much longer if Gallo's humor doesn't start Look, moving. There is a little bit of shuffle, and now the blade's going on Gallo's humor, but there's also pieces of plastic flying all over the place. 12s is that weird weight Ooh. class where you could make your entire bot out of plastic, but should you? Should you? Going up against another horizontal was definitely a nightmare situation for them, I yeah. think. Um, that blade on Caldera is perfectly poised to be able to eat into those shufflers. And uh, that's, that's what we saw here. So the unstick is happening-ish. Fluffy is moving Gallo's humor over to the wall. I see. So we are all done with We're this done. matchup. Goodbye, everybody. Hey, they had fun, though. You know, welcome to NHRL. It's so good to have you guys here. Your bot's a very interesting design. I'd love to see more of it. Yeah. I'm hoping that they can get it up and running for their second fight because um, it is, it does have a very menacing look about it. And look, we're now continuing the uh, tradition of Kokoto driving with boxels. Kokoto operating the, uh, the multi-bot configuration there for Glenn. It's a good combination. Kokoto and Boxels. Did you know that um, that Kokoto and Glenn drove up to Rochester together for the event? That doesn't surprise me. Also, I would love to be in the backseat of that car hanging out. Like, that would be so much fun. I, yeah, please let me be in the backseat of that car and just <laughs> <laughs> learn from them. But yeah, I mean, Glenn, again, won that dumpster and Rochester. He is hoping that he can win another now today with his 12-pounder. Um, which really has only been around for a couple of events here, debuted in January. So, fun fact, uh, 
That 12 pound or that dumpster that he won in Rochester was his first ever dumpster. Yeah. Other fun fact, he was on the clock at work all day. What? He was in meetings on his computer. What? He was sending emails. He was doing all of the things that he has to do for his job, his actual like place of employment. And he was just working remotely while winning a robot competition in Rochester. Oh, Kyle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just before the fight. Yes, he ended his job, literally ended his day at work just before he had to go out and fight the final fight. <laughs> now that is multitasking at its finest. Uh, Other people were there to focus on the event. Yeah. And they're just getting beat by this guy who's like, oh, I also have to get this email and type out this report. And I love that. That cracks me up. If I lost to someone who was, you know, primarily focused on sending out an email. <laughs> I'd be devastated, but Glenn, I mean, that bot is so dialed in. At this point, it is not, not a surprise that he was able to multitask like that. All right, we are now going into cage two for some more robot action. Got Prometheus and IDKWTFID? Yes, indeed. Kevin keeps adding letters to that acronym, and I hate it, but... It's fine. The bot's phenomenal. And also, like, he does know what he's <laughs> he doing. He does at this know. Point. Well, he's he's had to change that now. Yeah. It's officially I do know. Oh, there yes. we go. <laughs> Smart to play on words there from Team Pandemonium. Kevin is uh, definitely just a calming presence in the pits. You could see him and Team Pandemonium over there, pretty much at the same table at every event. And it's a nice little family affair over there, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah, they have a, um, a uh, full-on printed, like, Five, banner. Four, <laughs> they might three, as well just leave that up. Two, one. Fight. Robots fight. Yeah, a bit of a box rush going on here from Prometheus. IDK, the FID. Those weapons are incredibly loud. Yeah, they are. Wow. Listen to Prometheus revving up out there. Prometheus brought to you by Amir Miles from Schenectady, New York, part of the Schenectady Combat Robotics Club. Whoa, that belt is not attached anymore. You definitely want that on the weapon if you want the weapon to spin, guys. Yes, yeah, suddenly it is very quiet. You gotta love a good high school robotics team that comes out here with no fear, going straight up against an extremely seasoned competitor like Kevin. And you know what? Oh yeah, you heard the restart of IDK. They, they got it moving again. The weapon's actually spinning up. Wow. And I think we're down to the end of this fight. We're here in a countdown. Yeah, what's going on? They had to restart them. They're getting a little bit of a push from Brett. Are they getting a push to the door, or is this the unstick? I think, Kyle, I think this might be the end. You heard the, the weapon kind of, or the bot kind of restart that starting tone. I wonder what happened there. This is what I'm saying. New bot jitters, even with old bots today. <laughs> it's rubbing off <laughs> on even the veterans. <laughs> But you know what? Uh, Prometheus lost that belt. It's kind of a rite of passage. You got to lose a belt. Oh, yeah. You're going to lose a belt all the time. You got to learn. There you see the yeah. captain of the team, Drew Tap Davis. Out. These are his students. Drew, by the way, teaches English at this school. He does. And also runs the robotics club. His school noticed what he does on his weekends. <laughs> and they said, hey, uh, do you want to do a robotics club? Which is cool. They've got great theming. The team looks awesome. Their bots look phenomenal. They've got some really clever ideas. I can't imagine a better mentor than Drew Davis. Those are some lucky kids. Yeah, uh, right? Even if they don't know it, I hope that they do. All right, so we are now heading back over into Cage 1. More big robot action. And this is going to be Junkernaut versus... Reactor Junior. Junior. Now, Reactor Junior is also a high school robotics team. It is a shell spinner of sorts. I talked to these fellas earlier today. The idea is they wanted to build a robot for free with as many parts as they just kind of had lying around the shop. Love that. Uh, and it's, 
It's uh, working-ish, working-esque. Uh, I saw it work briefly. <laughs> uh, that looks like a pegboard that has been cut up and spray painted. I love that. Knockout. And that is the end for uh, ju Junkernaut, was that? Or React uh, yes, I believe Junkernaut is the winner yeah. of that matchup. Reactor is not working. It flew too close to the sun. So Reactor Jr. Uh, is related to the original Reactor from BattleBots. Wow. Season three, way back in the day. We're talking way, way back in the day. Exciting to see competitors who have maybe, you know, been in the early days of combat robotics uh, come out and fight at these other weight classes. It's cool, yeah. I mean, these kids are, you know, I believe their teacher was connected to that team, but they are not. They weren't even born yet. Wow, Kyle. All right, so oh. we saw the end of that fight. There was a little bit of those bots left at the end. Also, cool fact, the weapons on that were two bolts from Home Depot that they bought uh, yesterday in spray painted black. And I asked them if the bolts were grade five, grade eight, and they said they were grade Home Depot? Good answer. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> you know, I think it goes to show that no matter what your knowledge is, no matter what your skill is going into this, there's a home for you here. <laughs> There's a home for all of us here. Yeah, I appreciate that too. Kyle, I think we're having a special guest. You might have the uh, microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. I'm gonna hand that to you. Yes, indeed. Hey guys. Drew, Welcome, how Drew. are you? I'm um, tired. <laughs> but this was a, a great fight to watch. These two guys drove well. He didn't do anything because the bot was dead when we put it in. <laughs> okay, listen, listen, listen. Um, yeah, I had nothing to do with that bot being dead, okay? Okay? That was my fault, probably. I'm not sure what happened to that, but we're going to fix that, all right? It's not gonna be a, that's not going to be an issue forever. Okay. I love that attitude. That is good. the correct spirit. Okay, yes. He did win the first round, too. I mean, he, he had a good example in the first round I, by knockout. I mean, hey, it, I couldn't have done with you, without you, bro. I appreciate you for that. <laughs> This. What are your names? Introduce yourselves. I'm Amir. Amir. I'm Tyler. Tyler, this is your first competition ever. Is that true? Yeah, for me. How does it feel? Uh, it feels gratifying. Yeah. I I was here last year and lost, mm. but we had a comeback. Yeah, this feels better, probably, yeah, right? Better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And then uh, you're the, the, I guess, the guy who runs the Schenectady Robotics Club, right? Yeah, Drew yeah. Davis? So we, yep, with the grants that we've gotten, uh, we started a club. Uh, a good amount of kids show up, and we got nine kids to come this time. Nice. And we have five bots. Uh, one got ripped in half, so technically now we have four. Sure. <laughs> that right? happens. But, um, well, or maybe fun six, and learning. you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, you see, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's a multi-bot. Exactly. exactly. It's a multi-bot. Um, but they're having a great time. They beat, like, a top five bot, which is, I don't know if they know how insane that is. It's the fifth ranked bot here at this event. Nice. And they just knocked it out, which is crazy. Yeah. He, beat you last he did year. beat us last year, yeah. So Get out. Yeah. Nice job, fellas. Congratulations. Thank well, you. good luck for the rest of the day. Thank you for bringing up the bot to show us. We're going to head over into cage two. But good sure. luck the rest of the day, fellas. Yeah, we're rooting Thank for you. you. Thanks, guys. Yeah. All right, so here you see an overhead shot of cage two. What is this here, Kyle? I don't know. It's low to the ground. It looks like it's only got two wheels. I mean. So this is Kazaa versus Cyanide. We were talking about, you know, old school robots just a moment ago, and this sure looks like one. It's boxy, it's silver, but I like it. I think I used to use Kazaa to download illegal files back in college. I have ruined not only my own computers, but computers of my friends downloading music on Kazaa. You just wanted to hear the new Britney Spears album. Oh, yeah. Cisco. Uh, Cisco. <laughs> Let's, uh, yeah, just date myself there a little bit. <laughs> uh, 
you know, kids these days, they'll never know the struggle of having to illegally download your songs. No. Now you have Spotify, you got YouTube. It wasn't like that back in the day. It's true. It's true. But, uh, you know, Kazaa probably trying to give its opponent here virus as well. Uh, you know, it is an effective means. I don't know if it's a legal means of winning a combat <laughs> robot fight, but it is an effective means for sure. It's good to see Drew Davis, who is a kind of stalwart competitor here, comes out with so many different bots and so many competitions, training up the next generation. Oh, look at that fancy software program we have going on in the cages. Uh, that is really what allows us to run all of these fights, many of them simultaneously, um, and, you know, record accurate results, keep the time, and here we go. Oh, God. my goodness. Oh. I was not expecting that. No. Because that, indeed, what the, that is a lot of flame coming out of there. I take back everything I said about the old school look. This is <laughs> so... This is a flame that we've only seen in recent years, recent months even. Yeah, this is impressive. A lot of wow. distance on that flame. It's very mixtape-esque, I would say, in yeah. terms of the, that distance. I was wondering what the active weapon was on this guy, <laughs> and we found it. I don't know how effective, well, I do see a little part um, kind of coming off the wheel guard there on its opponent. That's where he wants them. That's where he wants them. Set that flame inside the bot and see what happens. Yeah, nice pin and lingering flames. After the fact, you gotta love it. That is what you want to see if you're a flame bot. You disengage and that flame continues. All right, so Kazaa brought to you by Josh Reinhardt from Team 90s Kids. This flamethrower <laughs> has a titanium armored Bunsen burner <laughs> using commercially avail available camp stove igniter. What? With a brushless drive. This is so smart. I positively love that there are so many flamethrowers in the NHRL you know, a uh, group of builders, and all of them build their flames and, and uh, structure their flames in uh, different ways. There are so many ways to approach building a flamethrower. And I don't think I've heard that one before. And then uh, Cyanide, brought by Tom Wynn, it is an MIT Combat Robotics Club bot. It does have the servo, which allows it to switch between a horizontal and a vertical. You can see it's kind of between a horizontal and vertical now. And I'll bet whatever's left of that connection of the servo is currently on fire and melting, because it's a little loosey-goosey now. Look at that. It looks like it could come off at any moment. I think it might. <laughs> yeah, now it's completely askew. I think it's hanging on by some wire at this point, maybe a belt. I don't know, but th whatever the original attachment point was is now burned away. I am amazed that it is still able to operate, but that drive seems unimpaired from drive, what I can drive tell. Drive is completely unaffected. Yeah, it's just the weapon mount and weapon system that is not happening anymore. And those flames are not dying. No. Whatever is in there that's burning is burning for good. That is a lot of fire coming out of that guy. Wow. Okay, so we are now at the end of that matchup. <laughs> Cyanide showing that they have some mobility and aggression left. Oh, oh there, there it goes. goes. We Yo, were hoping for that, Kyle. You have to have an active weapon to get into the fight. <laughs> but you don't have to have an active weapon at the end of the fight. You know, it helps, but it's not necessary. No, no but the judges don't like it when you lose your weapon <laughs> entirely. <laughs> oh, that was wow. awesome. Kazaa, by the way, was named after the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing service that Lindsay and I were referencing earlier. That is exactly what happened within every computer that I had Kazaa on. It just yeah. burst into flames. It and, wasn't uh, good. You had to put it right in the dumpster. You just wanted to watch the new Batman movie, yeah. and instead, your computer yeah. had a Trojan virus on it that just wouldn't stop replicating. It was terrible. <laughs> it was the Wild West back then. 
I'm glad we lived through it. But this bot, uh, they're going to go back to the pits and see if it will live on for another fight. There we go. We've got the extinguisher putting it out of its misery. I would love to see what the process will be when they get this back into the pits to fix whatever happened here. I don't, I mean, that component looks like it's not going back on. It's just so warpy. That's not the shape it went in as. Now, a lot of times when we see, you know, 3D printed robots, they will uh, cover themselves in like a flame retardant tape. Yeah. But the part of this that kind of melted off, it, it's hard to really get a sense of that, but I don't think that's something that you could have really protected any better than they, than no, they did. No, it's like the pivoty part, it's, the, the yeah. part that's supposed to spin. It's too pivoty, it moves, It's uh, it couldn't really be encumbered by um, that tape, but... And whatever was in there burned for a good long time, even after the fuel ran out on Kazaa. Yeah. Kyle, I'm hearing a lot of chants <laughs> from the audience here. This is what we get for allowing college teams, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I love the hype. Uh, so, yeah, it sounds like we're loading in a box or into box one right now, so that means we're probably going to have some more 12-pound action for you. Uh, it does look like we have one of the excited college teams. Oh, I see. Okay, I talked to this team a little bit earlier, so I'm excited to get into this with you guys. I think you're going to like it. Tell us about them, Kyle. Uh, so, what? it's a lot of ambition. Do you oh see my what goodness. I see? I hope we get a shot of this audience right now, guys, because it's a little ridiculous what we're seeing out there right now. Full-on cosplay. Robot cosplay happening in our audience right now. These fans are great. I love the fans of this sport. I think we have a kaiju in the audience. Uh, that, it's quite possibly a kaiju, yes. <laughs> yes. I I don't even know how to describe this. I'm in pure shock. I love it. Pure awe. Uh, this is so much hype for a brand new robot. Uh, <laughs> you gotta love it. They are cheering for Nardo, and you know what, Kyle? I'm gonna go on record and say I am too because I do not want that and giant robot to come after me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go, Nardo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Dance it up. Dance it up. Wow. A lot of emotion, a lot of energy flowing. It's still early this in room. the day, too, man. We haven't even gotten to the weird hours. You know, this is great. Ooh. I love it. I absolutely love it. Nardo better deliver here. That's all I got to say. All there right. might be a We're riot gonna go into cage one. We're going to see what we have going on. <laughs> This is Nardo versus Page. You can see the safety coming off of Page. You can see Nardo there on the right. It's gonna get rowdy in a second here. I have a feeling, Kyle. I want it. I want it to happen. Wow, listen to those shufflers go. Moves great. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, that moves awesome. So you got the forks, you got the lifter. Page, I mean, it's uh, it's, it has an uphill battle here to win the hearts and minds of this audience. Nardo does look incredibly imposing there at the front of its corner. And it looks like this is a, a lifter here from Page. I believe Paget. it is, yep. Lifter shuffler, love to see that. 
two, you know, non-meta design choices there in that robot, whereas uh, Nardo looks straight meta. Yeah, very much so. It's got the forks, that very powerful vertical spinning weapon. All right, so Nardo is the four-bar lifter up in the corner there. Oh, my goodness. That's Alex Jen uh, Jenkins. That's Cornell. It's a four-bar lifter. And their first bot was actually Leo. So this is Nardo. Wow. Get Leo it? Nardo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, legendary engineer and leader of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Absolutely. <laughs> Who was your favorite Ninja Turtle, I have to ask? Raphael, of course. Oh, good choice. Yeah. Yeah. He had the attitude. They all had attitude. But he had the, the attitude. The, the <laughs> attitude your teacher would get mad at you about. <laughs> There and we so, go. Uh, Page, it's their first time fighting at NHRL. It is very much so a meta for Brazil. This is Team Goitaborgs. All right, it's up on the rails. That is not the place it wants to be. No, and, and look at that looks... side shuffler yeah. pot just off of the mechanism. That's not good. Oh, uh, one side still going, but... Even if Fluffy is able to dislodge them, I don't know if that will be enough. They could walk in circles, maybe. Come on, Fluffy. Come on, Fluffy. It is in a really tough spot right here, even for Fluffy to be able to dislodge them. Yeah, it's hard to dislodge them in this position without doing more damage. Yeah. And really, they're just kind of bouncing off the wall with that separation between the shuffler mechanism and the bot itself. You can do it, Fluffy. Maybe hit them on the forks. Maybe that'll kind of torque them off there. I, I don't know. I don't know. If I they can't hear get count yeah, out. the count out has started. Page looking no worse for the wear. Team Gordeborgs from Brazil. The crowd's still loving it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it, these are, they're rivals in the stands here. I'm okay with it. Uh, you gotta love the college teams going at it. You gotta love Team Brazil going up against Team USA. Ithaca, New York. I was hoping the C stood for Cincinnati, and this could be another classic Ohio-Brazil rivalry, <laughs> but uh, not the case. Not the case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Not, not the performance that uh, Nardo was hoping for there. No, tough fight for them, though. Page, very vicious vertical spinner, full-on Brazilian design. you got to love it. Tip speed of that weapon can get over 300 miles per hour, according to their spec sheet. Wow. So, yeah, that's a rough one. Now, Kyle. Yes? I think a relatively new phenomenon over the last year, year and a half or so, has been the rise of college teams. For sure. And I think one of the most exciting aspects about college teams is that they come with a posse. A huge posse, yes. A huge posse, and they have a lot of energy. And so they bring that to the stands, and what we just saw here. Yeah. I mean, what, what do you have to say about that? Like, how does, how does I love it. Feel? I love the fact that there's so much just uh, enthusiasm, sports-like enthusiasm behind it. I love that you have kind of that Brazilian energy being matched by yeah. this Ithaca team's energy. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, it just adds a, a whole layer of... of I guess you could say just energy to the people competing, uh, stakes for the people competing. They've oh, got yeah. people they've got to please. They've got people they want to cheer for them. So, yeah, it adds a lot to the sport. 
And I mean, the Brazilian fans too, in the chat <laughs> here now, um, they have such a, a fiery passion for their teams, yeah. especially when we saw Rato last year compete with Chibata. I mean, the chat was a mile a minute. It was, it was really something remarkable. And it's, it shows how invested people get in their favorite robots. Yeah. And who doesn't love Rato? Oh, the yeah. nicest guy in the entire so world. Nice. He's here to win. I also understand that he says things a lot differently in Portuguese than he does in English now. We've oh. getting, I've gotten some translations. Oh. He's got a little different personality oh. in Portuguese. Really? Yeah. A little, a little more trash talk? A little saucier, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And yeah, when he speaks English, so The sweet. kindest, sweetest, yeah. yeah, but apparently... Like a marshmallow. In Portuguese, he's a little bit more, hey, uh, we're, we're gonna destroy them. <laughs> yeah, Interesting. It's yeah, cool, right? I love that. <sighs> but yeah, so that we're moving our way. We're getting our way through all three weight classes right now. Uh, that was a ridiculous fight. Yeah. Nardo really struggling. Yeah, I'm seeing them still trying to load that bot out of the box in one piece. But CRC. listen to them go. They love their team. Uh, and they're going to be here to support them in their next fight, too. I don't even think Nardo is the one that they're most excited about for this competition. They've oh, got something else in the uh, in the cooker. Do you know what it is? Yeah. It's Can a really ridiculous us? idea. It's a, it's a really unique idea where they put the flywheel inside of the weapon. So the counter flywheel is actually inside. Interesting. It's an ambitious build. Yes. We'll have to see how that works. I'm excited. It's a weird idea. <laughs> but and it's a small robot too for the weight class. Mm. So it's it's a lot that they're trying to make work. But if they can make it work, maybe they'll start a new a new trend. It's a cool idea. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to see that. Yeah, flywheels are a big deal this competition too. We're Absolutely. seeing a bunch of them. I uh, I know that eruption is not in this um, no, but no, because Barbie girl has to live in her Barbie world today. That's yeah. why. But I know he's trying to add a flywheel. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Very fireball-esque yeah. flywheel into the uh, the entire mechanism. It's doing fine as is. I don't know if you want to add that much comp <laughs> complication to it at this point, but Brian's Brian, and Brian's going to do he's what Brian ambitious. does. He is very ambitious, and today he is very pink and sparkly. So I have not seen him yet. I've heard, and I'm very excited. Uh, I saw the bots earlier today, the Barbie bots. Uh, they look amazing. The detail on them is... There's little cutouts on the wheels of, like, flowers and palm trees and hearts and stuff. It's, it's so cute. Oh. There's no other way of describing these death machines than cute. Cute. Now, Kyle, I want to remind you and everybody here at home that we are still in the qualifying rounds yep. of this competition. We have a lot more fights to come. Uh, and then at prime time, which is at 7 p.m., is going to be the creme de la creme of the bots left in the competition uh, as they make their way to fight for... What is it, Kyle? The Golden Dumpster. What's Amen. the Golden Dumpster? Do you know? The Golden Dumpster is the, uh, I would say, second greatest prize in combat robotics shortly thereafter the Golden Brett. But yes. you need a Golden Dumpster to get a Golden Brett. The Golden Dumpster is the trophy everybody's going for today. It's filled with cash yeah. and uh, the refuse of your opponents after you've destroyed them. I don't know if they actually do that anymore. No, but back in the back day, in that's, the day. that was the origins of it, is we would fill it with broken robot parts. Now <laughs> it's filled with cash. Slightly better. Um, and people have done amazing things with their golden dumpsters. They've built full-on robots out of them. They've yeah. made LED displays for their shelves with them. Uh, but the best thing to do with the golden dumpster is to spend the cash in it and take it home. I am willing to bet that the majority of the cash won by teams who win, then take that money and invest it right back into, into their, their robots, next robot. Yes. Um, but you know, you can't blame them. No, that is the uh, the addiction that is the sport, right? Yeah. Some people, they, you know, go out and gamble. Right. Some people first build a robot and then come gamble. <laughs> <laughs> Neither are really intelligent financial decisions, but both are a lot of fun. I feel like this is probably better for your brain. Yeah, you know? this is, I, if you have to pick one or the other, if you're like, oh, should I go into gambling or should I go into combat robotics? 
th this one. Yeah, well, it'll Here. get you a job, too. Yeah. You know, there, there are definitely career paths that start with combat robotics. How many oh, yeah. people do we know that are like, I wasn't even in engineering, and now yeah. I work for, like, an aeronautics company yeah. building drones and, like, crazy stuff like that. It happens literally all the time, and yeah. they make those connections through this sport, yeah. which is weird, and I love it. Yeah, I don't know how many, uh, you know, above-board professions gambling leads to. None. <laughs> So really <laughs> I don't do much of it myself. I can't speak to it, but uh, there we go. And here we come. All right, so we are going over into cage two, and uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about it. So this is, uh, this is, ah. This is another CRC robot. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that's Ariel's new bot as well. No pressure, Ariel, just an entire school. Uh, you know, cheering against you. I think the CRC bot actually is loading into cage one. Oh, I'd have to, yes. I, I'd have to check on that, but. So this right, is. So we'll be in cage two here. Hodor, which is the big pink lifter bot. Now this is a really unique design. It's cool, right? Uh, those forks on the front of it are actually very flexible. They, they cheap, uh, like can brush across them as if it's a comb. And the lifter, really effective. Yeah, uh, however, the mobility does seem to be a little... Wor they're working out the kinks here. I think they're getting their legs under them. Now look at that sick jump off that ramp pile. <laughs> Can it do a 360? Hard to say, man, that is a big Whoa! weapon. Oh no. <laughs> nice flip there, Camario. Wonderful move. Now it really needs to, it really relies on being able to get under its opponent, uh, because if it doesn't, it will be fed right into the weapon. So that is kind of the danger here. You have to make sure you're very low to the ground and uh, you know, able to, to win the ground game. Nearly impossible with Hodor with the way that that's designed. It's just, if it doesn't get under you with one of those forks, it's gonna get under you with another. Very effective so far. Yeah, such a cool idea. It, all, it reminds me of, like, the fringe on a cowboy uh, <laughs> denim jacket. <laughs> I think Ariel would really appreciate you saying that, actually. not able to really make purchase on Hodor. Uh, so the noise is, has really just been an intimidation factor yeah. uh, rather than a real, um, you know, physical threat in this match. Yeah, Intolerance is a really cool weapon, probably great for uh, fighting other bots of similar size, but Hodor is a wedge. I mean, she's all the way down there on the floor. for another jump off that ramp. That's what we all want. Ryan Ferdinand, he's the uh, driver of Intolerance. He's from New Jersey. We want to see some irresponsible driving, buddy. You could do it. Yeah, you've got plenty of, uh, you know, uh, exposure to that. Launch yourself over top of it. Let's go. Can't move so much right now, though. Just able to pivot over there in the corner. Oof, that does not sound like a healthy noise either. No. All right, the and weapon we is go. stopped. Looks like they're getting pushed towards the door. Oh, no. Oh. Maybe? Maybe? So they can reverse in one direction. That much we know for sure. Um, Kyle, I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite One Direction song? 
I don't have one. I'm too old to be a One Direction fan. I, uh, I fear that I have the same answer. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know that much about them. I think that's where Harry Styles came from. That is, it is yeah. I knew that, yes. But that's all I really know about them. I saw that maybe your kids were fans. I don't know. They're not old enough to oh. be One Direction fans. All right, so Ariel's Bot Hodor doing a great job. That was a really impressive showing. Lots of new innovations there. Love the way the lifter mechanism works. I love the way the combs work. It's a really cool design. The combs really did well, but I saw and noticed at the end that one of them was kind of um, bent backwards. I think that's the point. I think that they're supposed to get a little bit of, of a skewedness because yeah. you've got so many more to kind of take over those jobs. But if too many end up like that, you're going to have trouble getting under your opponent. True. There we All go. right, so cage we are now one. heading over into cage Ooh. one with a fight already underway. Sparks are flying. So this is Peter B. Barker versus Void. Peter B. Barker is the bot that I was talking about earlier from CRC. It's got a actual counter flywheel inside of the weapon. Wow. On that red and white bot there. But Void is Void. Void is small, tight, compact, low to the ground, and has a weapon that hits like a ton of bricks. And not to mention, Void has already qualified for the championships Absolutely. this year. Absolutely. It hits so oh, hard. Look no. at those shots. Listen, Kyle. Peter B. Barker is a complicated robot, and they're already knocking lights off the ceiling. Void, come on. They are a roofing machine here today. That was ruthless. That's a belt hanging off of Peter B. Barker. That's a side armor package missing. The weapon's not working. But look, they can still drive kind of on those two front wheels. This is a tough draw here for CRC, who are still bringing so much energy in the crowd. But I, I see a lot of hands over their mouths and uh, forlorn looks in their eyes. Nah, not, not what they were hoping for here, but Void is so Yeah, so Void powerful. wins that matchup by tap out. No surprise there. Beater B. Barker is in rough shape. It's a complicated build. It is a complicated robot with a lot of strange innovations. Check this out about Beater B. Barker, okay? This thing has a single weapon shaft wow. with the flywheel and or with the counter flywheel inside of the weapon. And the bearings rotate at 40,000 RPM. That's insane. That's a lot. That is completely crazy. In a very tight package, they fit all this into it. But man, it just got shredded by the void. I'm hoping that, you know, we're able to see more of this robot because it is such a, an ambitious build. For sure. Um, I'm hoping that this isn't the last of it. No, we'll see them coming back. And they'll be back later on today. Yeah. But meanwhile, Trevor Summer of Void, Team Defective. Yeah. Super talented guy. Oh, amazing. The bot performed beautifully, did exactly what it was supposed to do. I mean, there is a great chance of a dumpster for them in this 12-pound weight class today. They've got a lot to go through to get there. Yeah. But it's definitely one of the better bots that we see here at the competition today. Yeah, and I mean, we've already seen Psycho suffer from some uh, Quick gremlins. failure, yeah. Quick failures. Quick failure. Uh, if... Uh, Jameson goes on to lose the next fight with Psycho. I mean, that's going to free up the the bracket for so many of these 12-pound robots. Um, and it, yeah. It's a rough spot. Yeah. It's a rough spot for Jameson to go to be in. He does have one more qualifying round of with course. Psycho. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, Void, excellent first showing. Uh, and, you know, tough draw for those guys. Yeah. Tough draw for CRC. Yeah. There's definitely easier matches they could have had to, to start with <laughs> than the Void. Yeah, they could have had the Junkinator. Right? You know? <laughs> would have been fun. That would have been a nice, like, kind of more even matchup. But we'll we see. still got the, we got the pride going. All right, so we are going to head on over to Cage 2. We're going to have some three-pound robot fighting action for you. Looks like we got one of the Team Cybears bots in there. Hmm, Kyle. 
right, got... so this is Dinky Bot versus Safety Third. Now, I don't believe that Safety Third, the robot, has any relation to Safety Third, the podcast, or the guys over uh, from Open Sauce, but uh, maybe inspired. Or Quite maybe, possibly. Uh, you know, they just don't take their lives very seriously, which uh, I, I, I recommend that you do. Safety now, what first. is what is number one and number two for you if safety is third? Fun. Fun, sure. Style. Definitely. <laughs> then safety. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I, you know, fun does have to come first. Of course. Uh, budget. Oh. Okay. Then safety. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> Which is why safety has to be third because we have a limited budget, guys. <laughs> yeah. Safety, that's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> We uh, could just be fighting in a, you know, chain link uh, uh, fence right now, but uh, cost effective, not safe. So Safety Third is an independent study project for school. This is a Hewitt Robotics robot. Uh, and yeah, the tip speed of the weapon is about 300 miles per hour, maybe a little bit more. Gotta love that. Elliot Wilner, first bot, first competition from New York, New York. Wow. There we go, right off the bat. But they're going up against Team Cybears and Dinkybot, which is currently stuck under the side rail, it looks like. Now, back nice in, shot there. Yeah. Good weapon-to-weapon -weapon impact. Dinkybot gets the better of that one. Now, you can tell the difference between these two bots because Dinkybot is a little bit wider, and it's got that holographic Cybears logo on top, and it's winning these weapon-to-weapon -weapon engagements no problem. It sure is. It looks like Safety Third's missing a wheel already. Oh, no. But look at the cool ground effect lights coming off of Safety Third. See, you're right. Style points, man. More important than the safety. Safety Third, wheel one. Yeah, wheels fourth, clearly. <laughs> yeah. Nice shot there from Dinkybot. Dinkybot trying to get their bearings. They're really steering themselves kind of away from safety third. Having a hard time allocating themselves and pointing themselves in the right direction. Oh, so close. There nice you go. Nice shot there. Beautiful. And another pop right afterwards. Good follow-up. These hits are anything but Dinky, Kyle. No, Dinky Bot is not aptly named. I would agree. <laughs> now, back in the day, you'd see a lot of matches that looked like this. Two beater bars going against each other. Um, but as, you know, the sport has developed, other kit pots have been introduced, more availability of 3D printers, being able to make your own designs. We've seen a little bit less of this kind of classic, you know, beater bar versus beater bar uh, competition. But sometimes you get fights like this. It is still a hallmark of Team Cyber. Oh, yeah. They love this style of weapon. They love this style of bot, this two-wheel beater bar design. And you can see they're very effective with it. There are no more wheels on safety third. And that's a tap. The wheels have literally come off of the bot. Some robots, they can manage without wheels. It's not ideal, but they somehow find a way through gyroscopic force or something else, but uh, not here, not, not this robot. So congratulations to Vladimir Flores and the bad crews, Team Cybears, pulling that one out. And just pieces all over the floor. The rookie bot in safety third really struggling to keep the wheels on. But the weapon worked. Let's focus on the positive. Yeah, the weapon worked. The weapon looked great. It was great. <laughs> it's tough out there, you know? It's a little rough. Yeah. It's a little rough. That happens. Um, yeah, not a bad starting fight, though. If you're going to go up against one of the more experienced teams, the bad crew's a good one. You're going get to get a good idea of what the actual pace of this competition is, how hard these bots hit, how fast they move. Yeah. Right? Bad crew's a good standard bearer of yeah. all that. And I'm willing to bet that, you know, maybe they won't be able to figure out a workaround in their next fight, but if they come back again for another competition, I guarantee they're going to figure out a way to keep those wheels on the robot <laughs> after getting hit. No, if they're going to continue on today, that's going to involve Loctite. Yes. I think that that's the, the, the real, like, in-a-pinch methodology there. Can you 
you explain to us a little bit about Loctite? Loctite is super glue for components, mm. essentially. Uh, you put it on the thread sometimes, you put it on the, the shaft sometimes, and it holds the things together. How do you, uh, how do you take it off? Acetone uh -huh. or a hammer. Or a hammer? Yeah. Because okay. you can't crack it a little bit. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but if you do that, it's going to get crunchy when you're taking it off. It's kind of gross. Mm, I prefer the acid. Yeah, and you get the, the Loctite on your fingers, also real gross. I've heard that. It's not fun. No. It's not a good time. No. Uh, but it is, it's really helpful, you know, for keeping threaded things threaded. Yep. Because otherwise they want to unthread. I mean, when that force impacts your robot, it has to go somewhere. And sometimes that involves unthreading, yeah. yeah. And with shafts, it involves, you know, unattaching so yeah. as we just saw in that fight i think you yeah. know we, we don't know how those wheels came off but presumably they'd have done well better with some loctite there yeah loctite well. is a, a, a lesson that a lot of teams learn about in their first <laughs> fight or two it's the duct tape of combat robotics yes. all right let's go ahead and have a look at our crowd here let's see where everybody's at right now a bunch of the crowd actually went back up to the pits because they were the college teams but keep in mind we have uh bots from all over the country, all over the world here today. And these are the pits, are the two cages right here in our bowl. We this also is have the cages. Havoc bowl. Yeah. This is the Havoc Bowl. I mean, if you're tuning in at home, this may look a little bit different, and that's because it is incredibly different. The crew here has spent, I mean, countless hours over the last six weeks, let's say. Yeah, bringing everything into this new configuration. Yeah. Uh, the cool part about it is you now have views of the the cages from all sides. Um, there are definitely cages now where you can walk right up on them yeah. and you have like kind of two sides that you can be right there, right next to the action. I like it. I think it's a really good environment. Uh, all right, so check this out. This wow. is the pits. This is the part of, de of the day when the pits are the most of a mess. We're in the qualifiers. <laughs> Nobody's been sent home yet. Everybody's trying to get things working. Everybody's trying to get things going, and it is just a struggle. The tables all look like a mess. If you see somebody with a clean pit table, it means one of two things. One, they're very experienced, and they know exactly <laughs> what they're doing. Or two, their bot's not working. They're just there hanging out with a clean pit table. Yeah. And there are definitely some bots that did not make it through safety today. Yeah, I mean, uh, for a lot of these first timers and even people who are changing their robot and they're kind of working out some of the new kinks, that is uh, one of the risks that you run. You have to pass safety. There's a very rigorous process here. And if you're not able to demonstrate to our safety crew that your bot is in fact safe to run, that's, that's kind of it. Absolutely. And one of the ways you demonstrate that your bot is safe to run here is you, um, let's see, show that the weapon can turn off, show that you have complete control over it, Show that you uh, can, uh, when your weapon or when your controller loses power, that the weapon actually show, uh, shuts off, right? There's a lot of things you have to demonstrate the ability to do because if that bot's just spinning around in that cage, you have to wait till the battery dies. Otherwise, that just delays everything. It's, yeah. a, it's not good. It's not good. It's, it's not, not safe. Good. You know what is good? What? The 30 pound bracket. And it's just about to start here. And oh, NHRL. we're going into 30 pound bracket? We sure are. We're all done with qualifiers? Oh, good. Earth, so we I are in 30-pound qualifiers. Word, but we're starting oh, off with 30-pounders. Oh, this is a pounders. fight we've all been looking forward to so much. Okay, this is going to be ridiculous. So uh, this is formerly the biggest 30-pound bot in the competition. This is Emperor. It is a shuffling bar spinner that has a reputation of either not working <laughs> or destroying everything in its path. Yes. Uh, what it, will we get today? Uh, who knows? We literally don't know. And then uh, th we also have the now returning Golden Dumpster champion yeah. from the last event. Uh, and in... Um, Moccasin. Moccasin. And they have rotating forks, right? Cam lifter forks in the front. And a yeeter, a launcher. Very baby shoes esque very stiletto esque mm -hmm. very uh mammoth esque robot yeah this uh pioneered here uh by nhl's very own ricky willems um and has kind of entrusted the robot's future in the care of zoe lambert um who will be you know running it for this event also a lot of help there from brandon bennett young i believe brandon's going to be driving it ah and uh zoe's captaining the team 
And um, Zoe's like an amazing team captain. She's so organized. She has everything together. She's used to bringing giant crews of people here and keeping them all on task and on point for winning major competitions. Brandon is not used to driving this kind of a robot. This is not his bread and butter. <laughs> Very different. Uh, he's driving two really funky robots today. Yep. I think he really wants to stretch his abilities, challenge himself. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited to see how this goes. I will say that if Emperor is working, this is a terrible matchup for them. Yeah. Um, the horizontals in general, you can see how it's built, this kind of stick frame system. It's not good. Uh, yeah, uh, Emperor has a, a bit of a weight bonus from being a shuffler. Um, that non-conventional movement bonus is, uh, is a boon. But um, it is to be seen whether or not the, the bot is fully functional. They've had gremlins for many, many competitions. Uh, well, sometimes they work great. Yeah. Sometimes they work phenomenally. Sometimes not so much. I mean, it's a very ambitious bot. That is oh. a heavy bar. Absolutely. It's shuffling just fine, though. Things are going. Things are moving. You can see that whole box rumble when it shuffles around just because it's a lot of weight. I love shuffler bots, Kyle. It's fun, right? Yeah. That is loud. Now, Kyle, I have a question for you. I'm hoping Bring it. you might be able to provide us an answer. Maybe. I collect a lot of useless facts. Now, uh, Ricky has previously built a robot called Baby Shoes. Yes. However, this robot is called Moccasin. Is it named after the snake or the shoe? Well, in this line of robots, this mm -hmm. Yeeter style of robot, we have Baby Shoes, we have Stiletto, mm -hmm. and now we have Moccasin. The only bot that doesn't fit into that kind of shoe naming thing is Mammoth. Yeah. Mammoth has nothing to do with the snake. Uh, so I would have to, to guess that this is based off of the shoe. But a Mammoth is an animal, and a... Snake is an animal. A moccasin is an animal. I cannot imagine mammoths and snakes were even living at the same time, <laughs> like in the same place at the same time. I would period. love to get an answer to that if uh, we have any. We'll have to uh, ask Ricky. Ricky's yeah. not able to join us today. He's got other people running the bot, but I'm pretty sure it's a shoe-based bot. I mean, I, I'd have to side with you here. But I'm just, you know, trying to play devil's advocate. You know what's cool about moccasin what? is it is the uh, the uh, one of two of this style of robot that you can actually ride. Really? Yeah. Don't. Have, Highly have unsafe. You? No. Oh. I kind of want third. to, though. Yeah, safety third. <laughs> and we've got the box rush going, but that weapon is now getting up to speed on Emperor. Jillian Doolittle running that bot. It is one and two across two, one event this year, and... Uh, and you can see that back kind of support stick on, Mo or on Moccasin is gone now. This is why horizontals are so scary for this bot. But there you go. The cam lifter is able to get under. If they're able to get that up, might be able to get a lift on them. But now none of these bots are moving. What is going on? Are we in tap out territory? And if so, Who's tapping out? One thing's for sure, Emperor is not spinning down very quickly at all. There we go, the weapon's finally starting to slow. So Emperor, Emperor wins that fight by tap out, no surprise there. You can see the weapon is split the back support strut is gone. And it does look like the wheel is somewhat askew on that side. And there's some stuff hanging out the top that doesn't look like it's supposed to be hanging out the top. What'd I miss, Kyle? Uh, you just missed somebody destroying a nice pair of shoes. <laughs> that was Moccasin versus Emperor that we just saw. Uh, tough matchup for Moccasin if Emperor was going to work. And guess what? 
Emperor worked. Oh, boy. Yeah, so there was a lot of damage to Moccasin in that one. Uh, my name's Kyle Crows. This is Chris DeSico. Chris, nice to have you, bud. Oh, it's good to be back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you started out the day up here on the desk. Yes. Saw some good fights. Yeah, I saw some great beetle fights. Uh, we are now into 30-pound qualifying. That was the first one of those that we saw, and that was a nice little fight between those two robots. Yeah, and, you know, that is not an easy equation to get through for a, uh, a horizontal, like, it was Emperor? Emperor, the biggest blade in the horizontal department for this weight class. I mean, it's huge. It has a habit of not working. But when it works, it's an absolute just barn beater, and that was a huge hit. Against Moccasin, a robot that you cannot effectively have a strategy against because... I don't know if they get bigger than Moccasin. No, it is the biggest bot, but uh, horizontals are definitely uh, a challenge for them, design-wise. Uh, they've got the wheel pods low to the ground. They've got the kind of a framework system instead of anything you can really put armor on. Uh, there's nothing to kind of absorb those impacts. Now, if you've got a vertical, Moccasin makes no sense. You've got nothing to do with it. But with a horizontal, you've got a little bit more of an area that you can actually attack. Yeah, and Moccasin would really need to use those can lifters in the front, like in perfect timing in order to defeat a horizontal, especially with one with such a huge reach like Emperor. All right, so we're going to head over to cage two where we have Radix going up against Fee Fan. You can see Fee Fan down there in the blue corner, one of the Cybears team bots. All the Cybears team bots kind of have this look to them, right? Two-wheel drive, egg beater style spinner. That egg beater has been through some fights. Look at the kind of bend in that there. I see a little gold peeking through. Yeah, there is uh, the, the traditional egg beater style that they get is uh, originally gold. It's like the same paint job on my first Toyota Camry. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's still out there plugging away somewhere, I'm sure, 600,000 miles on it. Now, Radix is a, uh, a relatively new build. It's a cool bot. From the University of Dayton. Ohio. Uh, cool blade, undercutter st style design. Gotta love that front printed armor package there, kind of holding the bot together. It's, Under bu it's builder Aiden is testing out a new 3D printed teardrop that holds that undercutter weapon, weapon assembly in place in the front. You can see it right there. It's nice. beautiful. Yeah, it's pretty. It's really pretty. It's been a while since we've seen the entire Cybears team here bringing all their bots. Typically, they have like kind of a rotating cast of captains and players bringing the different bots for them. FIFAN's been through a lot of great fights here in the past. Typically, it does pretty well against undercutters. We'll have to see how well Redix runs. All right, this cage looks like it's locked up. We'll probably hear the countdown any moment. Any other fights that, uh, that I might have missed out on, Kyle? I saw some, some incredible flames uh, kind of licking up in one of the fights earlier, over a huge crowd of people congregated around one of the cages. Yeah. Do you remember downloading, um, you know, movies and, and songs illegally on Kazaa back in the day? No, I never did that because I wouldn't download a car. Oh, right. Yes, you wouldn't download Actually, a car. Actually, I might have downloaded that. You can that, download that, a car nowadays. I think I did download that Toyota Camry now that you mentioned it. Um, so that was Kazaa. Kazaa is a new flamethrower bot, and it, it cooks. I mean, it really cooks. That thing put out a ton of fire very early up in that match, and all of it lingered in the opponent. It was really impressive. At f a blistering 500 KB per second. Uh, and it's all, like, off-the-shelf components. Not what you're really? expecting. Yeah. Oh, cool. Not what you're really expecting from flamethrowers here. We, we like to have custom flamethrowers. Like, flamethrowers are really hard to design. Amen. It's a negative pressure environment. It's a lot of spinning, moving things, moving very quickly. You're trying to drive with it. Imagine, like, running with a lighter, trying to light the lighter. It's not going to work very well. You really got to take all that into account. It is, it re is really 
interesting to see how some people approach the challenge of creating a frame, flamethrower very practically, and then some people have taken it to a whole new level, like Dutch oven, for example, with a completely, uh, you know, uh, uh, mach machined, like, aluminum uh, gas canister and absolutely, like, brilliant uh, deployment technology. That thing, that thing cooks. Yeah, but it's really we, impressive. We've also seen servo motors that literally click a, a creme brulee kitchen torch. <laughs> and I love that too. You're of course uh, referring to Kill It With Fire by Kokoto Mane. A different take on the flamethrower. Instead of a just massive flame coming out of the front of the robot, it's a very concentrated flame that they use, he uses as a top attack. It's a clever idea. Believe it or not, that's also how the pilot light works for Yamato 2. Fascinating. So it just, it does blast out, uh, I think it's either a propane or butane or a mixture, but then it actually uses a kitchen torch to light the bigger torch. Good for Yamato too. Bless them for creating viral content and ridiculousness. <laughs> a family that burns things together. <laughs> All right, and here we go in cage two. Nice hit from Fifan there. Fifan keeping the pressure on Radix, and now Fifan stuck underneath the wall. Ooh, one of those, and yeah. nice, Radix able to take advantage, but then Radix bouncing off of the wall. Radix getting that weapon up to speed. It doesn't oh. look like they're getting much weapon spin up from Fifan at all. Fifan oh. is jammed up there. Kyle. Are they able to move? There's Kyle. nothing twitching on Fifan at all. Fifan took a huge shot to the side armor, and it looks like the bot just shut down. Yeah, something in there disconnected. There's no power going to the bot at all. Wow. So there we go, the end of that matchup. Radix version four, looking like a beast. Beautiful hits. Congratulations to Aiden and the University of Dayton. Looked like at one point in that match, Fifan got one of those kind of sharp forks stuck under the side rail. That's one of the risks that you take here in combat robotics. When you have a sharpened fork, you get yeah. stuck under that side rail, and you might give your opponent the opportunity to come in for a, really an unguarded shot. That's not, like It is not the first time that we've seen that happen today. Um, it is definitely a risk. There's space under the guardrails. We'll have some competitors complain about it, but they can't be flat to the floor. It's, it's, they're just sitting there, you know what I mean? Like, right. they're just attached. You're, it is your job to design for the arena. It is not our job to design the arena for you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and the arena is going to have guardrails, and those guardrails are going to have spaces under it. It is what it is. It is what it is. Um, so yeah, we are going to be looking at cage two action, big uh, big robot fighting action coming up after that. It's uh, we're moving our way through these qualifying rounds now. It's yeah. nice. It's nice. You think, uh, you know, uh, here we are, uh, 420 NHRL. Things are moving along. All right, so this is one of my favorite new bots this year, Smacko Lantern. Oh, okay. Love them so much. Such a cool old school build, getting better and better each tournament he's bringing it to. And this is Tsunami. Tsunami is uh, it's a good bot. It's had some rapid disassemblies in the past, but had some really good hits too. So it does have some ablative armor. You can see it up there in the corner. This is from Team Robo Jackets. And the countdown has started. And we are off. Ooh. Listen to that oh. blade. Wow. Tsunami sounded like a beast out there. And look at Smack o Lantern taking the hits. Oh. Uh oh. So it doesn't look like we're getting any movement 
out of Tsunami's wheels at this point. Looks, oh, there oh, we go, yeah, a little part, bit. Part of that fork was actually stuck in the plywood. But nice. Smack o Lantern, when it was first built, was almost entirely built with Home Depot components. Looks like we're now look, seeing 3D printed armor on it. There probably are some relics from Home Depot in there. Oh, for sure. You know, it's how builders get things done. And the uh, the speed holes on the back of Smack o Lantern <laughs> are also one of my favorite parts. It's for air cooling and weight. Nice shot there from Tsunami. And I believe that is Smack o Lantern weapon. Is it down? It looks like it. Yeah, there's not a spin spin going on on that weapon right now. The Which, weapon on Tsunami's been bulletproof this matchup, though. No, no it, issues with it at all. It does sound like, though, that they have probably taken some of the power down out of that weapon just to preserve it a little bit longer, because now all they have to do is kind of chip away at this big pumpkin. Yeah, show the judges that they are getting the hits, doing the damage, but why risk yourself by taking in that much kinetic energy? Nice shot there from Tsunami. And yeah, you're totally right. Look at that. Just a little pop with that weapon. Little also, pop. they also have to play it safe. They did use their one on stick. So one, you know, one more uh, fork caught in the floor, a side rail. That could really spend the, spell the end for you. Smack o Lantern brought to you by Paul Tortorici. First ever combat robotics event was this year here at NHRL. Wow. And you could see him just incrementally improving each time he comes with Smack o Lantern. Able to survive this deep into this fight. Yeah, it's taking a lot of shots and it's still in one piece. It's doing great. Although we have seen quite a bit of pumpkin chunking. But finish the match, able to drive to the door. That is definitely something to be proud of going up against a competitor like Tsunami. Nice job, Paul. Doing a little function test, showing the judges everything's up and working. Another little function test, showing that the drive's working. Weapon, not so much. There you see the Roller Jackets team guys, Paul Tortorici. Cool a combination of people. Really proud of the way Paul's bot worked throughout that entire matchup. Tsunami's looking great though. Yeah, definitely. That's a beast of a robot. I tell you, we are here in a, um, a, a giant industrial warehouse with thick concrete floors, but when a bot like that spins up, you feel it through your toes. Yeah. It's insane. Yep, vibrates the very desk we're sitting at here. It's cool. It's a really neat bot, um, and it looks a lot better than it did before. It was a definite threat last time that it was here, but they've done some great improvements to that machine. So, yeah, they'll be moving right on in the qualifiers. Love that. Do you expect to see them a little bit later in the bracket? For sure, yeah. They, they've done very well today. Yeah, we're moving right along in both the qualifying, or in all three of the qualifying rounds. Uh, three pounders have been uh, going since early this morning. We've got the 12 pounders going, and now finally the 30 pound bracket, or the 30 pound qualifying rounds have started. Uh, we've seen one fight from that so far, and that was a, that was an unfortunate destruction of a pair of shoes. Now, with the 30s, I believe we have 15 30s here today. Yeah. Obviously, Megatron and Jameson Go leading the pack, uh, you know, seated number one here. Where do you think um, the rest of that is gonna play out in the 30 pound division today? It's Megatron with treads. There's the, the one big add-on to Megatron this year is the tank treads. Um, the, it does add a lot of grip. It adds a lot of pushing power to that bot. I think that, you know, Jameson wouldn't really debut something like that, a new kind of means of locomotion without it being ready to go. I think it's a scary place for anybody to be in that bracket. There's very few bots that he has to be afraid of. Well, you got to be you got to be careful with Barbie and Ken because they can do it. Uh, yes, they can do they it. They can do it. It's a brand new build. 
Uh, but it's very sparkly. I can't wait to see it. I haven't even seen it yet. I saw it up in the pits. It's uh, gorgeous. They, they put a lot of work into the details of the bot. There's even details kind of cut into the wheels of the bot. Um, and the weapon and many of the other components are completely coated in uh, pink glitter paint. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And it comes with its own dream home. Uh, yes. And uh, they're going to drive it to the arena in the uh, Barbie convertible. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Gotta love that. It's brilliant. Um, there were rumors for a while that uh, one of the drivers, Glenn Boxel, was actually going to come dressed as Barbie. Uh, but I'm not sure if that's actually worked out. They had cool team T-shirts back on the pits. I don't know if they have a costume change before they come out to fight. We'll have to see that later. I mean, there's so many different costumes that you can have. Uh, nearly unlimited, actually, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you can, you can make your own. You can buy them from the store. There's lots of options there. Uh. Um, so what do you think about the 12-pound division today? I mean, we've got some old old names in there. We've also got some weird newcomers. But what are you seeing up there in the pits that are interesting? I mean, you? obviously, you have uh, you have Psycho, you have Maximizer, Caldera 12. I mean, there's there's some really heavy hitters in there. Blue Cheese. Uh, the, the 12s, I think, might be one of the most exciting uh, 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 ends of a of, of a tournament that we've had here uh, so far this year, and I cannot wait until prime time starting tonight at 7 p.m. Psycho had a rough start to the day, uh, instant knockout with the first fight, uh, first like engagement with Gotham. Don't know what went wrong there. I don't think that's going to be exemplary of their entire day. I do know that um, Maximizer is planning their day around Psycho. They really, Jake wants to face Psycho. He really wants to get to that point in the competition. But he's built the bot very much so with Caldera in mind. Yeah. That f the, um, the full arm that holds the weapon is lighter now, but he's got new metal armor placements on it to help absorb those impacts. Because famously, we watched Glenn rip the weapon motor, rip the weapon hub, I should say, out of Maximizer at the last time that they fought each other. So he's really put these kind of metal armor pieces onto the bot to prevent that from happening. Jake's ideas are very well thought out. Uh, that's a, just a tough order to kind of build for two very different, very destructive bots in Caldera and Psycho. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if Jameson will be taking Psycho and driving a little bit more conservatively just to try to get into that bracket because that is, I mean, going 0-1 here with so much talent under the roof today. Yeah. You got to be careful. Yeah. So even, that if you're next the, even if you're the best. That next matchup really has got to be careful. It was crazy, that hit, that shot from Gotham. It was like they just hit a switch. I mean, everything in um, Psycho just turned off. Hmm. Nothing moved. It was just like, uh, like you really did just smack into that turnoff switch just barely. I don't know what happened. I know that Jamo was feeling really confident about Psycho at the beginning of the day today when I talked to him. So hopefully he's able to get that problem kind of worked out. But man, that was quite a hit. Yeah, and uh, I don't know if we, have we seen Killer Whale yet from uh, William Marchese? I have not seen it yet, if it has competed. I have not seen it yet. It's a cool design, though. I haven't got a chance to look at it upstairs, but, uh, you know, a fully, a fully hinged horizontal, I don't, I don't know what that even really means. He, he came up to, to us at the desk earlier today, explained the whole thing, uh, but, it, you know, it was Still like, he, he, might as, he might as well have been speaking Latin. It's interesting. Talking to William, normally when he brings even a bot he's brought like a thousand times, he seems apprehensive. He seems nervous. He doesn't want to. Um, he doesn't want to like oversell what it's going to do. He feels pretty confident about this robot today. Oh wow, it's exciting. Yeah, it's interesting. I really like him as a builder, as a competitor, as a thought leader, kind of in the sport. And if he feels confident about a robot when it's first time out. Might be a rough day for its competitors. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm sure that we'll probably see him sometime in the near future. Killer Whale. All right, so welcome. This is the qualifying round of the uh, April 20th edition of NHRL. This is the fourth qualifier of the year. The winners today will be going home with a golden dumpster full of cash. Uh, that also wins them a place at the World Championships at the end of this year. Uh, the top four in each of our weight classes, the 3-pound, 12-pound, and 30-pound division, will all earn a spot 
into that um, that world championships at the end of the year. We do have some bots here that have already qualified for the world championships, and if they win, then the spot goes back down to the bots below them. So it could be in the top five, it could be in the top six, depending on how it goes in that weight class. Uh, for example, um, let's see, Caldera qualified at the last RAT event. If they were here and they qualified or they won the three pound weight class, then it would be the top five that would be going to the world championship. This That's year. right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it's an interesting day. Uh, we changed a lot about the way that we present the event. We've got an entire bowl and arena that surrounds the two main cages. Um, and we have a full bot driving experience with, I believe, two boxes put together or two boxes out in our area that you can check out. Um, so yeah, check this out. You can get a little bit of uh, experience driving one of our bots. And that's the Eric bot, which is uh, part of the Havoc Academy, uh, which is launching this year. A, a guided course to building your own combat robot that comes with all of these awesome core components to build a fully functional bot that then you can modify and bring, uh, and bring something new that we've never seen before using some of these components. Definitely something to check out. You can check that out at nhrl.io. Um, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, one of the things that uh, we will say is that the top four bots getting qualified now is new. We did have a rule change kind of mid-course, mid-season here to allow for the top four to get in, which I think makes a lot of sense that we made that adjustment. Um, it's going to be cool to see how that goes. Eric is, a, is such a fascinating idea for people. It's a safe-ish bot to have around the house. Yes. Uh, I wouldn't put it around your cats, but you could put it around your kids. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't want to put it around kids and cats. No, that would be very dangerous for everybody involved. Um, but it's a uh, you know, lifter-style mechanism. You could put other weapons on it. It's something that you can practice with, drive with, get used to all the different components. And you're not going to hurt anybody too bad. Maybe, maybe uh, bruise a toe. Yeah, stub a toe. Yeah. And it's, like a, it's a lifty grabby, too, because it, it kind of you know, has almost like a mouth where not only can you use it to uh, essentially wedge an opponent, get under an opponent, lift an opponent, but then you can also kind of clamp down on an opponent and, uh, and you know, give them the runaround. Absolutely. All right, we are going to go to cage four, where we will see Waddles taking on uh, Grippy. Waddles is now uh, a full-on university team bot from Team WPI. And Grippy is brought to you by Daniel Gott. It's a first uh, competition, first bot ever. Big uh, vertical spinner on it. Really ambitious ideas for this build. I know originally they were talking about putting a vacuum system in it to help keep it to the ground. Not really able to get that going for this event from what I understand, but they've got the bot out. Uh, they've got the weapon going on it. And they're going up against a group of veterans in the, uh, the Waddles team. Captain of this team for the day is Connor Howard. It is the official 30 pound robot of Team WPI. And they can run either a vert or a undercutter configuration. This is the vertical configuration. I'd say it's the less frequently run version of Waddles. There you can see Grippy. Look at that weapon on Grippy. So big and mean. Not uncommon for Team WPI to, you know, style their bots in the form of a Swiss Army knife to make it more adaptable uh, to bring to a tournament where you don't know what your lineup is going to look like. You can change things out. You can change your configuration to meet the needs of your next fight. And that's, um, that presents its own challenges, and it certainly uh, complicates a build. You gotta love the uh, cam lifter multi-bot configuration they have coming out there with it as well. Gonna add a lot of diamondism to this bot. Look at that, and we've got, ooh, the, oh. the, <laughs> they got the cam stuck in the plywood. 
You can oh. see a strategy coming out here, pinned to the wall and waiting for Waddles to come in and take the hit. They definitely don't want to make Waddles take on that weapon oh. if they can avoid it. Look at that gouge. Nice shot there from Grippy, ripping chunks out of the wood. One foot long oh, splinter no. ripped He's out of the wall. going everywhere though after that big engagement. You can see the two side armor packages are kind of hanging off and that's more pieces flying off the back. Grippy, I'm not even sure what's coming out, but Grippy's still driving, the weapon's still working. Hey, it might just be the arena, Kyle. Oh no. No, now the entire yeah. back armor's coming off. Oh, it's, it's hanging on, barely. I think it's a piece of tape. <laughs> oh no! Nice shot there from Waddles, launching Grippy across. Grippy's now landed on the uh, wheels. One wheel's still working on Grippy, the other one's not. The weapon is twitching, but it's not really working. Oh, there we go, it loosened up. And now Grippy's back upside down again. Oh. Waddles taking its time with these shots. Oh, that looks like the, the, the belt uh, pulley for... Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's not gonna be good. You need that. You think that's a belt pull pulley from Grippy's weapon? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's all loosey-goosey. That's supposed to be tight. That's supposed to be tight there on the on the pulley. That's not going to work. That will probably so be your match. I don't think an unstick is really going to do much for you no, at this point. No, we're either going to get a uh, count out here or a tap out. Looks like everybody's backed up to the door, so that is a tap out. I believe it was a tab out, but we'll confirm that with our officials here in a moment. Not a bad first outing for the team that took over Waddles here at WPI. I know they had a really rough morning getting this bot working. Really? Oh, yeah. They were stressing when I talked to them about 9 a.m. Uh, nothing had been fully functional yet on the bot at that point, so they were really hoping to get everything together. I actually saw a little bit of stress coming off of Kokoto Mane, believe it or not. Kokoto was stressed about something? A little bit, yeah. I've never seen him without a, a, a face of pure delight. Don't get me wrong. He was in a delightful mood. He was very pleasant to talk to. He shook my hand. He was so happy to see me. He had a million stories to tell me, but... There was a little twinge, just a little bit of stress coming off of his body as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's something you don't see every day. No, and he's just on the team. He's not even the captain. So, yeah, he had a, they had a little bit of stress, but they got it figured out. Um, and I will say I talked to one of the teammates behind Grippy earlier. They were very worried about that matchup. I think they did very well for a first-time bot, first time out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and then you're going up against WPI, one of the the pedigree institutions of combat robotics. Absolutely, especially here at NHRL, uh, heavily favored to win, especially at the three pound weight class today. It's a nice bot, Waddles. It's looking really good. It's looking really good having a whole team behind it. It's working really well. All right, so meanwhile, let's go to cage two. So this is Tryhard versus Chaos Upright, which is another Team WPI bot. I believe they had one event out here earlier this year where they went 0-2. Chaos Upright has a nine-inch vertical with shuffler pods that you currently see dangling there in the air. Yeah, what a great demonstration for how those work. <laughs> of course, that's what they were doing. They were just showing all of us exactly how these shuffler pods work. And of course, those shuffler pods, that, that gives you the uh, non-conventional locomotion weight bonus. So this, uh, this bot does come in at over three pounds. And that is a, that is a, that is a large weapon for a three-pounder. Look at that. That's but huge. I do see a belt. I yeah, do see a belt. Yeah, and it looks like just the right size of belt for that weapon. And I also don't see a belt in the belt path of that weapon. So we might just have a shuffler bot. But they are going up against um, Tryhard, a bot by Mar Martin Kadick, true rookie, first bot, first competition. Oh, they might they might have more than one belt on there. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah, I think you're right. Redundancy. Yeah, you gotta you gotta plan for those. Uh -oh. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that's menacing. Even our house bot is wincing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh. oh, that was not good. Ouch. Now you can see Tryhard has that cool vertical weapon on there. 
And it's a true family affair with TryHard. Martin built the bot, but his 13-year-old son is driving it. Well, here's a question, Kyle. Do you think that belt is actually off of Try? Could be. Weapon's not working on Try. Really nice job maintaining some aggression, showing a little bit of control there. Preventing that weapon from uh, getting up to speed. Now, Martin Kadick is the, the builder of this three-pounder tryhard, but it's actually Martin's 13-year-old son who's driving it. And you can see the belt now completely hanging off. Kind of on the side rail there. I don't think that's going to move at all. So we are now down to a pushing match. And typically speaking, a shuffler is not going to do great in a pushing match. Look how fast that shuffler mechanism is going, though. It's cool to watch. It is mesmerizing. Nice pin. Two competitors, uh, both with belts off. This is like Luke and I at a buffet. <laughs> I believe we're coming up to the final seconds of these mat of this match. So, you know, with this, it'll go to the judges, and they're going to have to decide exactly when that damage was dealt and who got that aggression and who got that control in that first minute and a half window in this match. Yeah, it's a tough one. Both the bots looking pretty worse for the wear by the end of this fight. All and right, so we will wait on a judge's decision for that. But meanwhile, let's go to cage five. This is Noki versus who cares? Noki is a uh, Alex Peza creation, his first ever hub motor, and he's running a 4S battery system in this bot. He started working on it a couple of days ago. As of 7.15 last night, it wasn't working at all. It had never been together, and no components were really functioning on it. So it's cool to see that it's actually doing stuff right now. Alex Peza, a member of Team Shreddit, and a, uh, a chef, which is why uh, I think that's where, why we're seeing Anoki here. Who cares is a WPI bot. First time to NHRL. It's controlled by a Wii controller. Oh, get out of here. Uh, yeah, well, Kyle, the, the uh, captain of this team, he's just used to using that style of controller, so we <laughs> wanted to try to make that work. And uh, so far, so good. Keep in mind, you know, a lot of people imagine it would be fun to kind of make a video game controller work for this. It's a pretty challenging thing to do to figure out how to get the those kind of two systems to work together, especially with the safety requirements that we have. We, it's um, working pretty well for them. We do have a builder here today that I know is, maybe this, I, I'm not supposed to say, but is secretly working on a controller that is a Nintendo Power Glove. That's ridiculous, and I love it. That one's going to the judges. Both bots really control different parts of the engagement that we saw there, so not sure how that's gonna work out, but I gotta say, great showing for uh, Alex and his first time with that bot. And uh, yeah, who cares? Looking good. It's Noki, even if it's uh, not doing good, it's still delicious. It's still delicious. The best potato-based ba pasta in the world. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna have to, I'm gonna have to check with Control about that. I mean, it's a pretty subjective thing, you know, you can't... Oh, it's confirmed. It is yeah. confirmed. Yes. It's the best potato-based pasta. Noki is the winning potato-based pasta dish. We don't know if they won that fight, but they are the best potato-based pasta in the world. Yes. Fact. Okay. If Control says it, it's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> we get only factual information from Control around here, so there you go. 
Uh, there are some good gnocchi spots here, by the way. I've heard. In, in the Norwalk area? Yeah, of course. Oh, oh boy. ladies and gentlemen, we are about to see a fight from Jameson Go and Megatron in Cage 4. Let's head over that way. This is, I believe, Megatron's first fight of the day. They're going up against Chonky. Chonky's looking so much more aesthetic since last time we saw it. Look at that shell. Yeah, that's gorgeous. I don't know if it's going to look like that in uh, about three minutes, but you never know. Yeah, the team was talking about how much more effort they've really put into the aesthetics of this robot. They want it to be something that people remember, something that people think about. Uh, this is not the first time they've gone up against Megatron. Last time did not end very well for them. They do have a little bit more reach with this shell. From what they told me, that is a fully billeted shell. Oh, boy. It is a relatively expensive piece of equipment, but Here we now go. they're going to put that to the test up against it is, Jameson it is, Go. It is not spinning up right now, Kyle. That is not good. No. Oh, oh no. no. Talk oh, about not no. good. That's, that's fire that's not supposed to be coming out of the robot. Chonky is not a flame. Oh, player. no. And Megatron waving goodbye to their opponent. I mean, this, this might be the first time I've ever seen a, a robot self-destruct from just intimidation factor. Yeah, that was rough. I know they really wanted to test the metal of their robot against Jameson Go. I know Jameson wanted to test the new tank treads on the back of his bot, new drive system, but unfortunately, nobody really got to do any of those things due to an unanticipated eruption of flames from Chonky. Yeah, strange flame out like that. I, I, you gotta wonder what happened if there was a short somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it could be anything at that point. Uh, the Perhaps the weapon system was just really trying to spin up and the yeah. motor flamed out. You don't know at that point. It's tough, and uh, I know they put so much effort into that bot. It's a shame to see they lo them losing that first qualifying match like that. They do have another chance. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I got to say, the outcome is pretty anticipated. Yeah, and that means that Megatron is now moving to 8-1 and one across uh, its third event here. That is, Jeez. That is, that's a record that you cannot sneeze at. No, Megatron really just consistently only loses to one bot, and that, you know, is not here. So <laughs> they, they are very heavily favored to win the 30-pound division today. There are some big challenges in there for them. Uh, I'd say Moccasin makes no sense for Megatron to have to fight. That's going to be a tough one. Uh, we'll have to see how that actually plays out. But that's, yeah, that's going to be an interesting matchup if we do end up kind of going through the bracket that way. The other bots, there, there's definitely configurations of Megatron you can imagine working well for them. Well, I'm sure that JMO is very happy that uh, no repairs outside of maybe a, a quick battery charge is going to be on if the that. docket now. Yeah, if that. He might just be able to just go sit up in the pits and hang out. Yeah, sometimes you have Work to win. Work on his other two bots. Sometimes here you have to win the war of attrition, and sometimes the war of attrition uh, is fought by somebody else on your behalf. Yeah, and that's exactly what just happened there. Now, Chonky, a really beautiful bot. Don't know what went wrong. I know that they've had really successful testing with the bot all day, so sometimes these things just happen. No idea what ended up going on there, though. Well, hopefully they can get upstairs, diagnose what happened, and we, we have a working bot here in the, uh, in the morning session. In the meantime, though, let's head on over to cage two. We've got some bots loaded in already. Who do we've got here? So this is Tomahawk 2.0 versus Taking Suggestions. Tomahawk 2.0 coming from Dustin Van Buskirk from Ohio. Nacho Robotics. And Taking Suggestions is built by Vincent Bryamonte III from Rochelle Park, New Jersey. That's a great name. Yeah. NHRL vit, a veteran and a 13-year-old driver. Love to see it. Really nice undercutter spinner design. Look at that front face on it, too. Vicious looking. I love it. 
That's and there's okay. a custom beer bar set up. That is a that is a chunky, asymmetrical beater bar. Look at that. It's like a brick. Tomahawk 2.0 looking like the meta, small, tight, compact, low to the ground. Five. Vicious vertical four, spinning weapon. Three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Oh. Wow, definitely able to get undertaking suggestions in that first engagement and oh. ripping into the side, but that weapon spinning into the side of Tomahawk. Yeah, Tomahawk taking advantage of all these early weapon-to-weapon -weapon engagements. Even able to get some shots onto the side and taking suggestions. Oh, boy. Wow, nice shots there. You can see Tomahawk's driving style is very uh, cautiously aggressive, I would say. They wait until they get a good tumble on taking suggestions before they rush in. Smart. And now they're upside down. Not ideal for them. Yeah, that's going to be rough for those weapon-to-weapon -weapon engagements. But it does look like right now Tomahawk might be having an issue with its right side drive. Yeah, I agree. If taking suggestions is still able to spin up to 100%, there could be opportunities here to immobilize that other side and take this by a count out or a knockout. 90 seconds left here in the match at cage two. Yeah, not a lot of spin going on from Tomahawk's weapon. Taking Suggestion's weapon is either slowed down or he's just being cautious with it, but we're not getting a whole lot of engagement from that either. It's also very possible that Taking Suggestions has actually dropped their power down for that weapon and that they just want to get the pops in now to show the judges, look, we can still do damage. We're controlling this match. Give us the points. Give us the points. Nice pin there. Last 30 seconds. One more pin from taking suggestions. Coming down to the end of this matchup. That is your three minutes. This is going to go to the judges. We'll see how that goes. taking suggestions looking a little bit more functional by the end of that fight. Did look like it, it had some mobility challenges, maybe even some weapon challenges, but both were still working. Yeah, that one's going to go to the judges. We'll see how that ends up. But uh, in the meantime, we are going to get ready for some more big bot action as we continue in the 30 pound qualifiers. And I do <laughs> see a heck of a lot of pink going on out there. What is this? It's looking like a summer blockbuster, if you will. That is uh, that is gorgeous. Absolutely Barbie and Ken in full, beautiful pink display out there. How can you Mattel? How can you Mattel? There's only one bot with that much beautiful pink today. <laughs> you can see Barbie and Ken will be taking on Ares. 
Look at that design. You can see the details in the wheels. You can see the sparkly weapons, the beautiful Barbie and Ken stickers, the paint job. The details are just chef kiss on this. Oh my goodness, I love it. And Aries coming to you from Team MIT. Of course, Barbie and Ken coming to you from Team WPI. shot there from Aries doing a phenomenal job deciding and picking a shot between these two robots. Difficult proposition. Wow! Wow! Beautiful hits there from Aries. Not exactly what people were anticipating in this matchup. But that bot is performing perfectly. He's got both halves of Barbie and Ken up against the side rails. Waiting to see if they call for an unstick. Wow! That crowd that you hear is a bunch of very excited students taking up the bleachers here at NHRL. These two schools have two of the best combat robotics clubs on planet Earth. Not even just for universities, clubs, period. Full Absolutely. Stop. MIT really just restarted its combat robotics club this year. Ares is their capstone robot. It placed third at its first competition here back in March. And just ripped through these two new bots from Team WPI. That was explosive. Wow. That is amazing. So this is an upscaled version of uh, Fireball and Stoneforge, two smaller weight class WPI robots from James Wynn and Brian Boxel. Really embracing the pink, really embracing the theming. You gotta love the details on that robot, but man, Ares just had a mission and took care of it. Focused on one bot, got them against the wall, turns its attention to the other bot, gets them against the wall, tap out, end of match. Well done to, to Ryan Duarte and Aries. MIT is back, baby. Wow. That was amazing. Traditionally, MIT has had some of the best bots in combat robotics, period, the end, in any weight class. They were out for a very long time. After COVID, they really didn't have a lot going on with that team. Restarted it this year without any legacy players, without anybody from the past to kind of show them how to do it. It's just the, the brains, the observations, the brilliance of these engineers that are on the team now bringing to you Aries. That's a marked improvement over what we saw last time. And last time they got third. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see them at the very end of the night. Very impressive matchup for them. So happy to see it. The bot looks great. It's performing great. And you know what? They added stickers. That helps. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. Uh, they were, we were talking about it last time they were here. They were like, we don't have any aesthetics on our bot. And I said, just add some stickers for now. It looks great. It really was a good, uh, a good addition to the machine. They also have that clear top plate, which I really like. You can kind of see what's going on inside. It's uh, it's that whole like old clear cell, uh, clear telephone for your room like we had back when we were kids. Yeah, the neon and yeah, it looks good. Probably the lead. Uh, but the team did great there. Very happy to see it going up against two extremely experienced players, especially down in that three pound weight class. And uh, yeah, they're definitely going to be placed pretty high when we get to the bracket after that performance. Can't wait to see how that shows up for him, though. In the meantime, we're going to go to cage two. 
so you see there we got fully defined looking good over there in the uh, left hand side and blue bean big old wedge out in front big old horizontal blade out in back it's uh, like a like a very faggy wedge I, uh, very thagomizer-esque, yeah. I love this configuration. So Blue Green brought to you by Noah Kerr from Corrupt Robotics. Uh, Noah's, I believe, 11 now. And designed this horizontal spinner bot. Let's go, Blue Bean! Definitely a family affair. You got to love that. Fully defined, a, a veteran here, also Team WPI, 10 and 3 across three events leading up to uh, today, and uh, took a Golden Dumpster home in November of 2022. Yeah, Ian McInerney, definitely one of the stalwarts of that team. Amazing builder, amazing driver. It has been cool watching his entire process, designing, developing, and perfecting this robot. kind of combining the dustpan style with a small but very powerful vertical weapon meant to kind of cut into the opponents, take important bits out. I, uh, I love these super wide control style bots. You know, you see it in Fully Defined, Clyde, uh, where, you know, your, your job is to kind of encapsulate your opponent and it, it look it funnels you right into a very compact but very very powerful weapon so you're part control but also you can be super aggressive and with such a wide body style you're able to turn on a dime and we've really seen him be able to isolate specific parts he wants to get with that weapon too he's able to kind of just pin the bot horizontally against the wall and rip a wheel off we've seen him be able to take out weapon hubs with that it's a great design, especially if you're a good driver, and Ian is a phenomenal driver. You gotta love this front wedge configuration on Blue Beam. Its builder, Noah, is 11. Yeah, not very old at all. It does almost look like maybe that front wedge is titanium? Could be, yeah. Almost looks like something you'd get off a D2 kit. Or off the front of, like, an F-35. Ooh. This will be interesting to see who kind of wins the ground game here. Fully Defined, of course, has those two long forks on the side, which have been known to scoop bots, even ones with a very, very low wedge in the front. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. And here we go, Kyle, cage two. Fully Defined, Blue Bean. Oh, there we go. Weapons now up to speed on Blue Bean, and they are able to get the Thago Miser style attack working. Oh, nope. Now they're just wearing them as a hat. No. Nice shot there from Blue Bean. Fully defined coming in with that weapon, weapon impact, getting the better of that, and launching wow. themselves back across the arena by hitting that wedge. Oh, on boy. Blue Bean. Oh, no. Oh, no. And there you the see the wheel got sniped off of Blue Bean. That's exactly what we were talking about with Fully Defined. Really able to pick their shots and take the pieces they want. Oh, and it's tough. That that front that wedge on the front of Blue Bean is just kind of dragging now. Oh, this is not this is not where they want to be right now. Fully defined, still coming in and taking shots at the weapon. And now fully be, uh, fully defined, kind of stalking after the multi bot. Not sure if they're going to go after it. And there's a count out. I can hear it coming across the arena floor. Oof. And yeah, that's high centered. Where's the weapon? Where'd it go? Oh, wow. Knockout. Good eye, Kyle. 
Interesting design on Bluebean. Oh, there it is. Yep, on, there on the it wheel. Is. Right on the wheel. Yeah, interesting design on Bluebean. Really good matchup. Uh, unfortunately, just not able to hold up against that onslaught and precision attack from Fully Defined. Ian McInerney, phenomenal driver. Fully Defined has created a still life in the corner of this cage with a wheel and a horizontal weapon. All right, so uh, that was a really nice three-pound matchup. We are going to get ready for some more 12-pound action coming into cage one very shortly, and that's going to be Glenn Boxel and Caldera 12. Glenn is having a great month in combat robotics, winning his gold first golden dumpster ever back at our RIT, RIT event. Um, coming in here with a lot of momentum, coming in here with a lot of, I guess, uh, positive energy and also a really cool new jersey. He looks great. Yeah, and it was <laughs> it was incredible watching uh, him take uh, the dumpster at RIT. He's he's one of the people that has plugged away harder than virtually everyone I know yeah. at this competition. And Caldera is a mean machine. It is it is it totally belongs here in the World Championships. And I and I really hope that we see Caldera 12 earn its stripes today, also making its way to the World Championships. That way, we give Glenn a little bit of room to make a Caldera 30 sometime here in the second half of the year. Caldera 12, relatively new robot. We've already seen it take out some of the top players in this weight class. Uh, very excited for their matchup today. We're even seeing people design their bots around Caldera 12 now, just because it has made such a powerful impact on this weight class. Really cool to see Glenn Boxold. By the way, just an all-around good guy, too. Nice guy. And there we see Caldera 12 down there in the blue corner. Now, traditionally, Glenn has had his son, Brian, driving the multibot with him. And look, that's who he's got with him today, it looks like. Oh, no. No. He doesn't. He's been trading out different members of WPI It's today. like a stunt double. I love it. Yeah, that's true. He had Kokoto with him on the last fight. There we see that low profile on Caldera 12. That great reach of that horizontal. It's a chonky weapon, to say the least. It truly is. It's their second matchup of the day. And I didn't see who's down in the other corner. I think just by the shape that's, yeah, kill a jewel. Bringing some of that Ohio power into this matchup. Kill a jewel built by David Dreyer. Yep. From Kent, Ohio. KSU Combat Robotics. Kent State has always brought some really great machines to this competition. Uh, Mr. Dreyer has definitely brought Kilojoule throughout the past couple of years, improved this bot greatly. Wow. But man, he's got a tough matchup with the much further out weapon blade of Caldera 12. Look at that. Already sparks flying. Oof. And you could see that side armor on the wheel on the right side oh, coming off, shredding right. right before our very eyes. Completely gone now. That wheel on the right side of Kilojoule is exposed. Death by a thousand cuts is how Glenn likes to drive this spot. He doesn't come in there for those massive hits. He likes to just get the angle on you and chip away at specific parts of your robot until he can take out a wheel, take out the weapon. And with that reach, as long as he keeps his own wheels away from Kilojoule's blade, look out. He's got a distinct advantage here. Still got to be very careful. Kilojoule is, you know, almost precisely. There's no movement coming from Kilojoule oh, now. No. That left wheel looked like it might have been spinning, but you can see Mr. Dreyer's coming around to look, and that is a tap oh, out. Oh, wow. Yeah, God, that's a wise move. I mean, so many pieces of that bot were coming off throughout the course of that fight. 
just best to tap out and move on. And yeah, they're getting pushed to the wall by the house bot. That's rough. It just goes to show you, Glenn originally gets into the support of the sport to support his son. Finds a love for it. Finds that he has a knack for it. And his bots are just performing wonderfully. Golden Dumpster at his last event. His 12-pound bot is now undefeated in the qualifying rounds. It's a heck of a day for Glenn. I would be surprised if, I mean, it's, it, it's possible. Back-to-back -back dumpsters, different bots. Different bots, different weight classes, back-to-back -back dumpsters, and really effective design for him. He's just able to use that to the maximum capacity. Um, you know, a lot of people think the, the age of horizontals was over for a long time. We've seen them really take, especially that 12-pound division this year. Glenn's the top competitor with a 12-pound horizontal, I'd say, at this point. That's it's hard to call anybody else for it. We're, we're going to be singing that song all year. 2024 is the year of the return of horizontals. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so we are back into cage two with some three-pound action. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right, here we go in cage two. Here we see Crocodile, a three-pounder, coming in from Massachusetts. And this is their very first ever NHRL, but they have fought elsewhere. Up against uh, Crocodile is Horizontal Destruction from Mayo Pack, New York, Team Impact. Also, another April 2024 true rookie here. First bot, first ever competition. So two brand new NHRL rookies going head to head. Minute and 15 seconds left in this match. They're both still moving, which is always good when you're a rookie to come out and, you know, keep it going for the full three minutes. Can they make it through the whole fight? Horizontal Destruction is doing a lot of destruction here. Yeah, it looks like we got some drive issues on Crocodile. That front left wheel looks like it is seized up. Crocodile does not want to give up. It, it's trying to make it. It's trying to avoid that count, but uh, horizontal destruction just keeps coming in. That spinner does not stop. Horizontal destruction, of course, using the zigzag running escape methodology that you have to use with crocodiles. <laughs> Ten seconds left here in the match. That's some impressive running here from a from a true rookie robot to come out and, and run a full three minutes, spun up the whole time, driving the whole time. Horizontal destruction, you know, coming out and doing pretty well here. But Crocodile making it to the bell. Everyone looks happy, having a good time. That's what you want to see. 
Welcome back if you're just joining us. Uh, now joining me at the desk, I have my friend and our co-host here, Adam Wrigley. Welcome to the desk. Thanks, it's good to be back. Excited to be here. Um, you know, I'm trying to catch up on things. Everything's in a different spot now. Uh, all the arenas are moved, all the screens are moved, but it's exciting. Everything's looking great. There's a great vibe in here. We've got a whole bowl for the arena. Yeah. Fans are going wild. You can hear it throughout the whole building. It's awesome, I like it. Yeah. So how's it been? How's it been doing up here? It's good. We're, yeah. So we're back here. This is the qualifying stream. We're making our way uh, through the early stages of this, uh, this part of the tournament until we get to our bracket here for prime time. Uh, which is going to kick off sometime around 7 o'clock tonight on YouTube. And uh, it's it's been a wild morning so far. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I've, I've been hearing a lot of loud bangs. Uh, you know, I've been catching the stream when I can, and it's looking pretty good, pretty exciting. We've seen some, uh, some all-new robots. I'm also seeing some robots we've seen before that look different. Uh, Megatron looks a lot different this time, uh, so that's exciting. Uh, and it's always great to see what people bring, and, and uh, these qualifying rounds, you know, anything can happen in here, so they're always exciting. Um, and the new vibe of this setup is great. I don't know, it's just awesome. It is wild to see the amount of uh, time and energy it, it, they put into our space here in Norwalk. Uh, it is now just, you get to see all sides of the action. We have, we have, stands uh, now on both sides of our heavyweight cages. There's new standing areas. There's an entire new flow. If you have not yet come out to NHRL and you are, you know, you're ever going to be here in the Northeast, we have seven, I believe, competitions here a year, and it is now a spectator experience with, with no rival. It is awesome. Now, let me ask you, Adam, have you had a chance uh, either last night or today to walk around the pits? Is there any bots in particular that you got to zero in on you thought were really uh, fascinating from, from your builder's perspective? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, like I mentioned before, I think Megatron is looking really good for this competition. I saw their fight was pretty quick. Uh, they went up against Chonky, another one that was really impressive looking. Chonky had a little bit of issue there getting spun up. Um, but both those robots stood out to me um, on the pit walk as like quite impressive. Now, you build bots. You are an incredible bot builder, both in the heavyweight arena, but also uh, here in, in some of the lower weight classes. What do you think happened in that situation? We saw a flare up that came out of the spinner, uh, but we didn't see any movement. What could it have been? Could it have been a speed controller, wiring? What are your thoughts? You know, sometimes when you see something like that, I, I immediately jump towards speed controller. Is just when I'm nothing moved and then all of a sudden flame. That's what I would think. And sometimes what can happen is when you're in the test arena, when you're practicing, you go to a little easy on spin up. Let's take it slow and it looks great. You get in the arena and you jam the throttle, something doesn't work great and you get a big pile of smoke. I don't know if that's what happened. I haven't talked to them since that happened, but that was kind of my first guess is, you know, you've been taking it easy in the test box and you get out in the arena and then you're under the big lights and you want to jam the throttle and something goes wrong. Wrong. But what an impressive piece of machinery uh, Chonky is, a solid billet yeah. shell, billet steel. Wow. Yeah. I, I've seen both sides of that coin where there's there are teams that take it too easy in the test box, and, and then there are some teams that go too hard in the test box, and they might end up like loosening something, seizing something, and C can you go too hard in the test box? I, I don't know. I think the, the folks from the safety crew <laughs> <laughs> might might think otherwise. I've had issues in, uh, for those who don't know, I have a robot called Knockoff White. It, it has shufflers, it has feet. Um, shufflers vibrate. They're basically like a vibration table, which is the thing you would use to test electronics. Hey, can they take this vibration? But that was what I had built for my robot, and it had a habit of vibrating all of the screws loose before three minutes was up. <laughs> And that's a problem when the fights are three minutes long. So I'd be doing great for two minutes, and then you know a whole side would fall off the robot or something like that. That's why Loctite yeah. is uh, is as precious as gold around here. <laughs> So I think that we actually have two bots that are tested and ready to go. Loading mm. here into cage one, we have some heavier weight action coming your way. We have Baby Grim and Page. Page uh, coming here all the way from Brazil. Mm. It's an international competition here today at NHRL. 
Baby Grimm is actually from Norwalk, Connecticut, so going up against a, a hometown team here. Uh, these are 12 pounders. Uh, they'll be fighting in the big box. Um, and it's fun to see how the physics works with the different size of robots here. You know, the three pounders are bouncing around, banging around, bouncing off the ceiling, the walls. You know, the 30s are going to be a little bit slower. The 12s are in between. They do a lot of bouncing, um, but they still have that mass to them. Um, so it's an interesting middle ground in terms of the, the physics of the arenas. Of course, fighting in a relatively larger arena um, than the other two classes as well, so they can play a little bit more driving games with each other. Um, you'll see them maneuver a little bit more than you may see the, the threes or the, or the thirties. And that's Paye's builder right there, Manuel Victor Ribeiro. Uh This is their first time here at NHRL, and they have fought elsewhere, especially probably in Brazil, where there is a, a huge combat robotics scene. But interesting, looking at that spinning weapon, uh, it can it can go horizontal or vertical. I think they, they have configurations for both. But this bot has a tip speed of 300 miles per hour. Whew. That's fast. Yeah, and if, if you've ever been here to the Norwalk area, it's about, on average, how fast people drive on I-84. <laughs> See, whenever so it's I, fast. Whenever I'm driving around here, I tend to be going five miles an hour. Right. I, well, I, we're from New York. <laughs> Whenever teams come here from Brazil, they they mean business. It is a long flight, and you want to come here and you want to you want to strut your best stuff. And every single time that we have teams here from Brazil, uh, they bring the excitement, they bring the enthusiasm. They are some of the hardest people working in the pits that you will see. Uh, sometimes you come here and you, you open up, you unlock the doors, and it turns out that they were hiding in crates all night and were using the workshop and grinding away. Uh, they are some of my favorite builders to watch uh, participate here at our tournaments. Oh, we're cutting over to cage five. We have a lipo fire um, that just happened over there. Uh, always exciting, great smell. <laughs> you know, it brings back <laughs> memories when you get that scent. Um, of course, NHRL here has a tremendous um, air evacuation system, so I don't get as much nostalgia here from it because you can't, you can't really smell it here, but it's in my head. I can smell it. I think that we were working on a partnership with the Yankee Candle Company to create a LiPo candle to sell here at the, uh, at the merch store. We'll give you an update on that when we, uh, when we find out if we have... Uh, uh, is there a waiting list? Can I sign up? Can I pre-order? I think so. Okay. We're also testing it on subjects now, if, you are, if you're interested in going and standing by cage five. <laughs> yeah. um, getting back to my, uh, my test box story. Um, so I had to test how long could I drive around before my bolts would vibrate out. I had reassembled it. I went to the test box, drove around for three minutes. It was great. I, te I checked every nut and bolt in the pits. Everything was tight. Nothing was loose. I said, I finally solved it. I fixed the vibration issues. And then it all fell apart a minute into my next fight. You loosened the jar. Yeah. Right? I loosened it. Yes. I had fixed it for four minutes. <laughs> and uh, I think I tested a little too hard that time. That was... Uh, was my issue. Um, the Brazilians do have it all, like, their pit tables, their whole team. I, I feel like any time you see a Brazilian team, they they're always on the ball in the pits. Every team has their own different vibe in the pits. You know, when you come over to, to my side of the pit table, my vibe is messy, um, disorganized. You know, it's kind of one of those piles where I know where that nut is, but no one else, you know, it's, it's right here. It's underneath this paper behind the controller. Um, the Brazilian teams, are they, they, they wouldn't like my pit style, I don't think. But <laughs> so here we have, we have two bots that are loaded into cage one for 12 pounds, but it, it sounds as though there might be some kind of technical issue happening here with one or, or both mm. of the bots. I'm waiting to hear a little bit more Five, info four, about what's happening there. Three. Two, but in the interim, let's one, hop over to cage five, two while they solve robots, that. Five. And here we have Clyde versus Rec Creation. <laughs> Clyde here, of course, the, the flame-throwing robot and the other bot sporting flame-proof uh, gold tape is Rec Creation. Clyde always puts a smile on my face. I mean, Absolutely. Look at those flames. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, wow. Nice pin. Oh. Oh. Oh, wow. You see that that. That hor uh, the, the vertical spinning weapon on Recreation was just kind of <laughs> creating a, a fiery vortex at the front of it. 
I don't know if that gold tape is going to help much with this much flame. Just immense control from Clyde, winning the ground game here. You know, Recreation doesn't oh, know wow. where to go. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh wow! I think we're gonna end up with another lipo fire oh, pretty soon. Oh wow, Adam! Look at that mess! Wow, you hear, you hear the crowd? The crowd is going wild. Oh, wow, uh, now I'm seeing a little bit more darker smoke. That probably is something vital. Uh, and there's out. your tap out. It, it feels like they've ended with a, a gold tape shaped cage around a completely melted core. <laughs> the it tape has like survived. Recreation looks like a Werther's original that has been in your pocket for about six weeks. <laughs> the tape made it through, but unfortunately not the rest of the robots. There was so much fire on the outside of Recreation that it's now coming from the inside of Recreation, and we're probably gonna see someone stepping in here momentarily with a fire extinguisher. Yeah, that's not where you want the flames to be. No, um, no, no, no. Yeah. But it looks like that belt hung on somehow. It still has the shape of a robot. Ooh. Uh, you see it kind of... It's twitch. It, uh, I'm not dead, I'm just very badly burned. <laughs> Can flames conduct electricity? Oh. Wow. So obviously, uh, Recreation's gonna have to go upstairs and try to buff some of that out, but... Uh, it'll, it'll buff out. Yeah. yeah. But Clyde, another dominant performance. Uh, you know, is anyone going to be able to stop Clyde? It is a always a a story of rock paper scissors here. But Clyde is the one bot that brings a flamethrower to rock paper scissors, which yeah. complicates the game and entertains all of us. I'm in my head. I'm trying to imagine flames versus paper. Obviously, you know, flames win. Flames versus scissors. Flames could win, depending on how hot they are. You know. Yeah. But wow. It seems like we're still having some technical difficulties up in the... Uh, in cage in the one here. Cage one. But I do want to see that fight eventually. We're still waiting on some more context as to what's happening here in cage yeah. one. I see that we have... Uh, some staff cage side right now trying to understand what is exactly happening here. I'm not sure if there's an issue with one bot or both bots. A lot of discussions happening. Yeah. You know, sometimes here we're, uh, we're a little bit flexible. It's up to your opponent, I think, as well. Like, if, if something needs to get kind of tweaked on the fly, we see it happen here sometimes. Sometimes things need to get mm -hmm. powered down and started back up again. Sometimes a bolt needs to get, you know, retightened. But... Yeah, what we're, what we're hearing now is neither bot is ready to fight. Oh, wow. Apparently. Uh, you know, I don't know why, um, but something's wrong with both robots, uh, which is, you know, it's uncommon that both robots can't fight when you get down here. I mean, uh, usually they do have the test boxes. They do make sure they run ahead of time. But there is something, uh, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, witchcraft sometimes in these boxes where everything works on your bench, everything works in the test box. And then for some reason, it doesn't work when you drop it in here. Maybe that's what's happening today, some mystery failures. Um, you know, it doesn't usually get that far before uh, both robots don't work. It's, it's, uh, it's very, yeah. very rare that you have two bots load in and both of them are having technical issues. I've only seen it here maybe two or three times yeah. in, in, in several years. <laughs> Ooh, we're gonna hop over to cage five. Patrick Bateman versus Strawberry. I mean, I like the name. Um, American Psycho, one of my favorite movies. Uh. <laughs> wow! Really? It's a good movie. It's I, a yeah, it's a, it's a great movie. movie. I wouldn't say it's a, you know one of my favorite movies. That's a that's well. The only thing is, you, it's you know it's a it's a parody. It's not like uh, you know you, it's it's not something to live up to. 
And we're off here in cage five. Patrick Bateman versus Strawberry. I'm imagining that Strawberry is the one here in red and white. And Patrick Bateman is the one here wielding an ax, uh, <laughs> wearing a, uh, a clear poncho. And uh, you can't hear it, but he's yelling, hey, Paul, over and over again. I am curious to know if the team behind Patrick Bateman has their own business cards and what they're Ooh. printing on. Wow, oh, I see a wheel off of Strawberry. That's, that's not good. No, it doesn't appear to be moving. Um, you do want your robot to be moving. That is a goal um, that we designed toward. And it seems like, yeah, that wheel, they might be high centered now without that, uh, that second wheel. Big impact there, uh, sent them flying across the arena. They're just unable to come back from that. It does look like uh, Patrick Bateman, I mean, we're just guessing here <laughs> which one is which, but it does seem like it's uh, it's also lost the side of drive, but uh, I think they're gonna come away with the win um, after that big hit. And Patrick Bateman is coming here from Sareem Ramdio from Schenectady, New York, from the Schenectady Combat Robotics Club, of which we, I think we have five bots here today from that team, and that's awesome to see. Love it. It's great to see how big the, the teams are getting these days. Um, you know, people can get together and, and, and show up with that many robots. It's impressive. A lot of coordination. We're going to head over to cage four, while cage one still is in deliberation here. we got... All right, we have Gotham and Junkernaut. Cage one is really building up the suspense. It what, better what? be the, the, the fight of a lifetime. <laughs> or at least an interesting, you know, resolution to this situation. I think uh, they're taking the robots out of cage one. It doesn't look like that fight's going to be happening immediately. I'm seeing safety locks being put in, um, which is unfortunate. But I do want to know what happened. All right, it sounds like we do have an update from Cage One. Oh. Baby Grimm has forfeited, and Page will be moving forward. Ooh, interesting. Wow. That, they are, that means that Page is now in the bracket. Very exciting. All the way here from Brazil, and is now going to be in the, the, the final end, beginning here at prime time, where they have a chance to win a Golden Dumpster and earn a spot here in the World Championships later this year. Well, that's great for them. It's it's awesome um, to see them making the, the tournament, making the bracket, because, you know, when you fly that far, when you go that far for a competition, um, I know from experience that can be a lot of stress um, as you're trying to figure out, uh, you know, are you going to make the bracket? You know, you don't want to embarrass your country. You don't want to <laughs> go all that way for nothing. And so uh, it's great to see them uh, make it that far. All right, so now we're going to, we have that update now that Baby Grimm, uh, with with that loss is going to be going head to head with another bot that is 0 and 1 and that is Psycho. Whoever wins that one gets to live on. The other one will be going home. Wow, so Psycho is 0 and 1. I did not uh... Oh, that's that's right. So Psycho is 1 and 1. 1, and one. one but and still, one. it is uh, you know, double elimination. You yeah. will go home. Wow, that could be an earlier exit for Psycho than I think uh, people would have thought, so that'll be an exciting fight to see later on. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, Gotham, the robot in this next fight, is the one who beat Psycho. Interesting. Yeah. So this 12-pounder uh, this is uh, built by Tegan Brunello from the University of Dayton. Another university team here today. This is uh, the bot's rookie debut here at NHRL. It's their first bot. It's their first competition. And obviously, the robot is Batman-themed. <laughs> the blade is inspired by the Batarang. Nice. It's nice to see uh, universities taking combat robotics seriously these days. Um, 
you know, back in my days, uh, it was hard to convince the administration that uh, combat robots were real engineering. They are real engineering. It's great to see so many schools here um, really advancing the sport um, when they come. And, and seeing the robots these universities bring evolve over the years is also really impressive um, as they, they learn and apply uh, to the sport. And they're really driving it forward here at NHRL. <laughs> I'm hearing uh, loud noises somewhere. Sounds like something's happening in cage two. Yeah. Something just exploded in cage two. There are wheels all over the floor. IDK has blown up Woodpecker. Oh, wow. And it continues to blow up Woodpecker. IDK is a four wheel drive Peter Bar kit. Woodpecker. And it's gorgeous, and it is very destructive. <laughs> Woodpecker refuses to say no, it refuses to die. It's still moving. Can it pull out the miracle? <laughs> At this point, you just try Ow! to keep the front pointed toward the opponent. Roof shot. Oh, I can't tell which side the front even is anymore. And it seems like they're pinned up against the wall. Um, are they? They're calling for an unstick here, um, or we'll a defibrillator? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if they can keep it going. Of course, the risk you run here with the unsticks, uh, Brett, is very big, very heavy. It can uh, it can accidentally crush you when it goes for the under unstick. Um, and I'm not seeing a lot of movements uh, after that unstick. I think that's a count out. IDK is going to walk away with the knockout here. Knockout. Impressive performance. Yeah, um, Brett is less of like, you know, a a triage nurse and more of just a charging rhino. <laughs> he means well. He means well. <laughs> he means well. <laughs> All right, we're back here in cage four. There goes that battering up to speed. A little that hesitance on the... Uh... Oh, oh, wow! Oh, that is deeply oh. wet in the side armor rail. Ironically, that's exactly what a Batarang would do. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. That is wedged in there. Um, now, he, they will be able to call for the unstick here. I, um, they should call they for are ASAP. Sitting ducks in the meantime. And here it comes, Flo, with the unstick. Um, they got to be careful. They can't do that again. Um, but apparently, apparently that is an AR-600 horizontal blade. Whew. And as we all know, AR-600 is 100 better than AR-500, which is what most people commonly use. Oh, and a piece of the wedge has gone flying. There is a gaping hole in the front of that robot. Yeah, it looks like that's a, that's a PLA armor package in the front. Ooh. You can see he's trying to aim the side with armor towards the weapon. That's going to be difficult. Um, oh, oh belt wow. is on the floor. Oh, that, yeah, Gotham that's a big belt. is having trouble. Is that a drive belt? Is that the weapon belt? He seems to have lost weapon and half of drive. That has just completely turned this fight upside down. Holy rusted metal, Batman! <laughs> I can't give up that early. You got to keep going here. The fight's not over. They're not going to give up. Now, I'm not seeing a lot of movement out of Gotham here, though, and uh, this could be a K. Oh, no. I, keep, I think of the old uh, basketball chant here. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Um, you want to show aggression. You want to show control uh, for the judges. So sometimes backing off like this, waiting for the count out, 
can backfire, but uh, it does seem like they're getting the count out now. It looks like Gotham's chances of winning this match here are being Robin. Oh, that was that was pretty bad. Sorry. I did, I did like the earlier one. That was that was funny. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. <laughs> What a back and forth fight. Gotham Oof. comes out, gets stuck in the wall. You think they're done for. Yeah. Unstuck, and then they're just demolishing the opponent. And then, boom, there goes a the belt. Like three inches of that horizontal was buried deep into the side uh, rail of the cage. I didn't even know if the house bot was going to be able to unstick him. That was wild. And, uh, and those are just 12s. Um, you know, that's a lot of power uh, in these robots. Um, you don't need to be 30 pounds to have a lot of energy. Um, Five, four, oh, I'm three, hearing a countdown. Two, Another cage loaded, one, loaded in. We're, we're robots, back here in cage oh. one. The crowd is loving this fight. Amphis Bana versus Nardo. Nardo, which one is which here? So Nardo is the one with the two uh, large blue wedges on okay, the front. Okay, okay. Oh. Nardo is uh, the one who tapped out. That was fast. <laughs> the uh, minibot is stuck vertical right now. Oh, no. um, its horizontal spinner became a vertical gyro. Uh, it managed to spin down and, and uh, stop itself. That was a fast fight. I could barely get my bearings <laughs> before Amph it was over. Amphis Bena built by Alexander Richmond here from Angry Archery Robotics. And Nardo from Alex Jenkins from Ithaca, New York, uh, Combat Robotics at Cornell. Yeah, it was um, started off the neither robot was really winning the uh, the ground game, and then Amphis 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 Bana Amphis Bana Amphis Bana uh, really <laughs> immediately won. <laughs> as soon as they got under, uh, there was a tap out, and Nardo looks to be in pieces. Uh, there are remnants of it on the floor back there <laughs> as as Fluffy uh, delivers it back to the door. I like the whisker uh, defense. I don't. I wouldn't call them forks. What would you call those? Yeah. I, I guess it's a piano key wedge, a full like piano key style wedge. I like whisker. That's a fun term for it, though. We'll have to. I, uh, we'll have to Can chat we with call the team. Them, how maybe. about broom handle wedges? Broom handle wedges. I could see that. It's like a broom handle mustache. Yeah, yeah. It is a really impressive design, and it did uh, it did what it needed to do. Um, I would be interested to see how a wedge style like that could work against uh, a horizontal. Would it be able to take the hits, or would the you know the the broom bristles uh, would they end up flexing out of the way? But uh, Really nice looking design there, uh, and it really proved its worth here in this in this fight. That was quite a dominant performance. So fast match there in cage one. They're emptying out. They're making the bot safe, ready to go back upstairs, where they will continue to be worked on for what is still a whole lot of action coming your way here in our morning session leading into our final bracket, kicking off during prime time. Uh, estimated 7 and 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. Are we in standard or daylight right now? I can never remember which time of the year is which. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think that we should just uh, get rid of that entirely. We I'm should. ready. Yeah. Yeah, they almost, they almost undid it. And then they like never finished passing the law. They like half passed it. It's like the one thing we all agreed we on. And we you all just can't even. Yeah. It's because we all agree on it. Yeah, maybe. It could never happen. 
So it does sound like we have something else queued up here in cage four. Let's jump over there and take a look at what we got. Oh, anytime I see large white wheels, uh, I feel like we're gonna have a good fight. That is Mind Flare. Mind Flare. That comes from Brandon Young, Bone Dead Robotics, and it is a huge-esque style <laughs> big wheel, uh, but a weapon that you just can't define. It's, is it a vertical? Is it a horizontal? There's so many circular things spitting in different directions on that robot that it makes my, it, you know, it's kind of flaying my mind, I, I think. It's like a happening. gyroscope. Yeah. And then, of course, over in the blue corner, That's, uh, is that Psycho? It looks like Psycho. That oh, is, it's that blue, is cheese. blue cheese. I it's, got my blue robots confused. It's uh, blue side armor rails are kind of the giveaway there. And the odor. <laughs> it's the only robot here that has been meticulously aged in a cave hmm. for nine months. Will we have a blue cheese candle? next to the lipo candle i'm ready i'm ready for a whole lineup i yeah. think that you and i could probably come up with a dozen cents uh, yeah. b before the end of our time yeah. together here at the desk i think that's a good challenge we've got two so we just need about 10 more yeah a hot poke a hot poke oh a scent. hot poke sense that's gonna be a top seller i hear the count in we're about to here get started we go. here it just it doesn't make any sense you know, Mind Flayer's just entire, like, movements is w messing well, it, with it. It's a Mind Flayer. It gets into your head, and there goes its weapon. Oh, and now, no. <laughs> and now it is just big wheel fun. That's not what you want to see. And now it has stopped. Um, is this a tap out, or is this a, like, an electronic failure? Uh, it does seem to be over. Blue Cheese somehow held on to its weapon. <laughs> Not you know, traditionally I, the story of Blue Cheese. I didn't think Blue Cheese was such a structural material, but it held up well in that fight. I don't know. Blue Cheese binds me up for days, Adam. <laughs> We're going to hop over to Cage 1, uh, and this is... Um, oh, boy. Was it Max? Uh, That's Maximizer. Maximizer. Wow. Look how long that robot is. That is as thaggy as it gets. <laughs> it's an elongated, horizontal, uh, great front wedge. Fantastic. One of my favorite styles of bots. I like that style bot, and I love the exact opposite, which is like a Clyde style, like a wide style bot. Um, I'm a big fan of anything with weird proportions, you know? Really wide, really long, really flat, really tall. Um, I think that's why I like dachshunds. You know, the dog, they're just long, short legs. It's funny. There's a trend I'm seeing in my, in my preferences here. I don't know. It's like a dachshund robot. Long, tiny wheels. I like it. It's an interesting robot. You know, the defense um, when you're driving against a robot like that is is really hard. It, it kind of took Tombstone and Ray Billings' strategy um, to the extreme. You know, if you, if you listen to how he drives, he'll Five, often kind of four, expose his wheel on three, purpose and then spin two, around and hit people one, from the side. And then right, that's, that's the whole uh, idea behind Maximizer wow. is it comes at you with this wedge and then flings around and hits you. How do you drive against that? How do you defend? Uh, where do you aim? And there you uh, see up in the pink corner, that's that's Jake Hoffman kind of lurching over the corner. He's dialed into this yeah. fight. You can see Radon is just getting hit after hit after hit directly in the side, and that's not where it wants to be hit. But aiming that drum is difficult when you have Maximizer flailing around. Um, it looks uncontrolled, but it's extremely controlled, and he's hitting exactly where he wants to every time. Radon is here from with Aiden Regenberg from the University of Dayton, and that is a super compact robot. And it's one of the first 12-pound robots that the University of Dayton's uh, Redline Robotics has built for this competition.
And what a test uh, they have right here in Maximizer and Jake Hoffman. Yeah, and I'm hearing uh, Jake's mom is here today, so he's got a little bit of extra incentive uh, to win today, a little bit of extra cheering in his corner. Um, and it looks like he's going to take home the victory in this fight. Also, someone here to give him a warm jacket if he needs it. <laughs> Radon not giving up, asking for the unstick, it tap seems out. like. And, and then they're going to tap, tap out. out. Really well-driven, well-executed fight by Maximizer. Uh, you know, when you go up against these non-traditional designs, it's just really hard uh, to aim properly. I mean, you could see Maximizer taking advantage of, you know, driving this style. He, he drives that style in every fight. His opponents go up against it rarely. So he can use his experience uh, against them, and he just gets hit after hit after hit in the side. Um, and what a good design and what a good uh, driving execution there. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And we're going to jump over to cage two here where we have the Angry Duckling built by Ben five, Dowers from four, Belmont, Massachusetts. Three, it's a 14-year-old. One, fight, robots, fight. And it is like a two-wheel drive version of Duck. Yeah. Interestingly enough, Hal Rucker, the builder of Duck, is here in the house tonight. Yeah, not only is uh, Hal Rucker, the builder of Duck, in the building tonight, uh, but Duck is in the building as well. Um, so we've got uh, we've got them both here. Yeah, I think we have like the 2021 version of Duck mm -hmm. here in our Bot Museum at NHRL. If you if you love the heavyweight robots out there, you can come to our museum, see them up close. Duck is currently in the museum with its top armor plate off, and you can see the absolutely brilliant engineering that went into that bot. And here we see a hey. two-wheel drive, smaller version. Built by a 14-year-old. Angry Duckling here, I think, so far, has been doing Duck pretty proud. You know, it's taken the hits, and it still has its top plate on. Uh, and it's doing, it's hanging in there. It's had some good control, some good lifts. Um, you know, Choose Kindness coming back here strong in the second half of this fight. Um, but Choose. Angry Duckling's still in it. Yeah, Choose Kindness here, built by Lulu, Lance, uh, Lulu Nance, I'm sorry, from New York, New York. Hewitt Robotics. April 2024, true rookie, first bot, first competition. Yeah, I will say it doesn't seem to be choosing kindness here. No, uh, no, it seems to be choosing violence. Violence. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, the opposite of kindness, actually. Now that I think about it. Well, you can kill it with kindness. <laughs> The angry duckling, for oh. its part, does seem very angry about oh, this current entanglement. Yeah, look at that. It looks like part of that armor package it, it, on duckling has frayed and yeah. got sucked into the weapon of choose kindness. It looks like strands of 3D print filament have, like, delaminated and gotten stuck on the teeth of uh, choose kindness uh, weapon. That's really weird. I've never seen something <laughs> like that before. Quite odd. I wonder if we can get a tighter shot of that. Maybe we have a handheld somewhere cage side. You can see what's yeah. happening. Oh, it yeah. looks like we're actually going to get in there. They're coming in for a manual unstick here. Uh, Brett was unable to unstick them. Um, so if this was a situation where a robot was stuck against the oh, wall. Oh, wow. Look at we, that. <laughs> wow. Now you see Nick. Uh, is that a our, our ref? Is, is that and really just the three? What is weird? And our house Beetlejuice impersonator. Look at that. Like you're, you're better off with a pair of gardening shears. Yeah, it really seems like a layer of the print has delaminated That's and it's just wound itself around the weapon. I, you almost need to cut it off. I mean, this is unintentional entanglement, if that's indeed what happened. It's like a Lady in the Tramp situation um, going on here. You know, I <laughs> look at that stretch. Uh, is it a tape exterior, maybe? I don't know. Oh, it does almost look like a Teflon or some yes. sort of taped exterior. Um, now that I look at it more, I can't tell. Could be anything. That's exactly what it looks like, is like some kind of Teflon tape. That was interesting. 
Well, since they were stuck against each other, they do get the manual unstick there. Um, versus being stuck against the wall, they, they wouldn't have gotten a manual unstick uh, as a solo bot. But now they'll be unstick. We'll resume the fight, and we'll see. It looks like Angry Duckling was having mobility issues there toward the end. Um, but we'll see if Choose Kindness can spin up after that. That, um, whatever that was, wound up around the weapon. Here we hear the count back in. Oh, and, and yeah, they, both, they're both looking good. Both mobile. <laughs> Ironically, you know, that, that, that whatever that was is still there, so Choose Kindness is going to have to be careful not to ingest it. It's got to be very intimidating to build a duck-inspired bot and then find out that the builder of duck is here <laughs> watching you. It's got to be exciting, though. Um, you know, you build a robot and then the builder's there. You can you can show them and you know we. I was chatting with Hal earlier and, and the builder of Angry Ducklings. Uh, you know, one of their parents walked by and said, "Hey, my kid's here." built Angry Duckling, like, can you stop by? So I think Hal's going to try and stop by later if he gets a chance, and I'm sure they'll, they'll be really excited about that. Um, you know, unfortunately, Angry Duckling not going to be able to take away the win here, but um, it was doing a pretty good duck impression, I think, for most of that fight. It's a very interesting, yeah. you know, defensive style bot. The, uh, that front plow design works very similar to how, you know, later Duck worked. And I, I think it's, it's, it's really phenomenal coming from a 14-year-old builder. Awesome stuff. Yeah. Yeah, impressive work. And, and uh, I mean, it seems to be a completely custom robot here. I, I don't believe that's a, that's a kit. Um, you know, building all that, that takes a lot of, takes a lot of work. So, Adam, this is very exciting. Oh, okay. We, we had a bot, uh, a couple of bots queued up in cage four, but it sounds like there might be an early tamp out there. Oh. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, and <laughs> in, in that match was uh, Killer Whale, which, um, you know, is the, the new concept uh, bot built by William Marchese, which is the, um, uh, you know, I guess it's like some kind of articulating horizontal spinner that we we heard a lot about, but we haven't got to see yet, I don't think. Or at least I didn't. I haven't been at the desk. Oh, was that, I think I did see that earlier um, end up in like a pile of flames, unless that was a different one. I, that is, <laughs> I, I miss all the best yeah. things. I did see an articulating horizontal spinner uh, smoldering in an earlier fight, but I don't remember who it was. I'm hearing it was a different robot that was an articulating horizontal spinner on fire. Oh, really? Uh, Killer Whale has fought before, but, but was not smoldering earlier today. That was uh, someone else. You know, as we make our way through the, the early stages of these tournaments, it's, there's so many fights happening at all times, it's, it's impossible to catch everything. Uh, it's not until we get to our primetime coverage where you get to see every single fight we drill you down yes. into because it's the best of the best. And someone from that bracket is going to be taking a golden dumpster home in every category. And a handful of people are going to be making their way to the world championships later this year. We have a lot of cages here, a lot of fights, a lot of things happening all at once. Um, and we can't see every fight, <laughs> unfortunately. But when we get to prime time, uh, we narrow it down, and then, yeah, we'll be able to show every single hit, uh, and it'll be great. Now, inside one of our cages here, you get an exclusive peek inside of one of our house bots. I believe that this is Fluffy. And there you can see the fire extinguisher mechanism that is actually built into the front of these large house bots, which sometimes, Things get a little spicy here at NHRL. <laughs> uh, flames sometimes happen intentionally and sometimes not intentionally. And so we have our house bots here who are able to step in and, you know, perform emergency fire maintenance. Yeah. The house robots are an interesting part of, of NHRL that's a lot different from a lot of other competitions. You know, they don't uh, directly involve themselves in the fights, uh, sort of unless requested 
by the competitors. Or if you really um, agitate them. <laughs> yes, or if you really agitate them. Uh, they're allowed to fight back. Um, but, you know, they don't have weapons. They're much bigger. They're much heavier than you. Uh, but there's an interesting dynamic where you, you know, you know that you get one unstick uh, per fight uh, as long as they can. Um, so, you know, a lot of times when I'm fighting with uh, knockoff white, we'll try to just get people stuck and use up that one unstick. Uh, it's interesting that, you know, it takes up a corner of the arena. Yeah. Uh, you can almost get, you can get people stuck on it, uh, which we did last time with Emulsifier. Uh. <laughs> having, having been here, you know, in, in Norwalk and seeing how the house bots have evolved over a handful of years, I'll actually, I'll show you right here. I have the prototype <laughs> of the original house bot here underneath the desk. So it used to be this with uh, two basically roller skate wheels on it, uh, two power roller skate wheels. It had a spray paint job on it to make it look like a face. This used to be our house bot. <laughs> I don't think this is going to unstick anybody. <laughs> We're going to hop over now to cage two, where we have two bots loaded in. That looks like Galaxy Defender, built by Alyssa <laughs> Robbins from is, the Schenectady Combat Robotics Club. What is Brett doing here? Just shoving people into their corners. Get back. Sometimes our house bots, especially Brett, has to move things along. We've got a lot of fights to get through here today. Now up against Galaxy Defender. Uh, so this is one of uh, many Five, robots from four, the Schenectady three, Robotics Club. Two, um, one, and fight! Captain robots fight! So, so that's NHRL has really great multi-bot rules. Um, you get more weight to play with if you have more than one robot in the arena. And that's why you'll see robots like Galaxy Destroyer come out with two seemingly very large robots. <laughs> Now, VLOOKUP. VLOOKUP? I think that's some sort of programming joke. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it VLOOKUP, because <laughs> I get to do whatever I want here. I think someone's trying to mess with our database with that name. That's, that um, is probably the intention. Didn't we say we were having some issues earlier today? Was it, was it VLOOKUP's fault? I don't know. But everything's running smoothly now. Now, Lookup is built here by Esme Abbott from Needham, Massachusetts. Now, and Galaxy Destroyers, half of their robot seems to be incapacitated. If this goes to the judges, that could really hurt them. Um, the other half, however, not moving very well either. We got some weapon to weapon hit! Oh, I think I'm hearing something spin down. Oh, and some grinding. Looks like we got a cold unstick here. Now you get one of those um, per robot. If they get stuck together, that's not going to count uh, towards your individual. Oh, what that is not how you want to fall down, um, but they're still getting a little bit of help here. Okay, and they're running again. Al uh, 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 Adam, what do you think that loop is that we see kind of on the front? It seems like a little bit of a keep away stick. They're, they're trying to maybe, I don't know if, did it start out that bit? <laughs> Um, you know, sometimes you'll see people do that. They don't want the opponent's weapon to be able to reach them. But it's a double-edged sword because, as you can see now, their weapon can't really reach the opponent's. Um, so, oh, oh, boy, and it looks like we have a fork stuck under the side rail Ooh. on a bot that has already gotten its one unstick, and that is a tough place to be in with 30 seconds I left in the match. could be high centered, uh, twitching, knockout. and that's going to be a knockout. Oh, that's tough. That is tough. Like I was saying, you know, you get one unstick from the house robot, but you don't get two. So if you can get your opponent stuck twice, 
that is how you can get a knockout here. You don't always need to completely destroy them if you can get them stuck a couple times. That has got to hurt. Um, you've got your opponent upside down, struggling to be able to contact you, and you just get stuck against the side of the arena a couple times. But And I guess that means that, means that Galaxy Destroyer is eliminated from the competition. Oof. A tough way uh, to go out, but some good uh, driving there by, uh, by Vlookup um, to get that win, uh, come back uh, from being stuck upside down and, and pull it out. And VLOOKUP, or VLOOKUP, depending on <laughs> where you're from, uh, moves on to the bracket. It's a regional dialect difference, I think, between, that is, that is correct. between the two. Right. It's like aluminum and aluminum. Yeah. from the Latin look is the, is the root, I believe. We're going to jump over to cage one. We have two bots loaded in. I see Herbie 4.0 there from Nate Petrella from Cortland, New York, SUNY Polytechnic Institute. And we've got these computers here to look up things and it's a Mac, and I'm a PC person, and I keep trying to hit Control-F, but I have to hit Command-F. So we just had VLOOKUP. Let me ask you, what's your, <laughs> what, what is your favorite? I need a VLOOKUP. What is your favorite Excel spreadsheet command? Some. Some. It's obviously. Just a go-to. Man, you know. people think that you're brilliant sometimes. You just equals some. Yeah, some. Wow, how do you do that? Yeah. Yeah, I like the <laughs> highlighter tool. I like just making the boxes look nice. Yeah. Where's spare parts? Loves, uh, we have a signage station here at NHRL, and uh, we task the folks out here that, that come in to spectate, make something fun, support your teams, and uh, it's usually the kids that come up with the most creative things uh, that, that I've seen thus far. I have a few of those signs still at home. For some reason, they like my robots that are generally made out of garbage. <laughs> I feel like the less effort I put into the robots, the more fan support it gets. You know, you, you put a block of foam in the arena, you write foam bot on top, you get a whole section cheering for you. Now, I'm curious here, who is uh, up against Herbie 4.0? Who's there over in the opposite corner? That looks like this a little is, bite force this going is on This is Battle right here. Tots. That is Battle yeah, Tots, and that's, yeah. Um, that's Same Force, and I believe uh, Haymaker um, is, the, is the other. Now, I do know they were going back and forth on the name. Um, Five, four, three. I think they were two, talking about maybe Uppy. One. Fight, but robots they, they might have gone fight. With Haymaker. I'm unsure where they settled. Well, Herbie 4.0 certainly has an uphill battle here. <laughs> I am a big fan of multibots here at NHRL with the weight bonus rules. Um, I think they are huge fun to watch. Maybe a little confusing sometimes with so many robots in the arena. But Battletop's coming out strong here. Herbie looks to be immobile. And that's going to be a tap out. Battle Tots with the uh, same force and Haymaker are going to get the tap out victory. Impressive performance here. They're going to leave the arena mostly unscathed, although uh, Haymaker having a little bit of difficulty getting back to the door. I'm going to go over to Cage 2. I think this is a Who Cares and Drop Top. Who cares? Who cares? Welcome. Welcome to the booth. Thanks, Adam. How you doing? I'm good. Yeah. I'm. Uh, this has been a really good, fun day so far. It's exciting. Yeah. You know, a new format, a new layout. I, We're sitting on a different side of the room. Yeah, yeah, I know. We have a really, I mean, I wish everybody had the view that we had right now. Um, but it feels amazing because there are, 
uh, bleachers on either side of us. The energy is palpable. Um, this is really cool. I'm really into this Havoc Bowl, and not just because it's yeah. 420. Yeah. Unveiling the bowl on 420. You know, <laughs> happy 420 to those who celebrate. <laughs> and uh, But what what an arena feel we have here. We're surrounded by fans, and the sound is just echoing in oh, in yeah. the chamber when you he when the cheering happens now i mean you can hear it all across the building when that crc team <laughs> is in the stands you feel like you are at yankee stadium yeah. it's game seven of the yeah. world series Five, and you're playing four, uh three, you know yeah. the astros two, or, or you know like a good one, stadium for a good team okay Adam, i think we're go <laughs> about to have our first fight <laughs> And there's also a fight in cage two. Wow. So a giant ring spinner looks like a, maybe a shuffling ring spinner, spinner here from Drop Top. Um, who cares? Doesn't know what to do with it. Um, but the spinner has, oh, it looks like it's a little jammed. Yeah, one hit. Looks like it really impacted Drop Top now there. Now that's the tough thing with these ring spinners is if they go out of flat, then they're not going to spin anymore. And keeping a ring flat inside of a combat arena is hard. Drop Top, um, not driving too well here, but is still able to spin, is still able to drive. Um, and they're going to get, they're getting some control points here. Um, drop top is going to have issues if they can't get yeah. spun up. I will say those shufflers within drop top are mesmerizing to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do love a shuffler. Um, anything that doesn't have wheels. Straight to straight to my heart. Um, <laughs> you know, you're just fighting physics when when you build that robot like that, and it's fun to watch. I mean, you know, building a combat robot hard enough. Why not just add, uh, you know, some strange, barely tested locomotion <laughs> yeah. in there? Why don't I just make my entire robot vibrate? That's gonna. You're on really, to something. It's gonna there. make the electrons flow better. You know. <laughs> Who cares? Really great control here. Um, everything still mostly working. It does seem like they're having a right side drive problem. Uh, so, you know, Drop Top does have some hope if they can last here. You know, if, if they can get Who Cares stuck, uh, if they could lose the other side of drive, Drop Top can pull this out. Uh, who Cares is not looking as dominant as you'd like after taking out... Um, who cares isn't looking dominant after taking out Drop Top's weapon. What do you think Who Cares says when they lose uh, one side <laughs> of their drive? <laughs> who cares? I think they say, I'm very <laughs> concerned about this. <laughs> They're still able to bring some control to this. Uh, their design with that, you know, not as wide as a Clyde or a fully defined, but still wide enough to really yeah. just dominate them even without full control of their drive. Yeah, a nice wide robot is going to be hard to get around. Um, you know, it's got good proportions. It's fairly square overall in the outside perimeter, but uh, it's it's nice. It's just, you know, when if I'm looking at a fight, I would like to see more from who cares. Yeah. You've got your opponent on the ropes here, and you're unable to take advantage. And that weapon is going. It just seems like they either don't have the reach or... It doesn't have a lot of momentum behind yeah. it. It seems like it's got some small teeth extending from the hub, and it just doesn't have a ton of the power. You know, it, it doesn't seem like either team is super happy with that fight. Um, I think it's it's going to go to who cares in, at the end. Um, yeah, it looks like this one is going to the judges. I don't think there was a tap out there yeah. or, or anything. But, uh, well, the judges will have a tough one with that because I think that both <laughs> it, bots are kind of on equal footing yeah, there. It was hard. You know, it came out, and you see this ring spinner spinning up to speed, gets a couple big hits, and then the, the ring stops, but the opponent's drive is, is kind of iffy uh, and not, isn't able to take advantage of it. So it could go either way. I think I would probably go with who cares. But I think so, too. It was I close. So. I think uh, they will care when that judge's decision comes in. Am I right? <laughs> I, I wonder. Maybe, maybe they're coming in and they're just like, whatever, man. You know, hey, who cares? You know, maybe that's their vibe. I didn't get to meet that team. Uh, I don't know. Is it an ironic name? Is it? Who cares? It is 420. <laughs> who cares? 
Um, well, welcome back. If you are just joining us, we are uh, working our way through the qualifying rounds here at NHRL. Uh, we are here through the afternoon into the evening, and then at 7 p.m. we will be starting prime time, which is really when it's the end of, towards the end of the competition, the creme de la creme of the robots of the day, fighting it out for that coveted golden dumpster where they win a cash prize and a pretty neat little trophy. So yeah. stick around. We got a lot coming up. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, we're having a lot of fun here in the qualifying rounds uh, leading up to prime time, but prime time is uh, we've whittled down uh, to the, the robots that are reliable, the robots that are able to dish out the hits, and that's when all the big hitters are going to be going against each other. So come back at, at 7 p.m. Eastern for that, but stick around in the meantime for all the weirdness that leads <laughs> yes. up to prime time uh, <laughs> where you never know what's going to happen. We have good fights, Adam. We have havoc challenges, and uh, there's just uh, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but coming up in prime time, there's a pretty big robot that's uh, going to make its presence known. I've been hearing about this, and no one has told me what it what it is yet. I know it's very big. It is very big. Uh, it's related to to paws uh, of some sort. Uh, it's a big surprise. You're leaving me in suspense. Yeah, I think. Um, you know, I'm, I'm friends with the builders behind this, and they kept a secret from me. So this is something that is tightly sealed okay. in an envelope somewhere. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think um, I think everybody's going to really enjoy it. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to, you know, tease it too much, but uh, if you miss it, you will regret it for the rest of your life. Mm. Okay, well. It's a guarantee. I'm going to make sure not to miss it. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be in the bathroom for that. Let's take a look at the Fight Club area, Adam. Yeah, what's up over there? Ooh. We have got fights going on in other cages. Uh, you know, not all of them um, are able to be shown here on the live stream, but uh, we have fights happening simultaneously out in the Fight Club area. Um, and uh, it's pretty cool. You can really get up close. I, I, I wouldn't say you can put your nose against the Lexan or anything, but just about. I mean, you can feel the impact there. You can really um, get a, a true sense of, like, the carnage. Yeah, we've had a packed house uh, all day today. Um, it's a really great atmosphere, as we're mentioning. You know, where we're sitting, we've got this bowl atmosphere of yeah. the stands, a real arena feel around uh, the two main cages. But in the rest of the area, you can walk right up. You can walk right up to the beetle cages. You can walk right up to the second big cage yeah. um, and see these fights up close and personal. Um, which is just awesome. You're not going to get that anywhere else. And there's also a free claw machine over there, yes. which I have a lot of fun playing. And skee-ball, yeah. which I, I think is still here. I don't think they got rid of the skee-ball machine. They but, still uh, got skee-ball. Yeah, that's yeah. my personal favorite. <laughs> uh, other than what happens in cage two, <laughs> which is what we're going to find out right now. Colonel Panic versus... Uh, Dicky Bots? Uh, uh, D Dinky Bots. Dinky Bots. Which you'd think, like, with a name like that, it'd have Five, tiny little hits, four, but it hits pretty three, hard. Two, one. Fight. Robots fight. Wow. Colonel Panic doing just circles around Dinky Bot there, uh, which is uh, Dinky Bot from Team Cybears. Dinky Bot is uh, quite large. Yes. A little wider than maybe your average <laughs> uh, finger tech. It's not very dinky no. uh, compared to Colonel Panic here. I Colonel to... Panic, very interesting looking um, wheels Oof. there. They look like cleat wheels having, uh, you know, almost too much traction, flicking, flipping himself over in, into the wall. Um, this would be a tricky unstick for the house robot Brett here. It has um, uh, quickly found a way to oh, do the thing. It flipped back. <laughs> it was on its wheels and then right back over upside down. Um, I look. It looks like I see a... Ooh. Oh. Dinky, Dinky Bot, Bot trying to help out, uh, but got to watch out because, uh, you know, Brett doesn't care. Uh, it's it's going to get in there. There oh, we go. Back on their feet. Looks like the weapon's still active, the uh, drive's still going, so 
No worse for wear after that little mix up. <laughs> Not gonna look too good for the judges getting stuck no. for that long, um, but you can see these cleat wheels on Colonel Pan catching every so often, and it accelerates wildly across the arena <laughs> when they do. These cleat wheels are almost like uh, saw blades that, that can dig into the, uh, the, the plywood floor of the arena. Well, you know, if they if they go through enough weapons in any given competition, they can just use their wheel <laughs> just and the put wheel it up. It, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is unfortunate. <gasps> Colonel Panic seems oh. to be stuck again. Of course, we saw this earlier. You only get one unstick. Brett moving out of the way. Well, um, Dinky Bot saved them. I don't think so. No, I mean, usually you're just going to take the win in these situations. It's a long no. day. Um, you want to get to the tournament. Now, when you have a robot like uh, Colonel Good close Panic up on those or, wheels there. Yeah, like that. You really, when you're designing, like you have to kind of almost plan for Murphy's Law. Whatever the worst thing that can happen, the worst position for your robot to happen <laughs> will happen. <laughs> so like how do you get out yeah. of that situation? How do you plan against doing the thing? And I have a feeling that Colonel Panic is going to take a look at the drawing yeah. board after this and figure out how do I avoid that from happening again. Yeah, I mean, you, you might see some hoops of shame, yeah. uh, you know, in their next fight uh, as you try to prevent those those positions. A hoop of shame being, of course, a you know, a small loop of UHMW plastic or something that you just kind of screw into your robot that, that can help it bounce in, into the correct orientation. Yeah. You'll see them a lot of times on, on horizontal blade spinners that, that can't be inverted. They'll have, a, they'll have a large hoop that can help them roll back onto their wheels. Um, but yeah, if there's a position where your robot can get and you don't want it to be in that position, it's going to happen. It's, 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 it's the law. It's, it's probably going to immediately happen. <laughs> um, all right, Adam, I have some news for you. Oh. We have Megatron getting ready to load oh, in. Oh. And you have quite the history with Jameson Go and Megatron. Do you want to speak to that, <laughs> especially, uh, you know, as a member of Team uh, Emulsifier? Yeah, so, um, of course, I've, I've uh, been teammates with Matt for a long time. Matt's the captain of Emulsifier, and, and uh, we've been fighting Jameson a lot. <laughs> a lot, we have a, a lot. <laughs> a year's uh, old rivalry spanning multiple different competitions. Uh, we tend to meet in the finals a lot, and uh, Jameson and Megatron are very very, very tough yeah. competition. Um, of course, here at NHRL, the 30-pound, um, you know, world champs were um, Megatron and then Emulsifier, Emulsifier. So, you know, it, it's uh, quite a, a rivalry. Um, and if you look at Megatron uh, these days, it looks a little <laughs> bit more like Emulsifier. Mm, interesting. Um, and, you know, I, I got to say I like it. I like the look. Yeah, it looks good. I think, you know, Jameson above all, I think, doesn't like to lose to the same robot twice. And so the fact that, you know, he has now lost to Emulsifier in the championships twice in a row, he is going to be out for blood. <laughs> I mean, I, what, so what do you think about this switch to treads and, and maybe some other things he might have up his sleeve to kind of combat the the record he has now against yeah, Well, player. obviously, I like any robot without wheels. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a big fan of the treads. Uh, what they enable you to do is, is kind of get the center of gravity over a drive surface instead of, uh, you know, fighting against that. With Emulsifier, we used it to pull our drive surface more forwards. Mm. Um, and what Megatron's doing is pulling it a little more back. So yeah. Megatron, of course, most of the fight's going to drive with their disc hanging off the back. I was talking with Jameson earlier. What this enables him to do is actually lift that disc up off the ground. It's not going to run on the ground anymore uh, in that back configuration. And now all that weight that was just dragging behind is giving him extra traction on those treads. Mm. So he's going to have a lot more drive power, which is scary, That's scary. To think <laughs> because he's known for having a lot of pushing power, being yeah. a tremendous control robot, and Jab he's going to be probably about 50% more powerful in drive. <laughs> Uh, from Ooh. reconfiguring that center of gravity. That is not an insignificant amount no. increase it's, in drive power. It's going to be quite something, uh, I think. It, it should be impressive. I'm really excited yeah. to see it. I, we were also talking um, 
You know, this is V4.5 of Megatron. Mm. Uh, and he said V5 is going to have even more changes. Uh, oh, he wouldn't wow. tell me what they were, but uh, I have an something. Idea. Maybe if you tell him what your ma secret material is made <laughs> out of, he'll tell you about uh, the changes we he has We can trade, uh, yeah. trade secrets. Uh, and um, yeah, so the other, one of the other big changes here, maybe less noticeable, uh, but Megatron, of course, uh, with the articulating arm and a spinner at the end, has historically used a series of belts to get power out to the weapon head. What he's doing now is he's running the weapon with a hub motor. Yes. And that is uncommon in the 30-pound weight class. In the featherweights, you're not usually seeing hub motors on vertical spinners or horizontal spinners. They just can't take that level mm. of punishment. Uh, will he be able to solve that uh, in this version? Now, Megatron's pretty interesting in that most spinners are designed to go spinner to spinner. Right. Megatron isn't really designed to go spinner to spinner. It goes spinners to top plate. <laughs> And Speaking so, of. can he get the hub motor uh, working in this weight class? I hope we're about to find out because it looks like yeah. they are loading into the cage right now. Uh, and I see Tamara there you, uh, from Team Milk Tank. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the matchup that she would ideally <laughs> hope for. I mean, I don't. <laughs> I don't know how many people hope to go up against no. Megatron. I mean, <laughs> we really enjoy going up against Megatron, you know, in the finals. Yeah. It's a nice place to go up against One Megatron. One time. Yeah, You once. know, yeah, minimize just, the yeah. uh, exposure there. Yeah. Um, you know, it, going back to the history of, of Megatron and Emulsifier, I, I think uh, losing definitely gives you a, a drive. Uh, you know, you mentioned losing twice to a robot two years in a row. We, the first year that Megatron won, we actually lost to Megatron two fights in a row. Yeah. Uh, in the championship fight, we were coming out of the winner's bracket, and back then, um, the winner would have to lose twice in the finals oh, yeah. uh, to the winner coming out, the champion of the loser's bracket, and then we lost twice in a row uh, at about two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and that gave us, you know, quite the drive to have that not happen again the next year. Um, and so Emulsifier has had a great couple years. Uh, we had a great tournament earlier uh, this year. And Megatron now coming out. Uh, it looks crazy. Yeah. I mean, the treads sticking out the back are, they just feel so aggressive. To, they're scary. Yeah. Like, I Oh, this is a thing of beauty. And I'm not just talking about Vodka Tank. <laughs> Megatron <laughs> really looks incredible here. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I mean, Vodka Tank has a lot of surface area on the top. Vodka Tank is big and square and flat. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I also fight with Knock Off White our, our, and the Shatter overhead hammer robots. And Vodka Tank is definitely... Oh, a sort dream of come true. The shape of robot that <laughs> I like to fight, but they're no uh, they're no slouch. You know they've no. been to a lot of competitions. They know uh, what they're doing, and anything can happen here in the preliminary rounds. Uh, you know, JMO told me that he's pretty sure that hub motor is going to explode. <laughs> really? Okay. So uh, we'll see. If Vodka um, Tank explodes the hub motor in Megatron, I don't know what I will do. I will lose my mind <laughs> right here at the desk. I think this is going to be a pretty exciting fight. One way or the other. Yeah. Some excitement should happen. <laughs> Something big is going to happen. Um, I'm like gripping the desk here. And wow. we see uh, Jameson there with his right-hand man, Aaron Fan, who uh, we have seen with Pensive for Judo, um, Tale of Three Hams. So, you know, they are no strangers to working uh, with each other. Uh, very excited to see what they come up with here. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Adam, here we go. <laughs> Megatron coming out immediately, winning the ground game. Oh, oh, wow. The hub motor still spinning after hit number one. That's a good sign. Still spinning after hit number two, and Vakatank still moving. Megatron's gotten the mini bot from Vakatank. 
Megatron really just bringing it to that multi-boss there. Relentless aggression from Megatron here. It's driving great. It really is. Those treads are giving it remarkable traction. Hard to tell if it's driving better as it's always driven very well. True. <laughs> Vagatank seems to be on the retreat, trying to help out its mini bot here. <laughs> I think that multi bot there is, uh, has seen better days, <laughs> and now he's bringing it to the main oh. bot. Oh, wow. Whatever armor is on Vagatank <laughs> is taking those hits pretty well. They seem to be stuck on the wall now. They're going to get their one unstick of the match. Tamara and, and the whole team behind Milk Tank has come so far that they're even lasting a minute and uh, 15 seconds here against Megatron yeah, is remarkable. They're still driving around. Uh, you know, this is, it's hard to take that many hits, but Megatron is not going through that top pin. Oh, now we hear it really getting it. Oh, oh Adam! What? Uh, that, that was impressive. <laughs> you don't see... That happened to Jameson too often. He's careful about spinning that weapon up for precisely that reason. Those sorts of gyroscopic forces that can happen. So quite a move by Vakatank there to get Megatron a, a little uh, off their game. For real. It, are they getting into Jamo's head? I mean, I will say it took a pretty big hit <laughs> against the corner. Hub motor still going strong. Yeah. Megatron still looks 100% operational here. Vakatank driving around but has lost their main weapon. I can see a belt hanging out there after that hit. Yeah, that um, weapon's done. Vakatank also has lost uh, the second half of their uh, robots. So it's not looking good for the judge's decision right now for Vakatank. They're gonna have to pull out a miracle here. It's Mega interesting, though, that the reach on Megatron, it keeps landing into the weapon. It's not been able to really get around the side of it and to the top armor all that often that we've seen. The top armor is really holding up. Yeah. There we go. Now he's going to give it a try. And it's holding up so well. What is this mystery material? I'm going to have to ask them because I want some of it. But you maybe might have they to won't trade tell me. Secrets maybe again. it's mill spec. <laughs> <laughs> now, I believe that this is going to the judges, which is wow. a feat within itself yeah. for Vakatang. I think I know how this is going to come out, yeah. but anybody who can make it to the judges against Megatron is impressive. And an all-new Megatron that's working at 100%, yeah. you know, it wasn't like Megatron came out and, and stumbled. You know, they took hit after hit after hit and kept going. It's almost like Vakatank, you replace the belt. You might be good to go. Vakatank, very tank-like. Yeah. Lives up to its name. <laughs> Megatron trying to help out the second half of Vaka Tank over there. <laughs> Seems that to be impregnated in the wall, uh, embedded in there. <laughs> that was a really dominant performance there for Megatron. I mean, that was... I, I think that went as well as probably Jameson could have hoped, aside from, you know, a, a five-second knockout. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, he... he was able to put it up to a lot of testing. Yeah. Um, you know, not only against Vakatink, but also uh, some friendly fire <laughs> against the corner rail there. And it, it didn't look like it even phased the hub motor or any part of the robot. Yeah, I mean, you come out with an all-new design like that, you want to test it. And they got three minutes of back-and-forth oh, yeah. action um, to test the weapon, to test the drive. You know, so many full force hits of the weapon um, and three minutes of hard drive time on those belts, you know, that, that really helps you figure out how much it can take. You know, maybe they could turn it up a little bit. After yeah. Fight like that. Um, Crank it to 11. Yeah. That uh, spinorama in the corner there where Vakatank, like, kind of pirouetted a little bit and, and Megatron uh, reacted a little bit too fast while their weapon was fully spun up, but did a... a full flip that was pretty <laughs> wild i would love to see that in slow-mo yeah i don't think uh i think that caught uh maybe everyone by surprise yeah. when that happened if i was standing in the corner like watching that i think i might have needed to uh you know uh excuse myself <laughs> for a few minutes <laughs> and uh recompose myself because that would have been terrifying yeah 
Yeah, so um, what it seems like is that Megatron has more, re more mobility, and if that hub motor can hold up, more reliability without having exposed belts. And that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> That is scary. Um, I love seeing this scene right here because it, it really, um, it encapsulates like so much of what is fantastic about this community. Um, we have people with all kinds of different experiences. Tamara, who, you know, this is not what she does by trade, um, but she has a lot of fun. She's been at it for years now learning. And then on the other hand is, you know, Jameson Go and Aaron Fan. But it looked like we also saw Johnny Sumpas there helping out Milk Tank, or uh, I should say Vodka Tank. Um, and he has looked up to Jameson Go for so many years. And like just the fact that you can be a young person or, or any person and come here and fight against your heroes and fight against the people who probably inspired you to get into the sport in the first place. I mean, I'm a, I'm a softie, but it like, it really, it just touches my soul yeah. and I love, I love seeing it. Yeah. I mean, one of the greatest things about the sport is coming and, and fighting against the people who inspired you to, to start, you know, and, and it's, it's awesome to see everyone coming together, everyone yeah. having a good time. And if you come enough, if you iterate enough, then you can compete. You can't, you don't just get a chance to, to go up against them, but you get a chance to really compete and, and win. And you see all the time, uh, the next generation coming and, and beating their, yeah. their idols here. And, uh, that's awesome too. There was, um, a really sweet story that I think came out of last month's event or, you know, a couple, um, weeks ago. Um, Mr. Roper, uh, from Mark Rennie is a 30 pound robot. And there was a child who went on a, I think a VIP tour and was so excited to see Mr. Roper. <laughs> and Mark said, um, to the kid, like, Hey, go get a kit bot and come fight. And I, if I'm not mistaken, the kid is here this month with a kit bot because they are inspired. But the funny thing about it is that, um, you know, the, the driver, the builder of uh, Mr. Roper is here because he was inspired by Tom Farkas and Positively Hysterical. And so like the cycle and, and, and just how it like perpetuates itself is so yeah. amazing. It's like inspiration all the way yeah, down. Yeah, all the way yeah. down. <laughs> I love it, I yeah. love it. But um, who, who are some of your biggest inspirations getting into this? Um, yeah, I, I, there's a, there's a lot, um, not to put you on the spot, I, you know, <laughs> I, I've built a lot of hammer robots. That, that's, that's been my thing. And, and so I was always big into the hammer robot builders. Uh, John Reed was, was a huge, um, inspiration and I got to meet him in China. Uh, and he oh. said, uh, my robot was a proper hammer. <gasps> now for anyone who speaks English, that's uh you know british english that's, that's <laughs> quite the compliment yeah um and so that was i was just like you know smile ear to ear when he said that and then i i did something wrong and he critiqued my safety uh <laughs> like uh, he's like oh well, don't do that i was like oh no i blew it like um, <laughs> well, that's also very british so, of yeah. him you know <laughs> um, so it, it's quite something um and uh yeah, I, you know, I, I also thought Deadblow was a really cool robot and, and uh, Frenzy and, you know, any of the, any, the Judge, you know, yep. any of those hammer robots were so fun and, and uh, that was, that's always what I try to echo in, in, in mind. But, it, you know, whenever you get a chance to go up against someone, I fought Donald Hudson in our first playoff match. Uh, that was insane. Insanity to go up against him, you know? And, and you see that all the time here at NHRL now. People coming up, they they grew up watching NHRL yep. the past yeah. few years, and now they're coming and they're having that same experience here. Yeah. It's and great to see. It's great to see, and hopefully some of the fans here have a chance to meet some of their heroes. Yeah. So let's take a look at some of their amazing fans here in the audience. People of all ages, which I just love, love, love to see. Ooh, someone with a plushy bot over there. Adam, we're gonna have to have a, a plush made of you now. <laughs> We've got everybody else. We have plushies? If you do want a plushie, check out the merch store. Here's a, a fantastic <laughs> shot. We have things from plushies to hot sauce to tote bags. And hey! Spot a little mouse mouse. I saw some uh, some butt themed, booty themed <laughs> mouse pads. 
<laughs> yes. um, on the table. Uh, uh, Tommy Wong, mad genius behind <laughs> Droopy. <laughs> we just uh, saw a shot of duck there. Um, the amazing thing about uh, Tommy Wong and Droopy is the, all the you know ways he can work uh, the butt imagery into his <laughs> merch. <laughs> Truly one of a kind. Shout out, Tommy. But it looks like we're going to have some action here in cage one. Let's see what's going on over there. Five, four. This is three, Aries versus two, Anxiety. One. Fight. Robots fight. Aries has wow. been um, very impressive so far today. Wow. And he is continuing to wow. pummel anxiety and remain impressive for today. <laughs> These are some of the hardest hits I have ever seen. Aries, they're on the rail. Leave them alone. They need their own stick and not from you. <laughs> hey, if they don't tap out, uh, you know. It's all fair game, fair I guess. Game. Wow. Aries is, has got to be one of the scariest, if not the scariest robots in the competition today. MIT took a little break from, you know, competing and in combat robotics, but they have not missed a beat. Ares is terrifying. <laughs> Anxiety free and Ares is not going to give him an inch. Now, is their weapon broken or are they just being nice? Oh, good question here. Uh, hopefully we'll see here in a second. I don't see I any movement. I would expect them to spin it up if they could. Especially if anxiety yeah. is spinning now. Interesting detail on Ares. Um, they've gone with UHMW. <gasps> oh! Wow! And there goes that UHMW fork on Ares. <laughs> um, they told me they wanted to put those on there to prevent them from getting stabbed into the floor, um, as they did at the last oh, competition. We got smoke! Anx Anxiety's on fire! Anxiety! Smoking here on 420. <laughs> Back and forth. Oh, Aries' weapon, a little twitch. Something is not quite right with it, though, and it's not spinning up to full speed. Both robots' weapons now down. Ares was having drive issues before, but it seems to be all good. That weapon is back up on anxiety, which has to put fear in the heart of Ares. It's back up, but it doesn't uh, seem to be back up to full speed. Yeah. That fire seems to have done something. Some of the magic smoke has been released. Ares now a control robot and driving anxiety all over the arena. You can hear that uh, pin countdown happening. They're going to have to release before they get to 10. There's the release. Anxiety wow. does not seem to be moving. At no point in this two and a half minutes could I have predicted what was going to happen <laughs> next. <laughs> I'm hearing the count out in the background. That's going to be the final count out. And Ares is going to win this wow. by knockout. Back and forth, the definition of a knockdown brawl. Whew. Appropriately named robot, as it was an anxiety-inducing <laughs> fight. Yeah. Wow, Ares uh, won that one, but at what cost? Whew. Yeah, I mean, they were completely dominant, and then after the unstick, could not get that spinner back up to speed. Of course, um, the whole dynamic of a fight changes after a robot uses an unstick because they yeah. know if they get stuck again, that will be it. That's, of course, what happened here. You could see Anxiety's wheels spinning, but they were stuck on something against the wall of the arena there. Could not request a second unstick, and that's how the fight would end. But it will be interesting to see, can Ares figure that out? Will yeah. reliability be... Um, their issue today, or will they be able to get past it as the competition rolls on? Yeah, I mean, in their first fight against Barbie and Ken, they weren't really tested because they were able to just control that no. fight by sending both robots flying the entire time. Anxiety really gave them a run for their money, and so I think it's actually probably good for them because yeah. it exposed perhaps some of the weaknesses mm -hmm. or the, the um, soft spots in their robot that maybe they can adjust for, you know, the, uh, the the bracket. Yeah. Megatron in their first fight uh, wasn't able really to get anything tested. Uh, their opponent kind of uh, chonky immediately burst into flames. But in their second fight, uh, 
against Vodka Tank, we saw them go to three minutes um, and kind of prove out their system. Here we see Aries going the full three minutes and finding problems, um, which can almost be more helpful. Yeah. Uh, you know, you want to find problems at this point in the tournament because you don't want them to crop up towards the end. And they're almost always going to crop up <laughs> at some points. Uh, you can't avoid yeah. them. <laughs> so if you can win a fight and find a problem, that's kind of the best of both worlds. It's almost better at this point to win a fight like that. You've yeah. got the time to fix it before we get to prime time uh, and make it as strong as can be. Absolutely. Now let's take a re uh, replay of that because so much happened. It was back and forth. At this point, Aries, you know, they were down a fork, but they're in control. Anxiety on fire. <laughs> a little <laughs> bit of magic smoke coming out there and they just weren't able to keep going after that. The weapon not really full speed. Yeah, that was kind of the uh, turning point for the entire way to go. <laughs> We've got areas over there. <laughs> they are pumped. I don't blame them. They're, Although I would be also a little nervous having to go fix that. They're such the a happy team. Right it's such yeah. an excited team. Every time I walk over there, they're so like smiling. Yeah. No matter what happens, they're having a good time. If I, uh, you know, if I decided to have gone to MIT when I had the, <laughs> the chance, uh, I would have joined that robotics club. Yeah. They seem like they're a good time, but, you know, I chose a different route. <laughs> Could have gone, chose not to, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I didn't have the, I wasn't the one choosing in that. So. No. I was a history major, Adam. <laughs> MIT wanted nothing to do with me. <laughs> uh. Wow, I like. I can't wait to go back and watch that fight from the beginning to the end. I mean, there were sparks right off the bat, and then it just kind of, you never knew which way it was going to go. Yeah, Ares has a lot of power in that weapon. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just sending bots flying. The engagement they're getting is really impressive. I have to say, I was in, um, you know, our break room uh, when Aries vs. Barbie and Ken was happening, <laughs> and we heard the crowd going crazy and these incredible hits, and I was like, wow, Barbie and Ken really bringing it to Aries. Yeah, the TV in the break room is 10, 15 oh, seconds delayed yeah. from the action, so you can hear it, and then you're just waiting. Who's, who's it going to be? <laughs> who's it going to be? <laughs> Someone's getting destroyed, but I don't know. And uh, not that I was surprised that it was Aries. It's just not necessarily what I was yeah. expecting. And that was a dominant match, too. So yeah. can't wait to see, you know, what they have in store for the rest of the day. Yeah, definitely a robot to watch. Um, they've got two full robots this time. Of course, the last time they were here, they only had one. Yeah. So there were some frantic rebuilds yeah. from them. This time they have two robots, so they shouldn't be as frantic getting it back together. Um, and they've got more spares. Uh, they've got a big team of people, so I'm sure they're going to be back in the arena running 100% for the next fight. Yep. Um, and hopefully they can figure out uh, what the issue was and get it fixed. I think I'm hearing that we're going over to cage four. That is correct. Is this a hammer robot? Oh, Adam, pulling out your heartstrings here. It does appear to have a hammer on it. We've got some cam lifters there. a little more bent and a little less functional than when it started. Now they're going after the, oh, the tiny one. The tiny oh, one is being driven by our very own in. Gil Hova. Oh, no. Now, Gil warned Ethan, uh, the creator of this robot, that, uh, you know, this might not be the best showing, there but he is. is holding his own. <laughs> He's going back in for the hit. Yeah, going against the main <laughs> bot there. Waddle. No fear. <laughs> no fear. Oh, no. That does not look good. That uh, I, I can see the insides. <laughs> against all odds, it's, Gil is still it's going. It's folded like a taco <laughs> shell. Oh, boy. We've got two minutes left here. It is uh, multi-bot on multi-bot action. I can hear the count out in the background. <laughs> I don't think this is going to last too much longer, but Gil holding his own out there. <laughs> Gil outlasting almost everyone in this yeah. match. Of course, uh, when a multi-bot loses more than half of its weight, yeah. it will be counted out. And Gil's robot didn't quite weigh half in this arrangement. He um, although at this point, I'm not sure if that one weighs half anymore either. <laughs> 
I, I don't Oof. know where the rest of it went. Um, that robot was beautiful before this match. It really looked sleek. It's beautiful in a way. Yeah. Still. It's like um, modern art. Yeah. You know, it appeals to some. Um, no. It, uh, I have to hand it to Gil. He did a, a bang up job <laughs> against Waddles, who, who does want win by KO here, but, uh, I think that that young man might have a career <laughs> in this sport. Well, that was uh, that was some <laughs> destruction. That was I, I, I'm sad. You know, I I wanted to see at least one hammer blow. Yeah, I know. There. I was so focused on on Gil and his little bot there that I I kind of <laughs> missed the rest of the carnage. I had to just tunnel vision. It was quite fast. Uh, <laughs> Oof. Waddles looks, uh, no, you know, no worse for the wear. No, Waddles, uh, Waddles is ready to go. He, he, they're, they're sitting there. Bring us another. Gil, do you want to come on the desk? <laughs> Gil! No, not to put... Any, Colby wants you, Gil, so you got to listen to the big man. It, it was his birthday yesterday. <laughs> Hello. You did a phenomenal job. No, I didn't. You lasted. You lasted. I, I lasted a little while. I, I think I lasted only because I turned a random number of times. Yeah. Uh, and he couldn't really figure out where I was going. Well, that's huge. Yeah, well, I couldn't figure out where I was going either. So I guess that's part of the, part of the whole thing. <laughs> when you bring the chaos, they can't plan for it. Yeah. yeah. So you really, your strategy worked. It was deliberate. I could see the appeal <laughs> of like full body spinners now, you know, <laughs> or a bot like uh, Mind Flayer. Yeah. You, know? you can't, you, they can't figure out your plan if you have no plan. <laughs> That's a good point. I love that. But it was a lot of fun. Uh, the way Waddles was able to fold my bot in half was absolutely incredible. I, yeah. you know, I was saddened by that. <laughs> uh, I always want to see a hammer robo robot go out and at least get a few good hits in. <laughs> well, I also want to thank Ethan for building the bot and offering the spot to me. Uh, I think that just was a really great memory. And uh, for Johnny for driving the mini bot and making the match last a little longer than it should have. <laughs> Gil, do you think you're going to leave the control room behind and just become a builder now, full out? No, I'm going <laughs> to retreat back to the safety of the control room. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I belong. Well, thank you, Gil. I mean... That was incredible. Maybe we'll, was that your last match of the day? Will you be back? Uh, no, that was a winner's fight. Okay. So uh, Circuit will have one more fight if Ethan is able to repair it. However, um, Ethan will be driving it and not me. Ah, uh, okay. Because i got to get back to work. <laughs> Fair enough. But this enough. was fun. This was great. <laughs> did you bring a second frame for the main robot? Uh, no, I don't believe he did. <laughs> But, you know, he'll figure out a way. He always does. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, Gil. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, Gil. Welcome back to qualifying. If you're just tuning in, that was our very own Gil Hova, who is normally in the control room uh, and also is just, he's kind of like a, like a big brain that everything is connected to. And, you know, without him, we can't run. <laughs> So he got to step away for a few minutes. It doesn't look like we've descended into anarchy <laughs> just yet, um, but uh, it was really good to see him. Uh, oh, I see Jaren walking away with uh, the smaller bot for Waddles, and uh, it also looked a little worse for wear, but uh, mm. exciting day here at NHRL, a day of firsts for, <laughs> for everyone. Yeah, we've got an entirely new setup here uh, for those who, who are just joining us. We've created a bowl of arena seats. Um, the vibe is intense. Uh, we've had a lot of crowd all day, and when they start cheering, the echoes are insane. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like we're in a hockey arena almost, so it's great to see. Uh, everyone's really enjoying it. The pits are buzzing. Uh, I was up there earlier walking around, chatting with people, smiles ear to ear all the way around the room. Um, everyone's excited for today. Um, you know, we're getting into the middle of the season. People are getting the robots dialed in, and we're really seeing a lot of good fights today, a lot of evolution of the robots as well. Aries, yeah. of course, looking very nasty today yeah. and a whole new Megatron. Um, but across the field, a lot of improvements and a lot of uh, great upgrades. And we've been doing this since 9 a.m. this morning. <laughs> we've been here a long time, and yet we still have a whole day ahead of us. Prime time is scheduled to begin around 7 p.m. I mean, I, I can't 
try to convince you enough that you gotta stick around to see what we have in store for prime time because uh, I don't even know all the things and I, I know that I want to see it. <laughs> yeah, the fights get better and better all day as we get the more uh, destructive and more reliable robots. So when we get to prime time, you're not gonna want to miss it. Yeah. But you get all the wild action here yeah. in the qualifiers <laughs> um, where weird stuff keeps happening um, and robots get melted into pulp um, and it's it's pretty wild. So. It's pretty wild. Wild, and we're gonna go over to cage five and see what they have in store for us over there. We've got an undercutter and an overcutter. Ooh, a battle of the cutters. <laughs> Who will reign supreme? This is uh, taking suggestions versus international. International uh, composter, I believe. Mm. Taking suggestions is out of Rochelle Park, New Jersey. I wonder what they're taking suggestions on, like bot design, <laughs> name, naming convention, color scheme. I don't know. Everything? Yeah, it's the whole, you know, do they have cards? That Ooh. I can yeah, how are they collecting know? this user feedback? Mm -hmm. Is it one of those like smiley face scales where it's just like <laughs> a happy face or an unhappy face or like one of those like meh faces? Well, here we go, regardless. They well, are. That's a good hit right out of the gate. Leaving them dizzy. <gasps> oh, parts everywhere. All over the place. The undercutter <laughs> oh, seems to have no. won that engagement. And I see a lot of exposed wires right now. I don't now. think we're supposed to be seeing that. No. Uh, good strategy to back up now, try and stay out of the range of that undercutter. There's a little bit more um, reach of the overcutter blade when going backwards. It seems that their blade has died. The undercutter still going, so they got to be careful. Yeah, extremely careful because one, one you know, head-on collision. Oh, they, they go <gasps> straight into it with the internals. <laughs> we told you not to do that. A blade of wiring. <laughs> oh, this is uh, this is oh. this is an anxiety-inducing fight for the driver here. You you've got a, a plastic robot that, that's exploding, no weapon, and an undercutter <laughs> going full speed. It's basically. A doomsday scenario, and yet they are fully in control of this match nonetheless. Oh. I don't understand. It's yeah, the, the, you want the butt going in, not, not your front. Ooh. Now it does. Oh, nope. Spoke too soon. There goes the undercutter again. Looks like we have about a little less than 90 seconds now in this match. Oh. At any point, we could just see more explosive destruction from that undercutter. It's like a slightly mobile <laughs> arena hazard at this point. <laughs> I wouldn't want to judge this fight. I, I, I mean, I, I, I guess I'd probably give it to oh. the red robot here, but they got to be careful. I think they're going to get high centered here on their own debris. Right now, this is actually a freestyle fight, so they're just, they are fighting for the lulls and maybe wow. some bragging rights. So they're just having fun out here. Yeah. They said, I've got a new rev of this frame back at home I'm going to print, and I need to get rid of this. <laughs> Send it out in style. <laughs> um, you know, there is that chaotic part of me that does wish that undercutter could get more into those wires. <laughs> like, I just want to see They're it. just sitting right there. They're so juicy. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen, but uh, I'll use my imagination. And that's going to be it. I did see a little bit of life from the horizontal there. Uh, might just be the momentum of them spinning in place, though. If you had to, to judge that, because it's not going to the judges, if you had to pick red robot or blue robot. You know, it's tricky. I, I feel like damage, there was a lot of cosmetic damage on the red robot. Like, significant functional damage to the armor. The weapon went out. Uh, Blue Robot lost its weapon and most of its drive, though. So I think you have to give damage then 
to the red robot and then control and then also aggression kind of wildly driving in <laughs> if that's not aggression then what's aggression i think um, that's the textbook right yeah. there yeah i'm gonna go red I, I you know i'm gonna say the undercutter kind of got the better of the exchanges but the durability of the red robot in the end uh, i think was able to take it for me yeah all right, Adam, I have a question for mm. you. You have competed here many, many, many times <laughs> with Knock Off White. Do you have any news to share with us? When can we expect to see it again? Mm. Is there going to be any changes to it? Are you going straight regular wheels? I mean, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> if I were to put wheels on Knock Off White, I think I'd need to shave 20 pounds <laughs> off of it. Ah, uh, so easy, right? <laughs> that's not going to be happening. Knock Off White's going to remain a shuffler. Um, can I say? Well, we're going to be here in June, I think. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's exciting. Yeah. Um, so watch for us then. Um, I, I don't think. Um, can I? Can I announce the team? Adam, I don't okay. know. Okay. I, that so is above I'm, telling, my pay grade. I'm being told I can announce okay. the rest of that team. You know what? Um, let's yeah, let's so break we're some news up, right here. Uh, with team seems reasonable. Yeah. Um, wow. And and Aaron Hill and their whole crew. Um, and that so is a dynamic duo right it's there. It's gonna be cool. We're gonna be reasonable Fight Club, reasonable <laughs> FC. It's so gonna love be that. our combined name. We're working on the jerseys and the logo right now, and uh, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. Ooh, okay, so this is, uh, I don't know how much we know about, you mm. know, how this format is going to look, but so it's three weight classes forming yeah. one team? Yeah, so this tournament coming up in June is a little bit different. You know, normally Bots FC, we run kind of exclusively in the featherweight class here. Um, we sometimes even bring two featherweights to, to one event, but for this upcoming June event, that's not how it's going to work. In order to enter it, you need to have one uh, robot in each weight class, mm. and that's how you form a team. Um, so Bots FC is actually splitting up the, the feathers, and we're going to have two separate teams. Um, so I don't know oh. if I can talk much about the other one. But, yeah, mm, for, uh, okay. for Knock Off White, uh, we'll be teaming up with Team Seems Reasonable for Reasonable FC. Um, and they'll be bringing the lower weight classes at 12 and 3 pound. And then we'll kind of be competing. We're not going to be fighting in the arena at once. It'll be three different tournaments. Yeah. Um, but it'll be sort of like a constructor's championship, like F1. It'll be fun. Now, I hear the other team is quite scary, and we don't have to go too much. <laughs> into that but um so you'll be fighting with a uh, dutch oven and then are, are, are we not is this a, is this a well secret? we can say yeah we can say the rest of the uh, the knockoff white team yeah so yeah. dutch oven is is going to be part of it and then uh aaron's making some sort of new i don't know how much we can talk about it's fought before okay yeah. it's fought it's, before it's from aaron it's, hill yeah it's it's wild and crazy <laughs> and it's and wild none of the robots have normal wheels Oh, um, which is a beautiful. completely reasonable thing to do. Seems reasonable um, to me. And, and none of the robots have spinners, which is also a completely reasonable way to approach a, a combat robot tournament. Yeah. Because uh, as we all know, spinners, they never win. I mean, I it's mean, also, uh, who wants to yeah. see a spinner? Really? I, so there I no spinners and, and no regular old wheels. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm very excited for this. <laughs> this is... I mean, put it on your calendars. Can we say this? It's it's June first. Yeah. So uh, a lot more excitement to share um, that will come in time. But yeah, to recap, you're gonna see Adam and uh, Reasonable Fight Club uh, with uh, three different weight classes on one team fighting against well, not each other, but with each other against other robots. So. Stay tuned for more information on that. It's going to be a doozy. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. We're really excited for June. Um, everyone's really excited about it. When you hear about some of these other teams that are joining up, too, I think it's it's going to be wild. You're not going to want to miss it. I hear the jerseys are great, but we won't get to that <laughs> another time because we got a fight coming up here in Cage 5. We've got Gnocchi and Rhino here, face to face. I like the color scheme drum. here. It's like a little little bee. Aw, you can uh, join Team Honeycracked. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on Gnocchi? Uh, like the food item? Yeah, the food item. 
I really enjoy it. I have made it in the past. Mm -hmm. um, you can make gnocchi is with potato. Uh, and then something called muti is with ricotta. Whoa. And that is fantastic. I've not had that. Yeah. You, it looks like gnocchi, but um, it's lighter and fluffier from the, the you know, ricotta aspect. That sounds amazing. Mm. Um, I'm, a big, I'm a big gnocchi fan. Uh, I don't know if it'll really hold up in an arena when it's no. getting, like, the destroyed. You know, the potato doesn't seem to have that kind of integrity <laughs> to it. It is a very sturdy pasta. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but putting it up against, like, a 225-mile-an-hour, you know, weapon, not sure. <laughs> not sure. Maybe there's, like, some chance for uh, entanglement in there. You can, like, yeah. really gum up the inner workings, but that might be its only hope. <laughs> <laughs> the key is, I mean, what kind of sauce are we putting on this gnocchi? Mm. Yeah. Um, butter sage. Hmm. Yeah. So a warm, uh, a warm gnocchi bowl. Yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, a, it's, a it's better than a hot poke bowl, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Which, you know, coming soon. Return of the poke bowl. So I hear. I don't know what that means, but we might find out. Well, I'm still looking forward to the, the hot poke bowl uh, scented candle. As yes. part of the scented candle collection that we're working on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we can continue on uh, ideating on candles <laughs> while these robots fight. <laughs> Two verts here. We've got a, a big wide Ooh. drum against a, a narrow disc. Disc is getting the better of this fight. Um, yeah, that drum is really... Uh, it, uh, sending it a mile a minute around the box. Not a ton of control there. The center of gravity seems to be a little bit of a problem. And we see a wheel flying off. You're going to need that. You only have two. Now just one. Really going to make you an easy target. Although the chaos that is coming from, you know, that drum is making it hard to plan around. Exciting, though, to see, you know, both these bots bringing it to each other, but then also kind of fighting off some of their own self-inflicted demons. <laughs> it's a lot of... I'm surprised at how mobile that robot is for only having one wheel. Um, but, yeah, the, the power of that weapon is really propelling it onward. Ooh! ramp <laughs> to a cool kickflip off of that bot. And these arenas are over in our Fight Club area where you can get so close to the box. Huge chunks now coming off. And only one minute remaining. One minute to go here. Some clear domination, but uh, you know both of these bots hanging in. Just detritus everywhere. <laughs> Now, Gnocchi is a bot from Alex Pezza, who you've seen uh, with uh, Wake and Bake and Yes Chef. Ooh. Gnocchi really existing and, and thriving despite having that one wheel. And now its opponent is on the rail stuck, which is the lasting impression that the judges will see uh, before this fight ends. But he did, was able to get himself off. So, uh, you know, at least he is able to say that. I do think uh, Nyaki is going to have an uphill battle here with the judges. But uh, it went the full three minutes. We just have to wait and see what they have to say. And now I am joined by none other than the illustrious, what? the the definitely not insurmountable. Ah, the infamous. The 
the infamous. <laughs> Let me just go down the list, Luke. We've yeah. got Luke Stangle here. Welcome back. Yeah, hello, Lindsay. Hello. Lindsay, do, uh, does my face look weird at all? I literally woke up like three minutes ago. <laughs> been asleep in the green room so uh sometimes when my dog takes a nap yeah uh, like is there a pattern on my face or something uh, no you have your face is squished in one one little spot but it'll work itself out yeah yeah i'm just kidding you look fine good all right yeah. good i always look like i'm a, 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 like almost asleep so that's perfect <laughs> yeah that's great um you know like take a look at that last fight you know that didn't look like a gnocchi at all it looked like a, a combat robot Ooh, that's a good joke. <laughs> <laughs> just like, okay, I'm just saying, if you're going to call it uh, something specific, like a very specific food type, it's got to at least look like a gnocchi, right? I mean, did a uh, hot poke look like a poke bowl? I, now that, now that does, you say that, no. Uh, let's see. Um, does Aries look like a Greek god? Yes. Okay, fair. I mean, you know, like, you, you can see these descriptions of these Greek gods, you know? No one actually knows what they look like. Yeah, okay? yeah. You they could be terrifying uh, combat robots from the future. Now, uh, you know, speaking of hot poke, okay. poke bowls, Luke. Oh, my God. Listen, it, it's classic, and I hear you have a great story. Wh what? I hear you have a great story revolving around poke bowls. Is that true or is it not? Okay, here's the thing. I have PTSD from the last <laughs> time that we did this. There's not, like, more poke in the building, is there? Is the poke in the room with us now? <laughs> You, you, there's not, like, a poke that's been sitting outside or something for, like, six hours that they're about to bring on to the stage? I mean, it's far too cold outside for them to leave it out there because it's kind of like a refrigerator in itself. Got it. Yeah, so, no. Okay. It's not outside. Yeah. All right, well, that's good. Yeah. Um, I hear you have the story. Yeah, yeah, well, you know. I want you to relive that trauma with us. Well, back in the day, all right? <laughs> Back during COVID, when uh, when there was no audience here at all, okay, we would uh, sit up here for these marathon days, like 12 hours on the stream. They didn't even have schedules for us. No. Like, we couldn't even go to the bathroom. It was just stuck on us. It right? was the Wild West. The only time that you go scurrying away, you'd have to, like, go to the bathroom in three minutes or less, <laughs> okay, because you just kind of, like, tap Kyle and be like, oh, please, please just call this next fight, you know, while I go and drink water, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, we ordered poke bowls. Mm, good choice. Yeah. Uh, so like five poke bowls arrived. And then like six hours later, I got off the stream and I was like, oh, okay, all right. So I'm going to go get that poke bowl. And it was so hot. The poke bowl was hot. Okay. Like it had been sitting out on top of a monitor or something like that. It was a very hot poke bowl. It was like July. The yeah. dead of summer. Fish had gone gray. It was just like totally colorless, you and know? And you saw it, and you thought, yeah, I'll give this a go. Well, all right, here's my thinking, okay? All right? You eat a cold poke bowl, that's fine, right? Mm. But it probably cooked the fish, right? Mm, yes. The heat from the rice and from the monitor and stuff probably cooked the fish, and then you go, okay, all right, I'm going to gamble. I haven't eaten since yesterday, all right? <laughs> yeah? Uh, 8 p.m. or whatever, right? Scarfing down poke. And, uh, and then you go, um, now it's time for me to live with the consequences of my decisions. Yeah. You know? And the consequences were not good, Lindsay. They were bad. I mean, it, probably the gray fish could have been an indicator, but you went for it anyway. And then... Yeah. I mean, it yeah. was... Did you get to take the rest of the day off? Um, no. I went no? back on the air. Okay. Yeah. And uh, there's footage of it somewhere, you know. <laughs> if, if you're if you're a really dedicated super fan and you want to go back and see the early early days, it's actually pretty fun. Um, I am up on the uh, the stream. I just immediately like my face explodes in like oh. uh, sweat, you know. Now, Luke, I'm gonna have to cut you off right here. Okay. I'm enjoying this story. I really am. But if you would like some food yourself, go check out the food trucks. We yeah. have a whole bunch of food We've trucks here. We've got the here. hottest poke in Norwalk. <laughs> Okay. None of this will give you food poisoning. Uh, in fact, it's all Every freshly made. Every single food vendor is like, why are they talking about food poisoning? My <laughs> sales are tanking here in the building. I can personally guarantee that this is the freshest food uh, of the utmost quality. And uh, we even have a bar here, so you can wash it down with a little yeah. cocktail or a little beer. Yeah, Space Cat Brewery. Shout out to Space Cat. 
They uh, have their own NHRL beer here. It's a little microbrew. It's pretty awesome. For, now, uh, uh, Lindsay, I see like a mobile camera crew here. Does that mean that uh, the mobile camera is not cage side? Where are the fights here, Lindsay? Where are the fights? I mean, uh, there's other stuff that we have to show. They're not just fights as we wait for them. Yeah. Um, there's a lot going on, even when there are not fights happening. Uh, you can play skee ball. So I'm like, I'm like sweating like crazy, right? And just like my stomach is churning, okay? You know? And I realize hmm, three or four minutes in, mm. you know, like after I got back on to the, uh, the stream. Now, look, I am going to have to interrupt you because I have to make an announcement. Okay. If you're here in the building yeah. uh, and you want to maybe get some of your own experience driving a robot, uh, you can head on over to the, the bright driving experience where you can kind of get your hands dirty uh, and try it out yourself. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I do love the Brett driving experience. Yeah. I see a robot driving over there that does not look like Brett. It looks like a, like a motorized uh, like a hamster watering uh, <laughs> device or something. You see what I'm seeing, right? Yeah, it looks like I'm not like going a, insane, am I, Lindsay? I mean, the effects of the food poisoning have not set in yet for you today. Uh, I do think you well, have you all think your I was faculties. poisoned today? I can't promise how long those I sandwiches... I have been eating <laughs> like sandwiches like crazy out there, and... We have no idea how long those have been sitting out. <laughs> um, yeah, the bread driving experience looks really cool. Um, yeah, okay. You know those like uh, those little plastic barrel juices with the aluminum top? It's like just food coloring and sugar, and they call it juice. It's like in those little plastic barrels. My body's barrels. a temple, Lindsay. I've never, <laughs> Your never drank one temple. of those, okay? Yeah. Um, My body's a massive temple complex, okay? <laughs> Yeah, okay. I know what you're talking about. I'm going to die. Okay. All right, good. Here's oh, oh, the driving here experience. Okay, that yeah, looks see, like the barrel. It looks like a little hamster watering device. Do or you know that. what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. Is that a paintball gun? <gasps> oh, my God. It shoots out little water beads, Luke. Wow. Fantastic. Target practice. Look at that. Ah, see, all right. Announcing is fun, but I want to I want to be down there driving that thing. That's really cool. I know. It's like taking all my willpower right now to not just uh, throw this headset off and grab the transmitter. Oh, there's a little toddler step stool down there, too. That's awesome. Mm. Yeah, I could use that step stool and really get a good vantage point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could be looking through the ceiling, Lindsay. Yeah. Uh, this thing is pretty cool. Yeah, and it was, uh, it was made by our very own henchman, Sam. If you would like to learn how to make a robot kind of like this one, you can put your own spin on it, do what you want, check out the Havoc Academy, which is launching, and we'll teach you how to build a robot from the ground up. And uh, I'm really excited about it. But uh, yeah, so it, there's lots of different ways to get started building a combat robot. Yeah. But I highly recommend the Havoc Academy. Have you ever had, like, the kind of food poisoning where, like, you're just <laughs> sweating all the way? You know what I mean? Like, it's coming from your hairline. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Just wet. You know? I mean, that seems like it would, yeah. I don't, it's horrifying it's and specific, horrifying. you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, get up. I go running to the bathroom, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. It, um, I was, like, six pounds lighter. <laughs> Literally from anything you can imagine. Do you know what I mean? Like all, every direction, you know? Every direction. Every direction. <laughs> yeah. I feel I'm really bad. I'm crying in the bathroom. Okay, I'm crying in the bathroom. And the number one thought in my head is Austin is going to be so mad at me because <laughs> I'm not on the desk. Okay? Do you know what I mean? And you didn't feel bad for the person who was like going to have to come in and clean? I cleaned my own. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, that's a good move. I wasn't raised in a barn, Lindsay, all right? <laughs> I mean, you have questionable judgment sometimes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I believe in food safety, you know? <laughs> I didn't even think to myself, you know, like, oh, maybe this is a dangerous thing that I'm eating, you know? So anyway, I get back on, and I'm Luca, trying to explain the hot we're going to head on game. over to cage five, so okay. I'm going to have to stop you there. Thank God, Lindsay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, we've got Cricket over here in the blue corner. This is this overhead spinner facing off against Prometheus. 
And uh, yeah, let's see, Prometheus, run by Amir Miles from Schenectady, New York. This is the Schenectady Combat Robotics Club Robots. This is one of Drew Davis's uh, mentees, one of Drew Davis's students over here in the pink corner. Yeah, and they had a win earlier in the day against a robot that they had previously lost against last year. So uh, they are feeling pretty jazzed, pretty energized right now. Uh, but that wedge, that's going to prove probably to be pretty formidable for them, as it does for most horizontal spinners. They're facing off against Cricket, built by Mason Price from Dicey Robotics from uh, Brandeis University. Now, uh, I don't mean to prejudge this match, but I'm going to guess this is an elimination match um, where the winner of this fight uh, will advance and the loser might be getting eliminated. I don't know exactly how far we are into our uh, qualifying Ooh. rounds, but I <gasps> believe we're beginning to eliminate robots. That was a fun little ballerina twirl into the corner there. And on Oh, Gil has just informed me that we are in the bracket for the three pounders. My goodness. So this is technically an elimination round. The winner will advance and the loser will be going home. But fantastic that both of these robots made it in. Way to go, Prometheus. That's a really big, that's, that's, a, that's a big accomplishment. And it's cool to see the kids from Schenectady in the bracket. Yeah, I am sure Drew Davis right now is a very, very happy mentor. And Prometheus really holding its own right here. Yeah, the geometry of this, like that overhead spinner, is not really finding much to eat on its opponent in Prometheus. However, I'm seeing a weapon down on Prometheus, which is not good at this point in the match. It is fantastic that we're seeing so many custom robots out of the Schenectady team. Uh, you would imagine, like, oh, okay, I've got a... <laughs> help six, six kids here build six robots, we should just get a kit bot, you know? Uh, we should just run SSP kits or something for the entire program. But really, Drew's encouraging them to design and build their own robots, which is really cool. Love that. Love that. Our favorite English teacher oh, from wow. Schenectady. Wow, we're seeing little bits of Prometheus getting sprayed around inside of the box. Yeah, now that that weapon is down, the overcutter is able to kind of come in and, and not have to be quite so careful about their hits. I did see a belt go flying. I don't know if that was just part of, that was already off or, or something new. There's a very bright light around the uh, the, the right wheel there. Ooh, did you see that? Yeah. It's what like do you think that is? The heavens are coming out of that robot. Prometheus, there you go. <laughs> Okay. I can see a weapon there. I think that's from the multi-bot of Prometheus. I can see a belt. I think that's the belt from Prometheus. I see a little bit of, uh, of red in there. I think that's part of the, uh, the armor package from Prometheus. Cricket's weapon is down, but they are very far ahead on the points. Yeah, I wonder if they have just powered that weapon down to save on battery or if something may have happened. I don't know. I think that belt was not related to them, but... It looks like they've got the gearing system. They've got that little gear and then the big gear that powers the entire robot. I don't think there's belts inside of Cricket at all. Now we're going to take a look here at Kilojoule versus Blue Cheese while that other match is in progress. Blue Cheese really having a phenomenal day. Five, <laughs> it has not four, been exploded, three, and all of its fights two, have been caught on one, camera, so it's five, really two for two. Let's see if they can do it again here. The geometry here favors Blue Cheese. Wow. The winner of this will move on to the bracket. The loser goes home. Wow, punting that multi-bot in the air. Kilojoule, we're not seeing that same kind of mobility that we expect from Kilojoule. Matt Luther here just uh, gleefully uh, going after the multibot, racking up points here. Blue Cheese is looking so good today. Ooh, that's oh, a wheel, wheel is gone. Something. What is that? Blue Cheese's weapon is now bumping along the floor. 
feel really responsible that I have jinxed nearly every robot I have announced. Yeah. Um, but you know what? I, I mean, I dare, dare I say it, but she's still holding her own. Yeah, well, not really driving forward anymore. But, but neither uh, is Killajewel. Yeah. These are these frantic moments where they're just trying to get one more hit in. With a robot that only drives backwards and kill a jewel, a robot that can only turn Going in one circles. direction. <laughs> oh, David's done it. He's coming in for a hit. I think it's going to happen. Slowly but surely. Here Luke, we go, Lindsay. Luke. Here we go, Lindsay. Uh, okay. It's oh, my God. <laughs> that getting out of that corner. Incredible. <laughs> We hyped it up and uh, it fell a little flat, but you know what? We're going to have another shot here as Blue Cheese moves farther away, so maybe I should just it's stop moving talking. forward. Let's go, there Blue Cheese. Go. Yes. That's a hit. 55 seconds left in this fight. This is a dirty brawl, but uh, <laughs> they're, they're still going. As far as I can tell. Wow. Blue Cheese making an aggressive move here, going in. Not afraid of going weapon to dead weapon. I mean, at this point, you kind of have to be fearless. There's, there's, I don't know if any of them and are the clear leader that. here. It's a good pin. <laughs> yes, two second pin. <laughs> Matt, what happened? That was a great pin, Matt. Everything we say, as we say it, it becomes the opposite. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, We right. possess a it's weird It's almost like magic. they can hear our commentary, Lindsay. <laughs> oh, 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 they two have, seconds. Um, somehow, the comma, they've escaped the count out. <laughs> this one will go to the judges. That's going to be a tough one to judge. That happened. We saw it. Yeah. And Matt, with his burger hat, looking very festive, will his hat and that performance be enough to give him the win? I think that there is a good chance. Uh, earlier in this match, he was really dominant going after that multibot, racking up points there. I think he ripped off one of the wheels from the multibot, perhaps. Um, and his weapon was running for most of the time. Kill a Jewel, really unable to direct the pace of the fight or where that fight was happening, and uh, really unable to destroy the robots, you yeah. know, uh, intentionally. Uh, Matt Luther really killing more of his own robots just yeah. by himself. Now, we have something really exciting coming up. Oh, good. This is Psycho versus Baby Grimm. Winner moves on to the bracket. Oh. Loser packs it up. Wow, really? Yes. So a lot wow. is riding on this for Jameson Go, who really had high hopes uh, for Psycho in this competition. However, all it took was one hit from Gotham earlier today for Smoke to come out of Psycho and uh, him immediately tapping out. So hopefully he was able to take that back into the pits and kind of figure out what the issue was. Um, but yeah, I mean, time will tell. Baby Grimm here in purple is run by Yash, uh, a local here from Norwalk, Connecticut from Team Phoenix. Now, uh, Yash coming in with Baby Grimm with a record of uh, ranked 100 of all time Ooh. with a uh, one and two win loss across the last event. Uh, so this is still a relatively new robot facing off against Psycho, which is Jameson Goh's meta vert. Um, Jameson was really talking about how he'd always wanted to build a meta bot, um, you know, a four-wheel drive vert, compact, hard-hitting, and really able to, to win fights convincingly. Yeah. Um, his other designs, a horizontal and an overhead hammer saw, harder to win. Um, yeah. not, not the conventional meta in the sport right now. So all signs point to Psycho having a great day, but they had a weird first match. It was very weird. We'll see what happens this time around. Here we go. <laughs> Hunting baby Grim in the air. That is the power you come to expect from this robot. Wow, feeling a part of the, uh, the front armor of baby Grim. A broken nose Fantastic. there and a fire drive assembly gone. 
Wow, what is that hanging out of the robot? Oh, its guts are coming out, Lindsay. Its entrails now litter the floor. Jameson Go knows that this is a do or die fight here. Yeah. He cannot overdrive, cannot get stuck on something silly. He is way ahead on the points and he continuing did. to pursue. He did not have to make that hit. He could have let Baby Grim die on its head, but he wanted more. Like yeah. a greedy predator. Now, Baby Grim can, can tap out at any time. That's always an option. Jameson Goat does not need to absolutely mulch his opponent, <laughs> but he's doing it. It's for our entertainment, Lindsay. We love it. We love to see it. I mean, maybe if I wasn't, you know, the driver of Baby Grim, I wouldn't love it, but he hasn't tapped. Yeah. So, you You've know, got this that is option. on him. You always have that option. I have to imagine a countdown is coming. Yes. Well, the save comes, and if the save doesn't uh, miraculously resuscitate Baby Grim. I don't know Grimm, that a save is going to help in this situation. No. Unless it is physically moving Baby Grandma to the loadout area. There we go. We've got Great a little zoom design. in here on Baby Grim. And Jameson Go victorious. Making his way into the bracket, limping his way into the bracket, Lindsay. I mean, after that fight, that did not look like a, any kind of limp to me. That was dominant. That was what we expected the first match around, but I would love to hear from Jameson. Maybe we can talk to him after this match or, or later on in the pits. I would love to know what the issue was that first time around. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, Jameson wow. fans uh, worldwide rejoice. Uh, Psycho has made it into the bracket with a convincing win there against Baby Grimm. And right now, Jake Hoffman is in the pits uh, cursing himself. Yeah. 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 Uh, Maximizer here, you know, like they are really hoping that, uh, that they qualify, perhaps take home another Golden Dumpster. And Psycho getting eliminated earlier in the day would have really helped that out a lot. Yeah. Now, Psycho is probably the biggest barrier to Jake Hoffman's winning story here tonight. I would say Psycho and also Caldera 12, who he has not had a good track record against. I mean, they've only fought once, but he did lose to him. Now, um, very quickly, yeah. uh, just real quick, Yeah. Uh, Brian, Brian Boxel came up and he was really excited to tell me, hey, listen, the next time that you talk about Caldera 12, yeah. can you mention on the air that Glenn is a first-time grandfather as of today? What? Yeah. This is breaking news. He has a granddaughter as of today. As literally of today, born today. I'm asking Brian, like, what's what's robots. your niece's what's your niece's name? And he's like, they haven't even named her yet. Caldera. Yeah. Eruption. Callie for short. Oh, that's a great that's name. That's a great name. That's a great name. If you need naming suggestions, yeah. it's right here. Baby Caldera. Baby okay. Caldera. Fantastic. And so, yeah, the next time you see Brian, if you're up there in the pits, you know, hey, Uncle Brian. Uncle Brian Brian. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm assuming that's what they'd call him. How cute. And congratulations yeah. to Glenn. That is uh, such a milestone. Yeah, well, technically, congratulations to Brian's sister. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. I think she did all the work today. She did a lot of work. <laughs> um, but imagine, okay, just imagine this. Okay. Glenn today couldn't become a grandfather. Okay. And a golden dumpster winner in the 12 pound class. Nice. That's possible. That's on the table. Yeah. That'd be a pretty good day. That's a pretty good day. Yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, congratulations. That's pretty I awesome. I love that tidbit. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't find a better person than Glenn. Yeah. Yeah. Glenn is pretty awesome. I like Glenn a lot. Um, all of our interactions have been great. Very wholesome builder and yeah. just like smart, dedicated, really like into the sport and a just formidable, scary opponent yeah. when you're staring at him from across the box. Yeah. And so, I mean, to kind of get back to the, the okay. um, yeah. projections about the 12 pound class, I mean, those I would say are right now Maximizer's biggest obstacles to not only qualifying, but maybe taking home the dumpster. I'm sure another bot could give him a run for his money, but he's already lost to Caldera 12, and yeah. he knows that Psycho has um, definitely the capacity to give him a run for his money. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, absolutely.
Cage five. Right, we've got a fight in progress here in cage five. More uh, beater bar bots need googly eyes. All right, we've got Black Havoc here facing off against IDK. IDK is one of our top ranked Beatles. Uh, IDK here is in pink, run by Kevin Biagini. And Black Havoc, Lindsay, is a robot from Red Hook, New York. Red Hook? Hey, I know that place. Yeah. <gasps> oh, they're Let's... trying to fly home, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Now, IDK is desperate to go very deep in this uh, competition. Uh, he was ranked either number five or number six, uh, uh, you know, like among the Beatles that are here today. And um, just doing great. IDK's full name, of course, is IDK WTFID. But now it stands for he does know what he's doing. Yes. Yeah. He's been ripping here off enough. that uh, that wheel guard there, exposing that tire, showing absolute brutality Ooh. to uh, our neighbors in Red Hook. <laughs> Black havoc. Uh, seen in better days. Those eyes have uh, have. They've uh, seen some things, Lindsay. Yeah. I think one of those pupils got popped out. One of them sees no longer. Yeah. Well, that's disturbing. Oh, oh and the weapon's gone from Black Havoc. What? It is hanging out of the uh, the housing. It did it to itself. Wow. And they have not tapped out. Well, may no, maybe they have. Black Havoc, run by Henry Welch from Red Hook, New York. Team Bean Lab. This is a uh, this is a builder who's come to a lot of recent events. Uh, their record coming into this fight was five and five across the past four events. Bean and Lab. Yeah. I love wow, that. Looks like this fight's still on. Yeah, I was I was mistaken. I mean, I I would think that they would tap without a weapon and. Down an eye. <laughs> Down an eye, most importantly. But you know what? They heard no bell. They are uh, sticking this out, maybe hoping that IDK, uh, I don't know, self-combusts? It's possible. <laughs> Gets stuck on, uh, on that little eyeball, maybe? <laughs> wow. Henry Welch has no quit in him. No, That's great. I love it. I love it. But that is all right. uh, against all odds going to the judges, Luke. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, so I, I live one town over from Red Hook, and um, they're known as a hardy people. They are. The Red Hookers, okay? Yeah. Like, they, uh, they don't quit. No. You know? No. That was a town that's been destroyed by floods and fires, and it's just, uh, just an awful location, but uh, they keep Robot rebuilding. Robot attacks. Yeah, bear attacks. Yeah. Yeah, you know? Um, locusts. Yeah, famine. <laughs> Uh, Red Hook, also not very far from Hyde Park, where yeah. some other very notable uh, NHRL builders hail from. Dee Dee and DJ? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, Hyde Park. Oh, well, that's... Now, that's, that is the that's, home of presidents. That's premium living over there, okay? <laughs> if, you're, if you're at Red Hook, you just look down Highway 9, and you're like, oh, boy, someday I'm going to I'm gonna get to Hyde Park. Now, FDR is from Hyde Park. Yeah. Do you think that he would have built robots if maybe he didn't get into, like, the whole politics thing? Yeah. I mean, yeah? maybe, like, a <laughs> wheelchair-themed robot or something. You know what I mean? A motorized scooter. Yeah. That could be a robot. Of course. Yeah, it doesn't have to be combat. Yeah. 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 Yeah, FDR. <laughs> Complicated president, of course. Yeah. You know? Quite a legacy. Not everything he did was great. No. No, made some mistakes. <laughs> some like, yeah, glaring blotches on a uh, history, but you know, uh, yeah, uh, he's from Hyde Park. Beloved, beloved president, though, you know. I see something behind you. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh um, God. <laughs> wow. Okay, here, let me. Can you? Get it's out not of the shot. one, but it's right two. Positively hysterical.s This is like the uh, viral social media sensation of 2023. Okay. Easily 20, 30 million views on oh, TikTok. Yeah. People oh, yeah. go nuts for Positively Hysterical. Lindsay, I, in fact, have my own Positively Hysterical at home. I 
I'm not a jealous person, right? Yeah. However, knowing this yeah. fills me with a jealous rage that is what? hard to harness. What? Because not no one else except Tom Fargus has a positively hysterical. Yes. How did you finagle this, Luke? And where do you keep it in your home? Listen, uh, <laughs> the 14th commandment is thou shalt not covet your friends' combat robots, you know? But we're, we're technically family, so, like, <laughs> thou family shalt not covet share. Your brother-in-law's <laughs> combat robots. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I keep it in my own little mini bot museum in my office. I've got now several, several combat robots myself, um, and it's amazing. It fully works. I've got the controller and wow. everything. It is the uh, result of me really fostering a, a genuine friendship with Tom over the years. And so when it came time for him to, uh, to sell a pause, I was top of the list. I'm seething. <laughs> Just... It's I've literally up. never seen you this mad before. No. No, yeah. this is what rage she looks like. She might crack this desk, like, just right in half, okay? Ah, I mean, yeah. this is a, a nice desk. It's lovely. It's very heavy. It's I bolted don't to the floor. think I could flip it, but... You um, could try. I could try. Yeah. Uh, no, that's, that's really cool. And... Uh, <laughs> you sound so happy for me, Lindsay. Oh, no. I love that you have a pause. I'm so happy for yeah. you. Um, and... Uh, you know what? You can come over to the house, and you can watch me drive it. How about that? That's very nice That's of you. Close, right? Let's go look at cage five, Luke. <laughs> <gasps> oh, yes! Mystery machine! Yes! This All right, here. This is, the, this is the brand new robot from Corey Nason. Mystery machine here. Uh, appropriately themed for our April 20th competition. <laughs> uh, look, are these mini synthesizers? These are mini synth synthesi synth synthesi synthesi synth synth synthesis <laughs> synthesis synthesis. These are synthesis. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is incredible. Is, is there a plural to synthesis? YouTube live chat. Is there a plural to uh, to synthesis? Drop it in there. Please improve save our, us. Improve our grammar. <laughs> um, Facing off against what I believe is a robot run by David Dreyer. Katana. Oh, Katana, that. yes. Ooh, ooh, David Dreyer from Willoughby, Ohio, KSU Combat Robotics. This is an aerospace engineering student who goes to Kent State on the verge of uh, graduating. Ohio against the world, Luke. Yes, exactly, exactly. Facing off against two syntheses. Here we go. There we go. Nice, good little shovey oh, start here. Oh, in the floor, giving them a little, uh, a little stop. Katana punting one of those synthesi into the air. Wow. Katana really controlling this fight. Yeah. When you have a multi-bot, especially two uh, identical verts here, you have to work together. You cannot just stand by and wait for your turn or and else the larger robot will dominate. And it does seem like that's what we're seeing right now, whether it's intentional or there's just drive issues, but it seems like one gets a go at a time and then the one goes flying and then the other one goes in for the, their chance. Katana is really quite mobile here. This is a four-wheel drive vert and I think it may have lost one of its wheels. Oh man. I think that left front wheel on Katana is gone. Three-wheel drive, Luke. Three-wheel drive versus two-wheel drive. But wow. I see slightly peeled up forks on both versions of, uh, you know, the uh, Mystery Machine. The typical advice here, you know, if you're Katana, is pick one and kill it. Uh, you're going to rack up a huge amount of uh, judges' points if you can kill one of these robots. You can see the pink-bladed uh, robot here on Mystery Machine Ooh. is just pivoting there in one spot. Katana, dead in the water. Wow, Katana. Luke. Both of its... Oh, no, no. See? No, just one, one wheel. <laughs> flipped over. But it's Katana is not moving. 
That's I a knockout. The knockout. Wow, Corey Nason squeaking by here with the win. And one bot does look maybe it's embedded in the floor or at least knocked on its head, but because the other one was still mobile, that was enough to keep them in the match and take the win over Katana. Fantastic. Oh, that is... Yeah, it's just doing the thing, Lindsay. It's just <laughs> taking a little rest. It's just... It was a long day. I needed a little quiet time. It's just mostly dead. Only a flesh wound. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Okay. You know, like, uh, before... Like, if you've never fought a multi-bot before... It's a disorienting experience. Oh, you get yeah. kind of tunnel vision where you're like, well, I should probably go after the most active one. Mm -hmm. eh, maybe not. It's like, uh, you know, those um, <laughs> those concentration games where there's like the three cups and the ball yeah. and you have to follow, yes. you know, yeah. which one's in. Yeah. You kind of have to just zoom in to one of them yeah. in, in a fight like that and sure. try and block out the rest because those are just going to be distractions. I mean, they're still going to come for you, but uh, if you can't knock out one, there's, it's going to be very difficult for you to, you know, really uh, take the win in that type of situation. I've just heard from production, no surprise here, in a fight two fights ago, IDK and Kevin Biagini staying alive, defeating Black Havoc. It looks like that uh, blade of armor from yeah. the eye really tipped it <laughs> over. And also, um, Blue Cheese officially has won that match over wow. Killa Jewel. It will be continuing on. Wow. So a really exciting day for Matt Luther, who has some of the most infamous gremlins with that robot. Um, and he has not uh, been dissuaded. He has not you know, put it on a shelf and moved on to something else. Uh, and his hard work is really paying off here. So I'm very excited for him. And Blue Cheese to continue on into the bracket. Now, David Dreyer is just out now. Yeah. Uh, Killa Jewel is out and he's just been eliminated here uh, with, uh, with Katana. David, one of my favorite builders. I love Such to see a nice him here guy. and uh, hope to see him at another competition again soon. Oh, you know he'll be back. Yeah. You can't keep him away. He's like really gotten bit by the bug. Yeah. The you first can tell. couple times that he brought Killajul, just like 0 oh and 2, 0 oh and yeah. 2, maybe 1 and 2. And uh, I was like, wow, this, this guy's really got. <laughs> Stick to itness, you know? Yeah, like, a little bit of like back. masochism there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the robots now improving. So, like, yeah. I really think um, the engineering challenge here is scratching an itch that um, I think everyone here shares. Um, Absolutely. Up in the pits. Okay, I can see us loading into cage one. Yeah. That looks I exciting. I see uh, Johnny Stupas from TV. Gotham. Gotham versus Amphisbina, who is it's one of my favorite new designs in Amphisbina. Now, have you got a chance to see Gotham uh, really zoomed in up close? I mean, I've seen its matches earlier today, but just kind of from the distance of, of the screen. It just looks like your conventional tombstone yeah. or something, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the weapon on Gotham is actually a batarang. You know, Batman, batarang. Oh! It's like a How clever. Batman kind of shaped, yeah, battering. I mean, yeah, that's... You know, Batman would, like, throw it, and then it would, like, kind of, like, go around the uh, the room and, like, knock all of the guns out of the, uh, the bad guy's hands. You know? I, I believe this is where I have to come clean and say that Never? I don't... What? I'm not familiar with Batman. What? <laughs> I've seen um, the, the Heath Ledger one. Okay. But I think that is like the full extent of my knowledge. Okay. So I don't I don't know what a batarang is. I don't know if there was a batarang in uh, uh, the Heath Ledger. Have, it's like a boomerang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, exactly. Okay, okay, but yeah. shaped like a bat. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, Batman's got to have good marketing and branding. <laughs> you know, he's got a little department down there uh, behind the waterfall for marketing and branding. Does he live in a waterfall? Yeah, he lives in... A, oh, my God, Lindsay. He lives behind a waterfall. But in New York City? In Gotham? He's incredibly wealthy, okay? 
show me a waterfall in New York City and I will... It's uh, probably like an artificial waterfall somewhere. Okay. okay. It's probably in Westchester. It would be very obvious if there is a waterfall in New York City all of a sudden. I'd be like, oh, that is not natural. Yeah. Something's behind that. Let me investigate. I think it's maybe part of like Wayne Manor or something, which has got to be in Westchester somewhere. <laughs> That's where all of those tax evaders live. Okay. <laughs> All right, they fly their little bat helicopter home, you know? I'm Drive a into lot the here. waterfall. The waterfall parts, and then, you know, he's got the Batmobile, and then it, like, goes into, like, a whole thing. You know, that's where his lab is. I'm being told in the chat that the animated series is the best Batman. Yeah, I would agree with that. Didn't even know there was an animated series. Dear like, cartoons? God. You're a big cartoon watcher, Lindsay. Not really. I could stand to watch more, I, I guess, is what I'm learning. All right. So I've just heard from production that uh, Gotham is asking for a power cycle. Now, this is a last-ditch attempt to revive a dead robot by basically doing a hard reset on yeah. the power. They are hoping that uh, something gets jolted back to life. And uh, we're going to see. The chat's mad at me. Please forgive me. Um, are they are they fact checking me on any of my Batman? Uh, no, I think knowledge? I have fully distracted them enough by not knowing anything. Okay, that good. like even if you make a mistake, it's it's uh, not the focus. Good. I mean, listen, I will admit I'm not a big Batman like uh, expert either, but uh, I at least know what a battering is, Lindsay. That's the logo, all right? That's part of the logo from Batman. That I top. know. Okay, all right, that, good, and, good. And it goes into the sky. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Commissioner Gordon, like, uh, puts it up in the sky, and then Batman comes and talks to him in that low, gravelly voice, you know? I just need to have a power cycle, you know? I'm learning a whole lot right now. Yeah. It would be really ironic if in this match, uh, the weapon got <laughs> ripped away from the, the bot and it just went flying off like a real battering, you know? Now that is a sick logo. That's I cool. love that. Yeah. Well, Nick is now uh, in the way, but uh, it was looking good. Now let's see if Gotham can move over into the pink corner or if they're going to be forfeiting here. Oh, no. The, the doors are opening up again. It's not a good sign. I'm begging forgiveness in the chat. Someone said it's heresy. Okay. Yep, the weapon lock is going in. That's a bummer. After the highest high for them today, beating Psycho, this is not... This is not ideal. You gotta sometimes move it back and forward a little bit just to see if you can revive this dead robot, you know? I'm desperately hoping that, I don't know, some of Batman's magic imbues inside the robot itself. It's no magic. It's just engineering with Batman. Engineering and uh, resources. <laughs> just endless resources mm. for a vigilante billionaire, all right? I mean, that's kind of ma uh, its own kind of magic. No, it's not. No. There's no ethical billionaires on the planet. Okay, Batman got there through exploitation of work, okay? Luke, I'm going to steer us away from uh, this conversation, Anti perhaps. Anti-capitalists. <laughs> and I was going to talk more about <laughs> ba Batman. Okay. Um, uh, how about that, Batman? <laughs> There's no ethical billionaires, okay? All right? You know what? Batman could probably uh, be preventing a lot more crime by just investing in social services in Gotham. We're going to okay? look on over to Cage 4 where we got another hot fight coming our way. All right. Good. <laughs> now, I believe this is William Marchese and Killer Whale over in the pink corner facing off against, I believe, Wake and Bake. Yay! Alex Peza and Angel Vidal. Wake and Bake running on 420. God, this is... Somebody should have really thought this out when we chose this date. And uh, facing off against this hinged horizontal here in Killer Whale. William Marchese, one of my favorite builders in this sport. 
He's really, really got a good vibe. Um, he runs his own podcast. He's really obsessed with uh, American Ninja Warrior. And uh, he's an announcer for uh, Ninja Warrior type events. Oh, my wow! God! Killer Absolutely whale! exploding one half of Wake and Bake. I believe that that was Bake. Bake no more. <laughs> Wow. Oh, no, wait. Green is wake. Yeah, ba bake is gone. Wow. Ooh. Wow. Ripping off a part of that uh, that wheel guard, one half of that wheel guard. William Marchese has come so close to qualifying so many times. He wants it so badly, and it looks like he's going to make his his journey one step closer here today because neither wake nor bake are showing any movement of any kind. Wow, amazing. Wow. Maybe if they spend more time waking and less time baking. Yeah, you gotta get up a little earlier, wake and bake, to uh, defeat Killer Whale here. Killer Whale and William Marchese winning by knockout here. Fantastic. Now, William was up here earlier in the day and he was telling us, you know, this is a Killer Whale that I'm most confident in um, out of all of the versions of this robot. He's had some challenges in the past. It is a very weird design. Uh, you wouldn't typically expect to have a horizontal with a floppy front, you know? Yeah, it's he, an interesting choice. He likes to design for invertibility. Mm -hmm. Like, for him, that is the big thing that he's trying to solve for. And um, with this robot specifically, he was describing how um, a lot of um, opponents will just run a wedge against him. And this hinged front just allows that horizontal to kind of flex and um, deflect its way up a wedge, which is very cool. Oh, oh Luke. Yes. Oh, no. Cage two, flamethrowers, prepare yourselves for joy, delight, and heat. We've got Clyde, our top-ranked Beetleweight flamethrower here in the competition, facing off against Choose Kindness. Choose Kindness has won my heart absolutely today. It is has been absolutely fearless going against Silent X earlier and then um, in its second match, you know, just really dominating. And now here it is against Clyde. I don't see a lot of uh, flame retardant tape here. It looks just fully plastic, and I think, well, no, no, that's still Clyde. I think it's gonna uh, learn really quickly that um, if you have a plastic robot and you're going against a flamethrower, you gotta make uh, you gotta make some adjustments. Adjustments. This is a new and improved Clyde. It, they are injecting a ton more oxygen into the fuel mix, so you're gonna see a big explosion of flames here. Choose Kindness is a true rookie bot. This is their first build, first competition. I think you're going to learn here from Choose Kindness why you're going to why why you want to wrap Five, your your robot four, in tape. Three, yeah. Two. One, I gotta fight. say, I love Robots that. Robots fight. Okay. Here we go. She's kind of having some mobility issues right off the gate. I, oh, I see a little bit of uh, tape maybe on the wheels. I don't know how far that's going to go. But so far, no flame from Clyde. Can we see some? Yes, Clyde. May we please see some flame? One like equals one flame. Yeah. Everyone in the audience, we need to clap if we want the flamethrower to come out. This would be the... There Here we go! go! Tap. Oh, no! Wow! <laughs> Lulu. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah? Jeez, kindness. <laughs> Here we go. That was uh, the quickest tap out. Choose Kindness run by Lulu Nance from New York City and uh, Team Hewitt Robotics. Now, very fun. Uh, this is a robot that was part of Lulu's senior high school independent studies project. Um, I would absolutely give her an A. Yeah, yeah. 
She had a really, really successful uh, first fight of the day against Silent X. Really just brought it to Jameson Go and really put him, uh, put him on the back foot for the first part of that fight. And here with Clyde, a pretty strategic uh, tap out. As soon as the flamethrower <laughs> came out, she was like, no oh, thanks. I like my robot. I think she was maybe just hoping that like that flamethrower was disabled. Maybe there would be no flame. Maybe Gabe would just choose not to run fire. Uh, but yeah, here we see they're, they're making up. Yeah, all right, choose tap out. <laughs> choose tap out. Yeah. Choose, uh, you know, flame retardant tape next time. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, wow. Yeah, it's funny. It's like uh, usually your first fight, no aluminum tape against a flamethrower. Second and every other fight yes. after that, now you have the aluminum tape up in your toolbox, up in the pits, just in case you face somebody like Clyde. Yeah, I mean, if you have not seen the match with Herc Boost, please go watch that. It's on our YouTube. Uh, but we're going to go check out what is happening in cage one here. All right, this is another big box fight here. Now I can see CRC standing cage side. Let's hear some noise from CRC. Here we go. Combat Robotics at Cornell here. They've brought multiple robots and they have school spirit. Got great jerseys from CRC. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most school teams, they kind of uh, just show up with maybe a t-shirt, but these are full-on jerseys looking really sleek. All right. I believe that we are still in... Yeah, it looks like we're still in the qualifying rounds for the 12s. All right, so it is official. Gotham has forfeited, unfortunately. Uh, what a day they've had, a real roller coaster. Um, beating Jameson Go, making it through to the next fight, and then having to forfeit. Um, I hope that they, you know, really see today as a success, um, and I hope that we see them back again. Fantastic. Now here in the pink corner, so uh, your far view on the screen, that is the CRC robot. Here in the blue corner. Ooh. Now this is the robot, I, be I, I believe Kyle was telling me that the hub motor is within the weapon itself. What's, what an unusual shaped weapon. Is that just a block of metal? <laughs> It's got to do something. Well, we'll learn soon enough. Oh, they're switching sides oh. here. Okay, great. Wow, okay. That was a popular decision with CRC. It is about to get rowdy in here. Wow, awesome. Five, four, Beater three, B. Barker two, over there in the one. blue corner. Fight, robots fight. Kirby four in the pink. All right, good oh. little shower of sparks there. Got a good pin and hit strategy. Oh, absolute brutality from the kids at Cornell. Carnage over here. Herbie looking very confused, but that weapon on Beater B. Barker might be struggling. Wow. It might not matter, because Herbie 4 is having a, uh, being successfully pinned by the, the multi-bot from Beater B. Barker, and I'm not seeing a lot of movement out of Herbie. Tap out. There we the go, weapon. Here we go. The crowd goes nuts. This is surrounding sound cheering for CRC. This is something incredible to experience. The bars are empty in Ithaca tonight, and uh, every single <laughs> bartender is wondering why they're here in Norwalk, Connecticut. Fantastic. Wow. They've earned that win. They were waiting for a win today. That was, that was a, a, an explosive knockout against her before. 
Fantastic. Herbie, interesting design. I would like, like to uh, learn more about that weapon. I love a design that confuses <laughs> and confounds. We've been it doing like, this years. We're not confused very often, so that feels good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I could see, like, the sides going. Was it yeah. like a dual dress, cup motor dress? That There's sounds... not a lot of bite on the <laughs> weapon, not a lot of reach. They look like they were squares, Lindsay. It looked like the reach was zero. Yeah. Flush with uh, the robot itself. Yeah, yeah. And very far out <laughs> from the body, you know? Yeah. I'd like to learn more. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that we'll have that opportunity because I believe it's going home now. I would imagine so. Yeah. Beater B. Barker, though, uh, probably advancing into the brackets. Just waiting for Gil to confirm. I'm sure that he will. Um, but uh, fantastic. I'd love to see a uh, Cornell team doing well here at, in the competition. Oh, absolutely. We, uh, we walked in uh, this morning from, uh, from the Cornell team, and it was just like a never-ending line of like, <laughs> red and black jerseys <laughs> into the parking lot. Those jerseys look really good. Yeah. I hear there's going to be some really uh, fun jerseys for the June 1st event coming up. Cool. Uh, but uh, you know, I'll, let, I'll let that information kind of trickle out as a little teaser. Yeah. I love a good jersey. Yeah, tune in June 1st to uh, see some incredible jerseys. Yeah. And some great fights. At least, if nothing else, great jerseys. Yeah. But I do think good fights, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love to see, you know, uh, uniformed people show up. You know, yeah. it really shows that your team is investing in yeah. your look and feel. Yeah in your brand, in your story here at NHRL. And CRC is just obsessed with the uh, the competition. They love to go up against the best of the best in the world. I'm really excited for them. I love their energy. Uh, I'm happy that Beater B. Barker is continuing on because that means that they will be continuing on in the stands with us today. Is Beater Barker, is that like a Spider-Man reference? Speaking of Batman. Oh, see, I know Peter Parker. Okay. But the B is throwing me off. I was almost thinking like Peter Bob Barker. Barker. But that I doesn't don't make think any these sense. these kids know who Bob Barker is. Spay and neuter your pets. We are twice as old as them. Luke, you don't have to remind me of that. Yeah. No, we, we literally could be their parents, Lindsay. Let's look at what's happening in Cage 2. Okay. I can see Silent X over there here in uh, the left. Facing off against perhaps... It looks like Impact. Yeah, Gil has just confirmed. It is Impact. So it is Lars Elliott facing off against Jameson Go very, very early here in the bracket. This is typically a fight that you would see at the very end of the night. So we're going to be seeing speed and uh, massive hits, perhaps roofing here. And one of these top-tier Roboteers is going to be going home early in the evening. Now, Lindsay is uh, stepping away to uh, take her own little nap in the green room. And uh, joining me here is Kyle. Hello, Kyle. Hi. Lindsay's nap is well-deserved. She's been up here for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kyle, I feel like... Uh, I haven't really called fights with you in a, a while, and I, I miss it, so this is great. It's been a minute. Yeah, man. Now, we've got Lars, um, uh, Lars Elliott and Impact. Uh, this is a high school sophomore here in the blue corner facing off against one of the greatest combat robots alive today, Jameson Go. Builder of Sawblaze, Builder of Megatron, Builder of Psycho, Builder of Silent Spring, Builder of Silent X and has more golden dumpsters than I think anyone in this competition. <laughs> I think you're right. Uh, the last time I asked him, I was like, is it 12? Is it 13? How many? He's like, I, I don't know. I got to go home and count. <laughs> and it wasn't like a flex. It was just a genuine, it's, it's a large and kind of uncountable number. Yeah, it, it's been so many years he's been at this competition just yeah. racking them up. Yeah. Now, Lars, uh, I got to say, was stressing his parents out earlier today. Okay. Because he was debating switching to a, um, like, RC-style controller. Why? Why, Lars? Why? 
you know, with the wheel on the side and, and all that. Yeah. Um, he, he was just interested in trying it out. And his mom was like, this works, don't do that. And he finally went back to obviously using the controller that he's used to. Oh, I think no. the, his multi-bot's gonna use that controller, but yeah, way to stress your parents out. Let's change things last minute, you know? Kyle, I can see that look of frustration on Lars. He's throwing up his hands. He doesn't like it. This robot may not it might not be even moving out of the, its square. This might be a very fast tap out. That would be unfortunate. Robbing the fans of a highly anticipated match. Oh, it's moving. Oh, it's spinning. All Lars, right. why'd you throw up your hands, Lars? It was working, then it wasn't working. Now it's working again. Hopefully it works for the next you, three minutes. When you have Jameson go on the other side of the box, your robot has to be working Five, 100%. Four, yeah, it's a little nerve-wracking. It two, can't be running at 80%. J-Mo will kill you. Robots fight. Yeah, I can see some locked up, uh, locked up wheels there. Yeah, it's not happy. And you can see everything on Silent X is functioning just fine. Here's his moment. If he can capitalize here. He definitely can't. He's got that left side drive all locked up. JMO comes in weapon to weapon, baby. I love it. Not afraid at all. Oh! oh! Yeah, dropping! Jameson initiated that engagement, but he's definitely the one that ended up on the roof. And you can see Lars trying to drive defensively, keep that weapon pointed towards Silent X. Oh my God. Every time he goes in there, he's getting roofed himself. Oh. Another roofing, that's three in a row. And a pin from the minibot. Incredible. The geometry here favors impact, even though it has hobbled drive. Another massive roofing. Yeah, that was amazing. A minute 45 left here in this fight. Jameson Go is spending more time. Oh, Something's no. peeled up. Incredible. It's That's a tap, a tap out. out. Lars Elliott has won. Lars Elliott has won. Beating Jameson Go. Incredible. That was an amazing fight. A prime example of why you should never give up. Incredible Lars Elliott killing a massive opponent in Silent X. Defense, 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 defense. Wow, you can see that weapon just dangling dead on Silent X. Yeah. Lars Elliott's that custom weapon here. Oh, wow, he is so <laughs> excited. I Gino love that. is so proud of him, too. You gotta love the support. Jameson Go sees so much of himself in Lars Elliott. Jameson has been in this sport since he was a, uh, a teenager, and Lars is beginning his, his run. He's been competing for five, six years, one of the most aggressive drivers on the East Coast, uh, this, this young high school sophomore, and we are going to be seeing a ton of Lars Elliott in this sport in the future. Amen to that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know this. JMO is original Florida Bot Mafia. Back when he was a teenager living in Florida, he would go to all those competitions back in the day. Georgia. He's originally from Georgia, isn't he? Yeah, but he did all the Florida events. Ah, uh, okay. Got it. Look at that. You can see that uh, that hub motor just got popped out of its housing. Uh, probably shearing those bolts, if I was going to guess. Yeah, that's not happy at all. Huge, huge amount of, uh, of energy there. And even though Lars was not able to drive the way that he wanted to, winning just by the power of his weapon, fantastic. And, you know, much props to that front wedge on impact. Did a ton of the heavy lifting there. And the, and the multi-bot. Yeah. Yeah. Massive pins throughout the fight, too. Good multi-bot driver can really, really help save you, uh, especially when your main robot has, has, uh, has issues. Yeah. Now, look at this. Two Hawaiian shirts on the, uh, the stream. Love that. I Although, wore the, mine has uh, Hello Kitty on it. Where'd you get that from? Uh, Target. 
What? Yeah. Like recently? Like last week. I this bought it for like this event. out? Yeah. Oh my God, I'm going to get one. Yeah, I bought it because my daughter watches the stream sometimes and okay. I, she loves Hello Kitty. Is this like in a kid's size or no, they this sell is it a, for like human adults? This is, a, this is an adult medium that I'm wearing right now. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> good. I love it. <laughs> I'm going to, like, uh, cop the style here. I love it. Yeah, it's pretty nice. I like it. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad that I got to come back for that epic battle between those two amazing three-pound competitors. That was great. That was huge. That was a big bottleneck in the bracket for Lars Elliott. Here's hoping that he's going to stop experimenting and just get that robot to bulletproof reliability. Experiment after you go home. Uh, it's hard for Lars. His brain's always, you know, popping. He's yes. always cooking. He's always thinking of new things. Yes. Um, and he's one of the better drivers that we have here. He's just got to get the bot to a place where it really showcases that. He's an amazing driver. Yeah. Yeah. Coming off a really strong showing at Motorama. This is his first NHRL after competing at Motorama, going very deep in the bracket there in the Beatles and uh, showing off why. He's one of the top ranked Beatles here in the competition. Impact is his fully custom robot and he is doing great. Yeah, he really is. He's got a great little crew of young builders that he's working with, that he's yeah. iterating with. They all kind of share ideas and they get together and do builds together. Um, it's cool to see that kind of community building within the community of combat robotics, these similar age guys all kind of working together. Johnny Sumba is one of the more notable folks that he kind of yeah. collaborates with. Um, it's cool. It's, it's very the, cool. It's the next generation in this sport. Yeah. Um, the, this sport allows you to compete for many, many years. Uh, you know, like, when you think of drivers like Lars Elliott, when you think of drivers like Aria D'Ambrosio, it is not impossible to think of them eventually having a 50 or 60 year career in this sport. Yeah, absolutely. And getting started early is a massive advantage. They're building these friendships, they're finding their group here, and that is the group that's gonna propel them and build cooler and cooler and bigger and bigger robots. Um, so that is just awesome, awesome. Man, can we just give a little bit of flowers to Aria, by the way? She's practiced her entire week, right? Just nonstop, all of her spare time has been thrown into that robot. She's driving beautifully today. The robot's performing very well. It's so cool to see, and she's doing it with style in that really cool leather jacket. I love it. I wish <laughs> I could pull off a leather jacket. <laughs> Apparently, that was her idea. Yeah. All right, we're going to go over to cage one. I see a Halloween-themed robot over there, like a jack-o'-lantern-themed robot. You mean like a smack-o'-lantern? Yeah, I think so. I'm waiting for production to confirm because there's a lot of orange robots and I'm seeing it at an angle. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's Mac lantern Yeah. He's the only Halloween-themed robot left in the competition today. Wait, is Gil driving? Five. Ashley oh, is going to be driving, driving. Uh, Dude, the robot here in the one, pink corner. Fight. Robots fight. Wow, this is a hammer bot. Ashley Beckman, our floor manager here uh, on the production team, being pushed into the corner. Ashley, no! You can see uh, she's wearing AirPods. I'm assuming it's, you know, uh, death metal or something. Most likely, yeah, there. something to get her in the zone while driving circuit. You can see the, the blade hammered kind of ax on circuit. Yeah. At this point, uh, the play, I think, is to jam that uh, hammerhead right into the uh, the, the, hor the, 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 the vertical oh. here. Ah, side armor getting stripped off the of circuit there. Smack o' Lantern doing a great job. Smack o' Lantern very slowly pursuing its prey. I think that it knows that uh, it's probably got this. Again, pushing Ashley up against the rail. Wow, I can see wires coming out. This is gross. Yeah, it is. Paul Tortorici of Smack O'Lantern doing a great job controlling the pace of this fight, stripping parts away from circuit. And taking those hammer hits like it ain't no thing. Well, I think it is no thing, uh, Kyle. <laughs> those hammer hits are going pretty slowly. <laughs> it's almost like a hammer in name only. A ho-no, all right? <laughs> 
<laughs> yep. All right. I'll or, be. Uh, I'll, I'll go with it. I'll go with a, it. A hino. A hammer. And, yeah. Yeah. There you go. I know. I know. I know. Hammer and name only. Uh, yeah. Paul Tortorici, he's a, he's a relatively new builder. He's just started this year. Yeah. Smack Lantern started out as a almost entirely Home Depot sourced custom build. Yeah. Now looking a lot more like a robot you see at a professional event like this. It's uh, yep. It's got a real weapon on it. It's got, it's got the speed holes in the butt. There you go. 3D printed armor on the <laughs> side. You know, it's pretty nice. Yeah. All right, looks like Ashley was stuck in the corner and, and that out. would be a knockout. Ashley, give us a wave. There you go. Ashley, no stranger to getting knocked out in the box, but it's been a long time. Ashley is, um, she's really keeps the operation running here uh, on competition day. Yes. Typically you find her running um, pit control upstairs and now she's the floor manager down here, really directing the flow of where people go and when and um, really talking a lot to the production room and making sure that everything is moving s uh, smoothly down here. We talk about putting out metaphorical fires. Ashley puts out both metaphorical and physical fires on a regular basis here at NHRL. Yeah, even metaphysical. I've heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Um, so circuits, I'm going to guess, eliminated, right? Probably, Maybe? yeah, that's their second fight of the day. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, uh, Ethan Shipley, the builder of circuits, uh, had Gil run it the first time, I he think. He did, yeah. And then uh, Ashley the second time? Yeah, two non-robot drivers drive the robot. I mean, Ashley's driven before. She has, but I don't think she would call that her primary vocation, her yeah. strong suit. Right, yeah. Gil doesn't drive robots, ever. Yeah. I guess Skill's a video gamer, you know? Probably. No, that's why he's into board games, actually. I'm sure there's a car themed board game. <laughs> uh, maybe the car in Monopoly. No, I'm sure there's car themed board games. Right now, <laughs> Gil is like, uh, he's thinking of like six or seven car He's probably board got, games. yeah, a bunch that he's got probably on the shelf at home right now. Yeah, yeah it's true. Like a ticket to drive or something? I'm know? sure that's a game. Oh, he says, I just heard through my headset, Gil has over 300 <laughs> car-themed board games that exist. Gil is going on a board game cruise, by the way. Did yeah, he tell you this? actually going That's out awesome. onto the ocean to play board games with friends. I yeah. kind of love that. They, I think they have to zip, zip tie the, uh, the board game down to the table because, you know, it's a moving object going I, through the, the ocean. I think that it's, uh, they took an entire conference room for the entirety of the cruise and dedicated it just to this group of board game players. Yeah. Um, you know, most people go on to cruises for the free booze and the plethora of delicious food. Cruises have free booze. You've got to buy the booze package, Kyle. Yeah, but it's free after you buy the booze package. That's not free, okay? <laughs> By definition, that's not free. That's a prepaid booze package, Kyle. Uh, fair enough, fair Me, enough. Me, I go for the all-you-can-drink, like, um, you know, uh, soft serve machine, okay? You oh, just I put get your that. mouth underneath it. And, you know, you don't have to drink water for like a week. That does not sound sanitary. All right, so just a quick reminder, we are about an hour and 45 minutes away from our prime time coverage where we will be going over the, uh, the finals and the uh, actual bracket competitions of all of these weight classes. We're getting down to the wire as far as the qualifiers for all of them go. It's been a really weird day today, I'll say. We've had some really amazing fights. We've had a lot of dropouts. We've had just a lot of new bot jitters throughout the day and some really cool designs. I'm still thinking about that soft serve machine, Kyle. I'm sure you are. Yeah. You know, Just you should was... build a soft serve themed robot. I need robot. to be on like a soft serve themed uh, cruise, you know? Is that a thing? No, it's gotta I don't be think a thing. so. Yeah. I just like triple the number of soft serve machines, you know? One in every room. Sign me up. Take my money. <laughs> yeah. You can have your coffee soft serve in the morning. Yeah. Your sleepy time tea soft serve at night. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'd be lying if I told you that I haven't uh, priced out how much it would be to have a residential soft serve machine, like, just in my house. Uh, that's a thing. Yeah, it absolutely is a thing. Well, you oh. know, if you're a person of beans, it is. Yeah. Or, or someone guess... who's really, really focused on, on saving for one thing over the course of many years. And that's you know? a residential soft serve machine. I mean, I'd call it residential. It's probably got to be commercial, just uh, given the <laughs> volume... <laughs> That it would probably get used, Kyle. 
I love that idea, actually. And you as a parent would, you know, probably uh, yeah. share with your daughter to some degree. No, she can't touch daddy's uh, soft serve machine. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't go in that uh, basement. That's where the soft serve machine is, okay? <laughs> That's where I go downstairs and I just make I'm, myself Sundays and just cry. I'm looking forward to your soft serve theme robot ne- next season. Yeah, well, you know, like, is that a liquid technically if you're expelling soft serve ice cream all over the not, inside of the box? Not at first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right. How it, cold does it have to be to be technically a solid? I don't know. I mean, we've allowed hot glue goo into the box at some point, so. Lawyer ball. Okay. That's what we're playing. We're playing lawyer ball. I would love ball. to see a soft serve ice cream machine in the box. Fantastic. Like, but just like shooting violently soft serve at its opponent, you know? <laughs> now, speaking of weird box, very, or very soon we have something very big coming from Tom Farkas okay. that he'll be sharing with everybody today. Uh, it's going to be about 8.30 p.m. on primetime. They're still getting it ready, and I believe it's actually got to come over from 50 Day Street. Yeah, yep, yep. I have, I have heard that, too. Uh, this has been a project that's been in the works for a very long time. Yeah, and, and uh, speaking of Lawyer stadium. Ball, it is using, like, all of the weight bonuses. Yeah, yep, yeah. Multi-box. And unconventional locomotion. Yeah. Also, just uh, popularity, you know? <laughs> if your robot is popular enough, we will bend the rules for you. Yeah, this might even be the first robot you could fit a human inside. And from, from what I've heard, Tom Farkas might be in the robot during the battle. Why? That's so dangerous. What are you talking about? Are you serious? Is there, They're really talking No, about Tom that? would never do that. Oh, my God. I am so naive, all right? <laughs> I feel like we've we've revealed the whole thing. We have to like uh, kind of keep the, the people guessing. The mystique. Yeah, it's good for our YouTube engagement numbers, Kyle. I don't even think you could fit inside of it, honestly. Listen, if but... you're watching on YouTube, just stick around for another three hours, okay? Yeah, you'll like, find it. Comment and subscribe, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Smash. Yeah. Hit that notification bell. Okay. Smash the button with yeah. the bell. If you want, buy some merch on YouTube. That's pretty cool. You could even buy some positively hysterical merch, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you want, you know, we're also selling, like, uh, Kyle's hair clippings. You know, like, I'll just, uh, you know, send it to you in the mail. It's more likely to find my beard clippings, but... <laughs> Nobody wants that. <laughs> Nobody wants that, Kyle. That's... So, Luke, what Ugh. bot have you been the most into today? That's a good question. I am loving Clyde. I yeah. think that Clyde is having an amazing run. Um, it is looking bulletproof and putting on the most entertaining fights in the Beatles. For sure. I am really, really looking forward to seeing Clyde's run today. And he has got a lot of juice. Like, he is doing, doing great. Yeah. The fires that he is putting inside of other bots are permanent. They are long-lasting throughout the entire matchup. It's been really cool to see. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kyle, did you see on the stream earlier that uh, they threw a hat at me? No. I was wearing the hat earlier. I saw you were wearing a hat. Yeah. Um, do you think I should wear the hat again? What do you think? That's up to you. I think I should. Should I wear it like front facing or you don't backward? Sit, try backwards for a while. Really? Let's see how it works. Okay, I can try that. Just give it a shot. I'm going to look like a real suburban dad, all right? I'm into it. Here we go. I will say we're getting ready for... Uh, Page one. Oh, good. Right. This is going to be anxiety oh my God. versus chunky. 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 These are both Georgia Tech bots. Chunky looking brand new. <laughs> anxiety looking a little different. Anxiety, a perfect name for you know this Gen Z bot. Fantastic. <laughs> Facing off against Chunky. Chunky. Chunky looking good. Um, uh, chunky V. There's Why is Chunk it Eve? Eve? Because of this iteration of Chunky? Chunky 4, so oh, Chunky got it. Eve. I kind of like Chunky 4 better. It reminds me of a Rocky movie. Yeah. Isn't that the one where he fought the Russians? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> In space. In space? Yeah. So there's Anxiety. Five, what four, is Anxiety's weapon, three, Kyle? Two, uh, I believe it's an undercutter. One. Fight. Okay. Robots fight. Oh, I see the undercutter. Here yeah. we go. It's nice to see Chonky working. 
It was wow. uh, on fire before the match even started when it went up uh, against Jamison Go last time around. This heavy shell spinner getting popped in the air. Wow, it is looking great. Yeah, I'm not surprised. That's a lot of energy that just got absorbed by anxiety. And they said, we're done. We're going to tap that right out. Wow. When you hear it here in the, the room, it is just so heavy. The hits were heavy. The landings were heavy. That spin up was heavy. Now that Fantastic. is a carved out billet aluminum shell spinner. Wow. Uh, in a very expensive build, especially for a college team. They put a lot of resources into that. It looks phenomenal. They put a lot of effort into the aesthetics of this bot. Not something this team traditionally has done, but man, I think it was worth it. It looks great. That is amazing. So this is Team Robo Jackets um, from the, uh, is it Georgia Tech? Georgia Tech, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, Robo Jackets got kind of like a... Uh, yeah, uh, like yellow jacket kind of theme here. And so you can see those those honeycomb uh, design there on Chunk Eve. Oh, I'm hearing from Control. This might have been an accidental, unintentional tap out. That is uh, anxiety inducing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, anxiety might have been true to their name and <coughs> anxiously accidentally bumped into the tap out button. Got to be careful about that. Now, when this happens traditionally, you know, the teams discuss and they discuss whether or not they want to restart from where the fight tapped out. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes they choose not to do that. We'll have to see how this goes. Is that really what happens? I think, I think if you hit the tap out button, you've, you've tapped out. Well, that's the thing. It might, um, it might not have been the team. That's what we have to determine. Oh. I see. Yeah, we have to determine what the heck happened. Maybe like it, a ref bumped into a tap out button or something. I think you bumped into it. What? No, yeah. you saw my hands the entire time I've been up here. <laughs> yeah, they were trying to put a hat on. You're doing <laughs> weird flippy things with that hat. Anything could have happened. Yeah, that's true. Interesting. So we're trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. And uh, once we do, we'll be able to move forward. But typically, if it's not the team's fault, we are able to start the match from that point, so we got to determine what the deal is first, and then we'll get back to it. I'm sure these Robo Jackets players want to continue this match against each other if they can. Just got to wait for the investigation to finish. Chunk Eve is looking so gorgeous. I really that hate robot. that pronunciation. Can we call it Chunky Four? Chunk, Chunk Four. Look at you can see the name right there. It'll be called Chunk Four. Yeah, I guess you're right. Chunk Four. I'm Chunk okay four. with Chunk 4. I mean, I like the name Chunk 4 as yeah, well. I'm okay with it. I, they were just calling it Chunky at the pits. Chunk Eve. You weren't hearing the V. It was I'm, a silent V. I'm pretty sure they were not calling it Chunk Eve. The bot looks great, though. I love a shell spinner. It's like such an old school design. It really is. It is like guaranteed to make contact. Uh, you know, you cannot attack it before getting hit in the face yourself. And uh, when you see them working, it is terrifying, terrifying. Wow. How do you think they got the logos on there? They look like, um, like they, were, they were lasered in or something. Yeah, 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 like, uh, like full on printed directly to the metal. It looks great. Awesome, awesome. It's a beautiful robot. And it works so much better when it's not on fire. <laughs> Which was their unfortunate start to this competition. They were going into a matchup, a rematch actually, against uh, Jameson Go and Megatron. And uh, right at the beginning of the match, as they were getting ready to start their weapon, they just burst into flames. Not exactly sure what happened there, but it wasn't good. That's not how you design the robot. Chunk four. All right. Got it. Chunk four. And uh, the tap out button on the side of the cage is a big red button. It does protrude from the cage. I'd say about four inches. It's hard to hit it, though, accidentally. You'd have to, like, kind of trip into it or something. But it is about shoulder height. So you could, like, accidentally bump it with a shoulder or an elbow, depending on what you're doing. Rookie mistake, Kyle. It's true. 
I did think there was more fight in anxiety, but the, the tide was turning, so it wasn't that surprising. So Seemed like a conservative tap out, but you know. Yeah, especially this early. Now they haven't opened it up again, so it looks like they're gonna be back on here. Three, two, one. We are back on here nice. with this fight. And you can see the weapon still doesn't seem to be functioning on an anxiety, but that's okay. They got a big old wedge out front. They can take some hits. Wow. Nice shot there from Chonky. Chonk Eve. Chonk four. Anxiety's we'll right uh, drive is locked up. They can just pivot here in place. And Chonk Eve just circling its prey. Looking nice for shot. that weapon on weapon hit. Yeah, anxiety not functioning much right now. And Chonky doing a great job going after the one wheel that is working. Oh, is the weapon coming back online? I think that that is just uh, just kinetic energy, energy transfer. Yeah. yeah. Energy from Chonky. Oh, that smoke coming out of the, it looks like out of the hub for the weapon motor. Wow. I can see some magic smoke coming out of anxiety. That is anxiety inducing as well, Kyle. Yeah, I don't like it. That's flames. I a see flames. Bit of flames. Yeah. And that robot is dead. Yeah, it's cooking. It's wow. cooking. Now I got a question from uh, production. You know, can you tell us what that, uh, that big uh, handlebar looks like on the top of Chonk Eve? Oh, that is their self-writing mechanism. Yes. So about one out of every four times this style of bot gets flipped over, that self-writing bar will actually self-write them. <laughs> yeah, so one of the challenges when you have a shell spinner is that when you get knocked onto your head, uh, you just spin forever, yeah. okay, until someone comes and rescues you. So uh, if you have a self-writing bar there, oh, look at this, Fluffy blasting. Thanks, Fluffy. Uh, Blasting anxiety with uh, flame suppressant. You gotta love it. It's pretty good. Um, what what would instead happen when you have that self-writing bar is that instead you will um, land at an angle, and if you can turn your um, your shell, and you have enough power, you can flip yourself back. Yeah, onto it your gives shoes. you leverage to flip back over from just the force of your shell. Now, I, there was a Reddit user, of, like it was last year or the year before, who did the math on this. Okay. And throughout history, it does average out to about one out of every four self-writing attempts with that bar works. Thank God for Reddit, Kyle. Um, well, this was math that was done for Bloodsport, essentially, because Bloodsport was considering whether or not to use it in their design going forward. You've got to. It's your only way of self-writing. One out of four times. Is it worth the wait one out of four times? Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Uh, you know, it's, it, it can also help you out with your direction in the box, you True. know, um, as you're driving and kind of like gives you a north star. To, yeah, uh, knows where the back, where it points to that, usually the back of the bot when it's pointing. Yeah, yeah. Um, because there's wheels typically underneath uh, the, the shell. Well, this one's got a shuffle, but yeah, same, same concept. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you can kind of remain pointed in the correct direction. Right. Yeah. It's tough like when it's a circle, you know? Hard yeah, to, uh, you don't know what you got. You don't know what you got when it's yeah. a circle. But it is, uh, some bots use like LEDs to tell. Pretty sophisticated, the LED, you know? No, no. Because it's got a pulse at the speed that your shell is going. Well, no, at. you just put them on the chassis of the bot. You don't put them on the shell. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what, uh, there's a couple of bots that do it that way. So you just see it as it's flashing. Yeah, you'll have like green for the front, red for the back, and you okay. just, and then the shell spins on top of it. Right. And you just see the lights coming out from under it. So if your bar does get knocked off, you still know where the front of the bot is. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, it's doable. You could do it. Some people are actually adding wedges and forks onto shell spinners now. Yeah, you know, like we, we've seen that um, with flipping cuts, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I never really thought I would see, like, a an offensive wedge, like uh, and a wedge that's designed to pop you in the air versus, you know, keep you away from the robot. Uh, but it's working really well with Flip and Cut. It's awesome. 
Now, there is a big difference between the shell style spinner and then the melty brain style spinner of yeah. uh, flip and cut. Just to, to clarify, right? The melty brain, the but entire you could bot. But put those offensive wedges on a robot like this. You could, you could. Yeah. But you could also just put static wedges on the front of a shell spinner. And yeah. the shell spins on top of them. I suppose. It yeah. happens. You've got like some little forks or something, some teeth that are sticking out from the bottom. There are definitely bots that have done it. Yeah, but then you don't get that same kind of like ground scraping force, you know? True. It's not an undercutter necessarily. But you do it's get more ground, like more close to the ground than you would normally get with the shell. And that's important. So with the shell spinner, the yeah. actual armor of the bot, the entire body of the bot is the weapon. Sure. All of the force of the body of that weapon or the, sh the shell of that weapon is kind of in that. Yeah. Um, and you're able to get a lot of force behind that. Not as much force, one might argue, as a melty brain, where it's the entire robot is essentially yep. spinning. Um, two wheels usually, spinning at high speed, and you pulse the motors on those wheels to kind of guide the robot. Depending on how good your programming is, it's you can control magic. it really well. Yeah, it's cursed. Or really poorly. Um, yeah. With shell spinner, your wheels are doing what wheels do, which is why it's important to know what direction your bot is actually facing. Right, right. Yeah. And the stick helps. Yeah. <laughs> Allegedly. Um, listen, I'm out here, uh, you know, selling hats left and right, Kyle. What, what do you think? Is it a good look? It's a good look. Yeah. You're a good hat wearer. I, I don't typically wear hats, you know. I like my, my bald head. But, yeah. um, you know, I listen to the people. YouTube wants me to cover up. That's fine. Is right? that true? Is that really what it is? Or do yeah. they just like Sparky? Uh, listen, they, they they made a poll whether I should keep the hat or not. And... Uh, Oh, and you lost the it's poll? Like, it's like well, 89 you're, to 11. Your bald hat lo head lost the poll? People hate it. It's really just like reflects light. Are you sure that it's not that they love Sparky, our wonderful robot mascot here in an no. HRL? No, they love to make me feel uncomfortable, okay? I don't like wearing hats, okay? I feel like it just uh, covers up my signature... My signature look, okay? Uh-huh, yeah. I can have anything underneath this hat, okay? There's somebody who's logging in for the first time. They've heard about NHRL. They're like, oh, my God, there's just a guy wearing a hat. That's weird, you know? Is it? Yeah. I mean, it is the logo of the organization. That's true. I am on brand. That's You're good. on brand. Yeah. It's good. These hats are 30 bucks each in the store. You know, I, I'm looking over there. We've sold almost all of them. Um, yeah. And it's because of you. It's because of me. Yeah. It's because you're the hat model. Yeah, there you go. You can see this hat. Uh, the, the thing that I'm waiting for is when I'm out in public wearing, like, kind of my stealth NHRL gear, someone else gives me a knowing look, and they're like, ah, oh, ah. that is. All right, we are about to go into cage two. Good. Where uh, the newest flamethrower is going to throw their hat into the ring. This is Kaza. Oh, I love Kaza. Kaza's amazing. Kaza's melted a bot in half already today. And they'll be taking on the aptly named and themed Mystery Machine. Multi-bot configuration. Built by Corey Nason, but driven by Corey and Zach Knight. Two of the best drivers in this weight class by a lot. Now, as you can see, Mystery Machine, pretty easy to pick out. They're, uh, they're colored and themed like the famed bus of the Mystery Machine. Scooby-Doo's mode of transport while going from mystery to mystery. Unmasking creepy old dudes as they uh, try to scam insurance companies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I love that uh, in, in Scooby-Doo's world, um, ghosts don't exist, but um, ghoulish capitalists do. Ghoulish capitalists, yes. There is, uh, like, one episode where there's real zombies. What? Yep. And the movie has real supernatural stuff going it's on. It's not right? canon. Okay. Um, now, the winner of this match, very unluckily, is going to go up against Red Panda in the next round, which is our, like... One of our top-ranked Beatles. It's already qualified for the finals later this year, and uh, it is a very formidable opponent. So uh, they, these opponents here, these two robots, are facing another choke point in the bracket. I love a flamethrower, Kyle. We're looking at one. Wild, uncontrolled flames here from Kazaa. We can see the Kazaa builder here. Five, Facing off against Corey four, Nason and Zach three, Knight. Two, one. 
Fight, robots fight. Wow, a chaotic start for one half of Mystery Machine. Here comes that flame! Incredible, it's as hot as the sun, Kyle! Oh my goodness, look at all of that fire. This bot's goal is to pin and uh, burn its opponent. Very hard to concentrate when you've got two to go after, but right now they're just blowing flame at everybody. The geometry on Mystery Machine is weird. It's not quite right. These robots are so powerful that they're spending time on their face when they're trying to go forward. Look at that. Uh, catching one and just burning it to, yeah, to nice pieces here. Yeah, nice. Cook, cooking right on that wheels where the pinnacle of the flame's hitting. And look at all the smoke lingering on that half of Mystery Machine. Wow. Is that the Scooby half or the Shaggy half? I think that's the Scooby half. It looks like uh, the the pink uh, the pink bladed uh, half of Mystery Machine. Uh, the weapon has gone down. Looks like that belt is hanging loose. Here comes Kaza on its head. Does it have any more fuel left? One of the things about facing a flamethrower, it's not just the burn damage, it's the melt damage. If you have rubber components or plastic components, wow. they get really loosey-goosey when they just put them in direct flame for a while. Knocking Kaza up against the rail. Wow, back onto its feet. Here we go. Self-writing, beautiful. Everybody gets one assistance in self-writing from the house bot. Now let's see if this weapon comes back on the orange-bladed half of Mystery Machine. So I believe the weapons the, on both sides of Mystery Machine might be down. I believe the orange bladed half is the shaggy half. Oh, I see that. And the yellow bladed weapon is the Scooby half. I see that. Hey, you think that's yellow? That's clearly pink, Kyle. Well, fair. Pink, the pink bladed half. Now, both of them can eat an entire 12 foot long sub sandwich in one <laughs> gulp. Yeah. Strange theme to bring to the 420 event here. I don't see what you're talking about. All right, 40 seconds left here in this fight. Very likely this will go to the judges. This will be a fun one for them to call. This is a, a much closer match than, than, than it looks like. You've got one half of Mystery Machine down a weapon and uh, impaired driving. But Kaza, no more flame on Kaza. I think so. they run out of fuel relatively soon. Yeah. It is off-the-shelf components, by the way, running this flamethrower, which is not an easy thing to do. Very impressive. As we enter the last 10 seconds here, these robots have escaped the countout. This one will go to the judges, and this one will be a close judges call, I think. Now, the winner of this match will be going on to face Jaron Leapson from Team WPI and his dominant vert, Red Panda. Now, Luke, I have to ask you, how many devices did you ruin with Kazaa back in 2001? Uh, yeah, I bricked a couple of, you know, IBM ThinkPads. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell you a true story, okay? Uh, so, yeah, 2000, 2001, I graduated from high school, just graduated, and I uh, was working my first real job. Yeah. Of course, I'd worked at, like, restaurants and stuff like that before. But, uh, yeah, working for a consumer electronics startup, and I uh, was their first uh, marketing hire. And um, we had a T1 line into the office. Now, that's no big deal today, but back, but back in then, the day, that's, that's fast. a big, big deal. Yeah. And we were obsessed with LimeWire, Kazaa, Napster, right? And uh, every night, eh, 4.30 or whatever, you're getting ready to, uh, to leave, everyone fires up their P2P file sharing services, and we just go downloading hundreds of albums, okay? You wake up the next day, you're so eager to go into work, right? You get in, you see, okay, all right. Downloaded 200 albums. There's like these 50 or so that are just stuck, right? Yeah, won't move, yeah. And uh, then you go through the horrifying, uh, like, kind of just click and see what you actually brought in, okay? <laughs> <laughs> we were we brought so many horrific viruses into that poor startup's office, and yeah, we were bricking computers left and right. However, I had a pretty sweet uh, collection of burned DVDs 
burn CDs, you know? It's a, a miracle that we got any real work done. Yeah, no, it was a, it was a really strange and new time back in 2001. Awesome. It was, it was awesome. pretty cool. It was, it was incredible. Pretty cool. Yeah. I like the, uh, the mislabeled songs. Yeah, yep. You're like, oh, I'm going to download this Modest Mouse song, and then it's yeah. like the Beastie Boys. That's That was fun. Or, you know, you're getting Rick Rolls, you know, on uh That was pretty wire, regular, yeah. You know? Yeah. I, really, I feel like that's where the Rick Roll really started. Yeah. It, it got to the point where we had downloaded every single movie we could think of. Yeah. You know? Like, we just stopped coming up with movies that we wanted. <laughs> like, hundreds of DVDs, Kyle. It was incredible. So we are going to be heading over into Cage uh, 1 very shortly. Yeah. And it's going to be Amphispina versus Arsenal. Okay, good. Now, uh, Arsenal here is a college team. David and Yeses from Team Rumblebots. Now, this is a robot from an, a uh, school in Puerto Rico, Kyle. Um, Arsenal here, I believe, is in red, facing off against Amphispina here uh, in the pink corner. Amphispina is brought to you by Alexander Richmond. It's a dual independent drum spinner. Um, massive weapon motors and hope is what powers this bot. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. Nice oh, right. shot there. Alexander Richmond bringing it here to Arsenal. Arsenal looks like it is dead in the water. Yep. Out. Wow. Weapon stopped pretty early and then quick tap out when we saw nothing moving from that bot. They were essentially defenseless. We can see Team Rumblebots here traveling uh, to Connecticut from Puerto Rico. And a uh, very good match here. And Amphispina staying alive, continuing on in the bracket. There you see Lars on the team there with Alexander working together on this bot. Alexander Richmond, uh, you know, building a very cool, ambitious robot. It's really cool to see two weapons, two independent weapons. You can lose one of them and still have a pretty good shot um, at winning a fight. Yeah, really cool uh, design, working beautifully. Also, it has some really neat fork packages that it'll use against non-horizontal spinners. <coughs> Speaking of horizontal spinners, Lars had one of the best fights of his entire career earlier today with his three-pounder impact where he took out Jameson Go and Silent X. Yeah. Really impressive stuff. Wild, wild match. The drive wasn't working on the left side of the bot. It looked before the fight like he was going to have to forfeit. Yeah. Ended up winning the entire thing. Amazing. Just by the sheer power of that weapon. We're going to head to Cage 2, and we can see Clyde, Thanks. my beloved. Look at this. This is the robot that I have been watching all day with delight. This is our top-ranked beetle in the competition, and it is a formidable flamethrower here in orange. Facing off against... Oh, what is this? This is Blindside here, and uh, this is run by Robert Walsh, typically running Apex, and this is a custom design from Robert. And uh, we saw an incredible fight over in Cage 6 earlier today uh, with Blindside and uh, just rapid disassembly of Katana earlier in the day. I just so happened to be standing cage side for that one, and it was an incredible banger. Expect some fast, chubby driving here from Blindside and uh, really the willingness and ability to go in and really sit there in the flames and try and pop Clyde in the air. If Robert can do it, this is going to be massive for his standings um, here at NHRL. All right, so weird fact about the state of Connecticut. Every state has different laws when it comes to operating flames at public events. Okay. Uh, 
So the audience has to be a minimum of 15 feet away from the cage while the flamethrower is operating. The people operating the robots can be close to the cage, but other than that, all bystanders need to be 15 feet away. Just in case, I guess, some of the flame escapes the bulletproof glass? I'm not sure. There you see Robert Walsh, Team Cybears. Robert normally drives kind of the traditional Cybears egg beater drum, parts from kit bots, but this is his first ever custom built robot blindside. He's been Five, working on this for a while four, now. Three, two, one. Fight, robots fight. Here we Whoa, go. Nice shot by Robert Walsh, keeping Clyde in the air for those two impacts. Wow, fire and flames here from Clyde. A control bot that has pushed uh, Blindside successfully up against the uh, the rail. Cooking him right into that corner. Nowhere to go for Blindside. Blindside able to get off the corner there and coming back to push straight up against Clyde, but that flame is just baking right into those internal components on Blindside. This is not the place Robert Walsh wants to be. Wow. Let's see if that weapon comes back. It has. Blindside's weapon is back up. Popping Clyde in the air. But Clyde, this big control bot, able to capture Blindside and blast it with fire. This you is have this. to wonder if that belt is strong enough to survive the full three minutes on Blindside. Lingering flame staying beside on, by, on Blindside. That is not good. That looks like it's on the drivetrain on the left side of the bot. I thought that might be a weapon uh, belt. Now, this is going to be a very hot robot when it comes out. A minute 45, Tap Robert out. tapping out. He says, please, I'm done. No more. Stop cooking my bot. I got to save what's left. All right. Now, Blindside is on fire. You can see it over there. We're going to have to open up the cage and blast it with the fire extinguisher. Gotta love the new headpiece. Yeah. I'm assuming that this is a new hairstyle or something. Wow, look at that. It's found something uh, juicy inside of Blindside. And we have a judge's, or a judge's decision update. Clyde, unanimous decision. Oh, sorry. Kazaa, unanimous decision wow. over Mystery Machine. Wow. I'm All surprised right. that's unanimous, actually. Kazaa staying alive in the competition and will advance to face Red Panda, but defeating two very good builders and drivers in Corey Nason and Zach Knight with Mystery Machine. Flamethrowers are the new meta. Fantastic. <laughs> We Gotta can love see it. the flamethrower still alive. That's really great yeah. um, in the bracket. And uh, here, Clyde really just uh, slowly, methodically making its way through the bracket. Um, and uh, let's, let's check in on the bracket. Clyde will now face the winner of Impact versus Rhino. Nice. So uh, Clyde is here in the quarterfinals waiting for his opponent. All right, I love a flamethrower. Who doesn't? It's the top, top seeded uh, robot going into this competition. I think Clyde is uh, ranked 15 of all time. Now we're going to go over to another big box fight. Wow. I think this is Beater Barker over here from Team CRC. I see that uh, the entire pits for uh, Team Cornell has come down and cleared out. This is what they do. And I'm going to tell you, Kyle, with the lightest of prodding, I can get them to start chanting for their own team by just going, CRC, CRC, <laughs> CRC. There we go. Nice. <laughs> All right, so Page coming from Team Goideborg from Brazil. This is a rematch of sorts from earlier in the day.
Now, in their intake form, uh, Page here, uh, you know, the builders of Page have warned us that uh, their weapon spins at over 300 miles an hour. And uh, they're going to be facing off against this Cornell team here. Let's go. The Brazilians are in the house. They are here. They are excited, supporting their teammates. Yeah, there we go. It's coming up. <laughs> Let's go, Goiterborgs. I love it. Absolutely love it. Now, Team Goiterborgs is another college team. These are engineering students from a college in Brazil. Fantastic. Coming up here. So it's going to be a little college team on college team action. All right, so as these bots get driven into position, Luke, you and I are going to take this fight off. We're going to throw this into the fishbowl where our play-by-play -play announcers, Chris and Adam, are going to be covering this fight for us. Amazing. Trying out new things, seeing how it works. Yeah. Yeah, hey, can you, can you hear us? Hello, Adam. Hey, how's it going? It's great. Are you ready for this fight? Yeah, we're, I mean, we're super excited over here. We've got camera views upon camera views over here. So we should be able to see every detail of what happens. We won't miss a single screw flying off of these robots. I love it. All right, we're going to take this fight off. You guys, take it away. All right, this is interesting. U.S. college, Brazilian team, obviously a lot of uh, energy behind both of these outfits here. We're squared up here in cage one. This is going to be exciting, Adam. I think no matter what happens, the fans are going to be going nuts. It's a, it's a ruckus out there. It's a crazy loud crowd, and uh, this is going to be, I think, pretty intense. Both of these robots have been performing pretty well today, so should be some sparks flying, bots maybe bouncing off the ceiling here. And it looks like both bots are locked in. We're going to start here momentarily. The suspense. The suspense. <laughs> it's palpable. When you're down there, you're sitting by the box, you're waiting for this to start. These seconds drive on. They feel like hours. I know that I can't uh, hold my controller steady sometimes waiting for these fights to start. Um, once it gets going, you know, you get in the zone, everything steadies up. But waiting for these to start is... Oh. Those wheels don't look very straight, do they? It, it also looked like there look there, there appeared to be some kind of maybe a loose belt <laughs> in there, too. Oh, are they getting pushed toward the door? Oh, boy. Doesn't seem to be good. I don't think those are straight. Uh, maybe they are like the back of a fire truck where they're mm. supposed to articulate to help round Rear corners. Rear wheel steering, like a cyber truck. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, and can chop your fingers off just by closing the trunk. <laughs> just as dangerous as the Cybertruck. Has it been recalled here due to a faulty accelerator pedal also like the Cybertruck? That is the question. So that was Fluffy giving uh, a boost over to the uh, door. It looks like you, we, <laughs> there is some tweaking happening. I see a belt getting stretched back over a wheel. Peter Barker is getting uh, some last-minute repairs here. Uh, belts and wheels are coming off. Not a good sign coming into a fight with your wheel like that. This is obviously not the first time Peter Barker has had to deal with a Green Goblin or two. Oh, I get, it's, a, it's a superhero reference. I get it. Um, Adam, what goes to your mind when you, uh, the doors close and you clearly recognize that there's an issue with your bot? Or has that never happened to you? Um, a lot of curse words, generally. Um, that has happened to me. <laughs> um, you know, you put it in, all of a sudden you realize the side of drive isn't working and, and you can't really do anything about it. Um, it seems like they did get an opportunity here to make a quick repair, so that was that's nice. Um, a lot of times when this happens, you don't even know what's wrong. Um, so it doesn't even really help to have uh, access to it. Here, it seems like they, they got the belt back on, but usually it's just an extreme moment of dread, um, I, I would say. 
and looked like Paje was ready to go. So now, Peter Barker and Paje locked in here. Cage one, egg beater on egg beater, international action coming our way. Cage one, take two. It's spinning up. Peter Barker is spinning up. I hear the crowd. I, I can hear the to, Brazilians chanting in the background. I yeah, think. they're starting to usher this in. I think I hear some of the students as well. Ah, oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, they better have a good match now. Otherwise, <laughs> there might be a riot. Five. I have a four, feeling this could be a quick three, one. Two, one. Fight, robot. Here we go. Fight. Right out the gate, Pahe spinning up. Wow, listen to the Peter bar on Peter Parker. Oh, whoa. Oh. Wow, huge yeet Where right off the that bat. Go? Peter Barker's <laughs> mini bot sees a little bit of the it's, ceiling. It's a taco bot now. Oh, there no, that there's wheel. that wheel in the belt. It's an ablative wheel, it's uh, fine. I felt, oh, <laughs> there's the other one. Pahe what toying with them at this point. Oh. We're slowing him down. Peter Barker is now on the advance. I don't. I don't Listen even know to what to the say sound. Here. Where's the hit? There it wow. is. Wow. Pahe looks. Oh. That's not good. It just might be really angry at him. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh wow. Okay. That's All the right. lipo fire. Tap out. There's your tap out. Wow. To go from, you know, screwing your wheels on to start the fight, then immediately falling off, and then a dominant victory, leaving your opponent engulfed in smoke. <laughs> they have reason uh, to celebrate, obviously. They have a lot of reason to also, as quickly as humanly possible, get back up to the pits and <laughs> try to figure out why they only had a two-wheel drive system for that for that match. <laughs> the four-wheel vert turned into a two-wheel vert, uh, but it worked out for them. I, I do think maybe they need a couple more screws in the back there. They literally feigned a four-wheel drive bot. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that there were just, they were double stick tape on those back wheels. They weren't even connected to the robot. And now we see the that lipo. so much smoke. Starting to drink in some of that oxygen <laughs> as that sweet, sweet lithium is starting to get a taste for the outside world, and now I'm curious if Fluffy is going to go ahead and step in and do its job and dump some of that icy CO2 on this situation <laughs> developing let's dead just, center in cage one. Let's just hope someone's collecting that smoke for the candles. We don't want it to go to waste. <laughs> Rob chilling things out. And we're, we're now queuing up the uh, the really awesome, uh, you know, protective equipment that some of our cage side staff have to get out there, take care of everything from fires to chemical spills to, uh, you know. Shout out to Libby, the referee, uh, helping putting out this lipo fire, donning all that PPE. Safety first here at uh, NHRL. <laughs> that works too. <laughs> These are uh, positive pressure uh, helmets that can pump clean air inside the face mask. So uh, you can always be breathing fresh. It's also how I describe the atmosphere up in the pits. It's a positive pressure, but it's a pressure. <laughs> Quite an explosive ending to that fight. Uh, it was, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that. A robot just disintegrating before the fight even starts, then come out and be so mobile. 
Was it a fame? It was, I mean, it was certainly like Ali-esque where uh, we have one bot that looks like it's about to fall apart. The only thing holding it together is maybe uh, some, some Gorilla Tape and Loctite. <laughs> and then all of a sudden just starts punching up. And well, we see, we see it exactly what happened here. This is, this is insane. Uh, the smoke's still pouring. Uh, out of the bot, it's it's worse for wear, yeah. to say and, the least. And the thing with these situations is, when you get it up and you open that robot, it's it's not going to be pretty inside. Those lipo fires turn the entire interior into a smoldering black hunk of useless goo. Let's go back and take a replay of that hit. Here we see. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, the, the, the multi-bot going for a little bit of a joyride. You got to think Pahe was riding high after taking out the, the second half. Oh, of, wow. <laughs> of Peter Barker, but Peter Barker came back strong. Somehow scooping underneath its opponent and delivering a shot right onto the back armor, which, you know, Maybe a part of that egg beater had carved through, but I didn't really see a clear puncture. You know, it doesn't take much to be able to, to bend up a base plate and, and pierce a battery. If you put your battery close down there, it's, it's not somewhere you expect to take a direct hit. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't take a lot to, to puncture those if you get, it, get a hit in the right spot. Looks like they got a hit in the right spot. Excellent point, Adam. Thank you for joining me here in the test from the fishbowl. But we're going to go back to our friends at the desk. That was a fantastic fight. The energy here in the uh, the bowl was electric. Uh, you could see just like despair uh, from Team Cornell. This entire like uh, just bleacher set here, just people holding their hands like this. And um, as they turned the tide of that fight, just erupting into cheers. It was huge. What was amazing to me was the sound difference, how it went from just boisterous, loud energy to silence over on that <laughs> side of the pits when uh, when it went the, the opposite way for that bot. Yeah. I got to say, uh, Beater is an amazing robot. Cool design. A lot of work went into that thing. I know that that team was really, Cornell was really counting on this very unique design to work out for them. Yeah. It's going pretty well. Yeah, Beater Barker staying alive here and winning despite losing a lot of parts. A lot Not of parts. Not great, Kyle. Not no, great. They, they put a lot into the, um, the counter flywheel on that bot. They put a lot into the drive system on that bot. Not a lot of room for armor after that, you know? Yeah, well... I mean, you should have at least some way to keep your wheels on. I mean, that shouldn't be one of those things that you... Maybe version two. We'll get that. Sacrifice. Wait for. Maybe version two. You can't have a blade of wheels here in the box, Kyle. Why not? It's not, it's not a good look for the judges. No, it's not a good look for the judges. I will say, like, uh, this is the biggest cheer of the day. Like, people were on their feet. It was standing room only. Really, really cool. Yeah, Really absolutely. cool experience to see it live. Yep, yeah. absolutely. All right, so uh, that was the fishbowl. Yeah. Something new we're trying out. Yeah. Did you like it? Uh, yeah, it's really cool. Um, they have access to more feeds over there than we do. Exactly. Um, like when we look at the big monitor here, we're just seeing what YouTube is seeing. We're seeing what the live stream is seeing. They can see every single camera angle in there, including live feeds from all of the mobile cameras. So uh, they can just kind of take a look from every single angle and call the fight. Uh, in a different way than we've been able to up here at the desk. Absolutely, and the monitors are right there close to them. They can yeah. see them up close and get more detailed views. Everything's kind of further away from us because you gotta get a camera shot of us, you know? Yeah. They wanna see our pretty faces. Yeah, it's true. And yeah. your hat. Yeah, we're the eye candy, Kyle. All right. <laughs> Everybody wants to see the hats. Everybody wants Everybody to see the Hello see Kitty the Hawaiian shirt. You I know? get it, I totally understand. Yeah. There you go. We're, uh, you know, full on springtime over here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will say that uh, we are a lot closer to the audience than we were in the past. If you've been to the House of Havoc before, this is a really different layout. Yeah. Um, and it's cool to see the audience so close. Um, it is like before we had stuff in the way, you know? Yeah. Um, like we had cages in the way of the audience. Now we're like sitting 
as part of the bowl ourselves. We're like the bottom of the bowl, Kyle. Okay. Yeah. Either that or we're the top of the bowl. Yeah, I see what you're saying though. It's like, like an oval if shape. An oval. Yeah. We're like uh, one of the one of the curves on the oval. Yeah, yeah. And the other uh, side of the curve is the VIP area. Yeah. It's nice. Important. Important. Less important. Oh. You know? Important-ish? Yeah, we're at the bottom of the bowl, Kyle. I got it. Yeah. Makes sense. There you go. The paying customers Cream are at the top of the bowl. Up there. Yeah. yeah, the other end. I got it. Yeah. But the cool thing is you guys now have the same view as we do. You're having the same experience that we do, which it's is really, really cool. really need to have audience all the way around the arenas instead of kind of having that yeah. one, you know, single two-dimensional shot that they've had for so long here. It's yeah. cool for the energy in the room. I'm sure it gives you a different, like, perspective on what the what's yeah. going on. Um, I'm sure the energy is translating to our drivers as well and giving oh, them yeah. a lot more to go off of. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking of everybody who is here for the first time at the House of Havoc. Yeah. Um, you know, I've got, uh, I got to hang out with Hal Rucker from uh, Duck on BattleBots and um, Kathy Rucker. They are out here from California for the first time. Wow. And uh, they are super, super impressed. Like, the energy here is like no other. It's really, really different. Very cool. Um, so, yeah, if you're here for the first time, I hope that you're having an amazing experience. If you uh, are watching us on the live stream and you want to come and experience it, you should. It's pretty awesome. I'm glad Hal was able to come out. Uh, I did see Hannah earlier today, but I haven't run into Hal. Oh, really? Yeah. Hal was sitting literally right there. Nice. I just thought that you saw him, but I guess Saturday he's behind your monitor or something like that. You yeah, know? probably. He's yeah. um, he's one of my favorite builders. Super meticulous, amazing design. The internals of his robots are just as beautiful as the externals of his robots. Yeah. Literally one of my favorite people in this sport. We have Duck out on the floor in the Bot Museum. We've popped the top off of Duck. Something people have re been requesting for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And it's so cool to see the inside of that robot. It's just artwork in there. Yeah. Earlier today, I saw Hal standing by Duck, taking photos of fans, uh, answering questions about the robot, kind of talking about the, the layout of the components inside. Very cool. It is a gorgeous billet uh, design. If you're a fan of Duck, like so many of us are, go over there and check it out uh, when you get a chance. Yeah, absolutely. It's the thinking man's heavyweight in so many ways. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a more refined... Uh, Heavyweight for a different age. Amen. Right? Yes, I yeah. agree. I agree 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sure Hal appreciates being compared to a lightsaber. Yeah. I mean, like, if you were to, like, somehow transport that robot back in time to, like, uh, the original days of the sport. Oh, that would blow would everybody's mind. People would feel like uh, they were visited by aliens. That yeah. thing is incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Every uh, component was thought out before that billet was even started to be carved on. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's yeah. really cool. Yeah. So uh, Hal's here in the audience. I know that uh, Hannah is here as well. Hannah uh, recently uh, graduated from high school and is now going to Brandeis University, so out here on the East Coast. Yep. Uh, so Hal and Kathy are going to be out here more often visiting Hannah, so hoping to see Hal bring a robot here soon. Um, so that would be really, really cool. And we see Brandeis Robotics here all the time. Team Dicey? Yep. Yep. They're yeah. amazing. Yep. All right, so we are now heading over into cage one for some more big bot action. Ooh, look at this. Is this, I think it is, I think this is a new blue cheese with a different uh, weapon blade here in the blue corner. It is blue cheese, look at that. Now he was running a white uh, weapon blade earlier in the day. This is now a uh, just a bare metal weapon blade. I wonder what happened with the white blade. Maybe it got cracked, I don't know. Now I'm speculating. We're facing off against... Psycho! Psycho. Wow! Jameson Go. Wow! This is a match. Look at this. These are two dominant verts. You've got blue cheese with so much energy being dumped into that weapon, facing off against one of the best 12 pounders on the planet, Jameson Goes Robot Psycho. This is his Metabot four wheel drive vert, hits hard. 
favored to win here today, but standing in his way is Matt Luther and Blue Cheese. And I know during the qualifying rounds, Matt was really stressed about the belt tension on the weapon, but maybe with this new weapon in place, that's been resolved. It got him to the dance. It got him into the qualifying rounds for the event. So we shall see. Five, four, three, two, one. Fight, robot. Winner of this fight. matchup has to face the void in the next round. Nice. Wow. Weapon to weapon impact going Psycho's way. Psycho planted firmly to the ground. Huge hit on Blue Cheese, and pieces are coming off of Blue Cheese. I think that the weapon is cracked. I think on you're Blue right. Cheese, Kyle. I think you're right. Look, a piece of it just fell off. You're right. It cracked right in half. Where the two pieces of the weapon meet. Wow, this is disgusting. Psycho here just killing this this robot completely. We are not unaccustomed to a blue cheese crumble in this box, that is for sure. Wow, that weapon just cracking in half. And then the rest of the bracket falling off right there. All that's left is the shaft. Fire your heat treater, Matt Leo Luther. I mean, like, look at this. Not good. So this is looking pretty good as long as Jameson goes cautious. Oh, oh no, nasty. That weapon. Completely removed, and there is no movement coming from Blue Cheese. Now, I don't see wheels spinning. I don't see anything happening. She's just stuck there. And Psycho's already driven over to the door. Jameson, go ready. So it does look like we'll be seeing Psycho versus Void in the next round. Look at this, just casual driving, waiting for Blue Cheese to get pushed to the door, getting a little practice and showing the judges he's still moving. Oh my God. Matt Luther refuses to tap out, so James Amazing. is going to keep hitting him in the face. Why not? A right up against the wall, there. and the wheels came off there. Oh no. Oh no. I love Blue Cheese. Fantastic fight knockout. here. Psycho winning Knight. in convincing yep. fashion. This is a knockout. Yep. Matt Luther's got no quit in him, even when he probably should. That was amazing. Now, Psycho uh, advances to face off against Void. Now, Void is a robot that qualified for the finals in January. That's correct. So very, very deep in the bracket. This is a modified version of Promheda. So uh, he's going to be facing another very powerful egg beater spinner. But if he has performance like this, we might be seeing a clear path for Jameson Go to qualify here at this competition. Amazing. Now, just looking at the bracket, I can see maximizers on one corner of the bracket. And the only time that they would meet would be in the finals. A Maximizer Psycho final foretold in the stars, uh, called at the very start of this competition. There is a possibility here. Now, there's still a lot of really good 12-pounders standing in their way. Yep. Maximizer will face off against Amphis Bena in the quarterfinals. Yep. Junkernaut will be facing off against Beater B. Barker, the robot that we just saw from Cornell. Psycho taking on Void and Battle Tots here waiting for their opponent. We're going to be running Caldera 12 versus Killer Whale. A little bit of horizontal and horizontal action. The winner of that match advancing to the quarterfinals where they will face off against Battle Tots. Battle Tots, a really fascinating design. It's kind of a mixer match yeah. group of robots that they can run depending on who their opponent is. Yeah. Uh, let's see, they've got a miniature Bite Force up there. They've yep. got a miniature Ribot up there. Yep. They have a miniature... Bite Same. Uh, <laughs> that's the name of it, Bite Same. Bite Battle same. Toad. Battle Toad, okay. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, nice little throwback. Haymaker. Haymaker. Yeah. Wait, I think Adam came up with Haymaker? Correct. Okay, what is Haymaker? Haymaker is their like miniature version of Uppercut. Oh, awesome. But a Haymaker in boxing is just a wild punch. That's a great name. Yeah, it's good. Adam, he's smart. Adam? Yeah. Yeah, he's smart. Yeah. People hire him to be smart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a thing. He's smart. He's smart. You could tell he's smart because of the tie. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> smart people wear square ties. Square boxy ties, yeah. 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 Red boxy power ties. 
power tie. That is a power tie. I have not worn a square tie since I was a toddler, okay? I haven't worn a square tie since college. College? Yeah. Kyle, that is too old to be wearing a square tie, all right? Disagree. Square tie, I typically think of like one of those clip-on ties when I get a square tie. You know? What? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Wait, you, you tied a square tie yourself? Absolutely. It was the a little... vintage square tie from the 70s. I still have it. Listen, there's a reason why there aren't square ties anymore. All right. Over here, we have a little bit. This is, this is a terrible matchup, okay? <laughs> We have, um, you know, two five, partners four, on both sides of the three, box. We've got Hodor two, here from Ariel one, Smith in five, the blue corner, robots, facing off against five. IDK. Her, uh, her partner, her life partner here with Kevin Biagini running IDK. Yeah. I got to say, this is a tough matchup for IDK, too. There's very little for IDK to hit on Hodor. All he can do is really ramp over it. I would also say I, I don't want to fight my, uh, my wife slash girlfriend, you know? Yeah, Ariel's an amazing driver, too. She's definitely one of the better thinkers in this sport, as far as I'm concerned. She's got a lot of great ideas she brings to every one of these matchups. Oh, my God! Stuck up against the rail. Not good. Get yourself up. Ooh. Now, this is a flexible material that Hodor is made out of, so it is able to kind of bounce back from those hits, but not a whole bunch of them. Hodor, of course, a Game of Thrones reference. Yeah, they hold the a, door, right? That's their whole thing? It's a doorstop. Well, I haven't watched the whole TV show, so I don't actually know. I haven't watched the TV show either. We're Wait, really showing our... Yeah, I've, I, I have read the first book, but Classic that's Classic Kyle. It. Love it. IDK here. Really dictating the pace of this fight, trying to uh, to rack up damage points. Trying to self right. There we go. Come on, Hodor. You can get yourself over. There it is. It looks like the weapon on IDK might be down with 90 seconds left here in this fight. Yeah, not sure if that was intentional. It stopped pretty abruptly. These long fingers on the front of Hodor, you know, they're just really difficult to plan for. There's not a lot of things to bite on. No, and they're super flexible, too. Ariel was showing me that you can basically just kind of, like, ring them across each other like a comb. It's cool. It's an interesting uh, design. Hodor has successfully killed the weapon on IDK. That weapon is gone. And now she is racking up control points here, dictating the pace of the fight in the back half of this match. Yeah. Shoving her opponent her boyfriend slash husband, uh, into the corner. Wow. And tipping IDK up against the rail. Well done, Ariel. IDK calling left. for an unstick from Brett the Brick, and Ariel right back on top of them after that. Nice job there. You've got to have a pretty healthy relationship where this is not just a, uh, you know, a source of a fight afterward, you know? Like, uh, it's a long... <laughs> Long, uh, silent drive back to Massachusetts. They do have about a two and a half hour drive back to Massachusetts. Yep. Wow. It's gonna be, oh. Tap out. A tap out. A tap out from IDK. He could see the writing on the wall. Ariel Smith will be advancing with Hodor. Oh man, that was amazing. All right, so yeah, that will be an interesting drive on the way home. But in the meantime, we're gonna go right on over to cage one. Wow. Where our next 12 pound matchup is loading in. This is going to be Killer Whale versus Caldera 12. Now, uh, very fun fact Caldera 12 and Glenn Boxel. Glenn today became a first time grandfather. Well done, Glenn. What Fantastic. A, what a month for Glenn. First golden dumpster, first grandchild. Yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah. That he's guy's got, crushing it. He's got a little granddaughter. She was born midday today. And um, last time I talked to Brian, his sister hadn't even named the child yet. So I'm, I'm eager to, to hear what her name is. So Brian Boxel's an uncle. Brian Boxel is an uncle. Uncle Brian, I love it. And Grandpa Glenn, fantastic. Fantastic. 
proud owner of a golden dumpster and proud grandfather, Glenn Boxel. I, I, I need to know the baby's name, you know? I know that Brian can hear me. Brian, what's the baby's name? We'll find out. I just heard Brian from, says from Control, they said, and proud owner of a granddaughter. And I said, that's not, we shouldn't. No, that's not <laughs> how that works. Brian <laughs> says, we're too busy with robots to find out what our niece slash granddaughter's name four, is. I buy that. Three, two, one. Fight, robots, All right, fight. here we go. Killer Whale is a hinged horizontal from... Uh, William Archese. It is a very cool bot. Look at the design on that. Yeah, it looks like a snow cone, Kyle. Oh, I see a little bit of magic smoke and a belt. Wow. Yeah, that's not good. That sound that you hear is Caldera 12 spinning up and just chewing into Killer Whale. William Marchese, although he's down a weapon, has a tendency not to tap out. We might see two and a half more minutes here of this robot being violently disassembled. <laughs> he needs the space in his car. He wants to just put that into like a little trash bag and drive it straight back to Long Island. Yeah, whatever he can just throw away here is, is for the best, honestly. Wow. Down a belt, Caldera 12. Just uh, making strategic contact. And we can see the little miniature Caldera driven by Brian Boxel. Oh, oh no! The weapon is the now weapon's completely gone! gone. On Killer Whale! And one of the wheels looks a little bit askew. Killer Whale slowly being disassembled. Death by a thousand Caldera cuts. Wow. Now Caldera has to be very. Oh, no. Ripping off another wheel. They and didn't it looks. Need that. Like Killer Whale is dead in the water. It's been beached, Kyle. And look, uh, original Caldera coming in saying, maybe I'll take a shot, maybe I won't. Wow, Grandpa Glenn winning another fight, advancing here, and will face off against Battle Tots. Well done, Glenn. Knockout. Full on knockout. All right, oh. so that was the end of that round. Yeah. Round of 16 is done. Now heading over into the quarterfinals of the 12-pound tournament. I'm just going to say, uh, I love a weird uncle, okay? And do you think that Brian qualifies yeah, yeah, yeah. as a weird okay, uncle? Okay, so this unnamed child is going to grow up and just be like, you know what? My weird uncle Brian, he builds killer robots. Some of them are pink and sparkly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And all the kids at school will be like, oh, wow. That's cool. My uncle just drinks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and works on his van, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, you can, you can have weirder uncles, but uh, it's weird. It's definitely, uh, you know, a good weird uncle kind of hobby. You know, I've never thought of him as weird, but now that you mention it, he has built um, bots based on penguins because apparently they're the natural predator of frogs, which never made any sense to me. He's built this thing. He's built a fireball robot that didn't breathe flames. Not yet. It's going to. It's just very strange. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like it. I like it. I, I feel like every child deserves a strange uncle. You know? Just Fair. one with, like, weird and unknowable hobbies, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So as we are moving into the round of 16 and moving out of the qualifying rounds, yeah. this is the end of our qualifying stream. Yeah. Join us in about 30 minutes. We'll be here on the prime time stream. We're going to be showing you guys all of the uh, final rounds of these three weight classes, and we're really excited to share it with you. Yeah, now check for the link in the description. Go to our main page here on YouTube. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Share this with your strangest uncle. There and we'll be back with the best fights of the night, we hope. We'll see ya. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.